I ain't mad at, at this you. point, what it is, is what I, I buy. I mean, I'm not gonna talk about these detractors. I'm not gonna talk about their lies and words they say. I ain't mad at you. But they are just jealous. I'm the owner of a multi-million dollar company. And, and am I? Fucking weird, why is no, 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 don't ban him. Storage is fine, his address, you're not getting that from me, bro. You're not getting that from me. I ain't mad at you. I'm not mad at you. I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. Not at all. I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you either. I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. Anyway, back to shit that, that, that matters. Boy, God damn, man. Y'all got to stop with this K-ass fucking uh, shit. Like, I get it. Motherfuckers saying what they got to say about me. I'm, I'm I'm totally aware of that. I'm not engaging. How do people listen to this? I, every time I watch Eric I'm July, like, you scream at his audience. I just I'm ask myself, like, how do, how, do, how, do, how do people sit in the audience and go, just continue to yell at me and call me gay shit, motherfucker. Just continue, Eric. I love it. Absolutely fucking love it. How do people sit there and listen to this? There's no entertainment value at all watching this fucking retard spurg out at them uh, and call them racial epithets. It, it, there's no... Tony... There's not. Oh my God. Look at his balls. They are so big. He must be one of those gamer guys. Like, who understands them anyway? I say, what? Balls! Who's got the balls? I got the balls. Big, big, big the balls. Who's got the balls? I got the balls. The big, big, big the balls. The balls. Who's got the balls? I got the balls. The big, big, big the balls. The balls. Who's got the balls? I got the balls.
my balls. Balls! What's up, me bags? It's the Avi. Oh, it's the often imitated, never duplicated Tony TGD. And I had balls on the brain. I didn't know what the hell I was saying. But I am your CG chosen one, Frog Tony. And I am joined on this magical trip, this journey, this adventure, if you will, by TJ motherfucking laser. What's up, TJ? Back to some detracting. Let's go. That's right. This is this is the official detractor cast number five. We're only on five. We got a long way to go to catch up to trash cast, but we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there, baby. Uh, and already off the bat, Red wants you to know he's not mad at you, Grumpy. Not mad at you. I ain't mad at you. Thank you, thank you, Red. I ain't mad at you either. Uh, I know Bianca's in the chat. Bianca wants to know who sings these lovely, lovely songs. Well, Bianca. The first song is AI. It is sung by AI, artificial intelligence. I don't know how they got that. Uh, you're going to have to ask the uh, person who made that. As far as the second song, that is Balls. Big, big, big the balls by the Pure Ownage Gang. Uh, permission granted by the uh, writer of the song, the owner of the song. So we're all good. Uh, but as far as Red, he's going to get a little economic. High risk, high reward, the economics Matic. of Matic. Oh, no, oh lord, it's the balls he moves. Some people not Matic. Sing my rap, lads, phonemics, what pain it not. Eddie, are you digging my groove? I gave you 40%. You're a cold. Matic. I gave you 40%. You got a chance to get rich. I gave you 40%. Don't do no crop on the bluff. It. I gave you 40%. So right now you get nothing. Yeah. 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 Ah, man. You guys caught me doing coke. Fuck. Uh, anyway. It's going to be a good, it's going to be a good one. Long one. Guys, get your popcorn. Get your popcorn. Get your uh, caffeine of choice, if you will. If you will, baby. Because it's going to be one of them long detractor cast. Because uh, they're trying to put hard times on us, TJ Lee. They're trying to put hard times on us. Uh, but baby, baby, we're going we're gonna to do some things here. All right. So what it is, is we got a couple of extra segments. We got like 15 motherfucking tabs open. I got so many things to talk oh, about. We got to talk. We got to talk about some flashcast stuff. We got to talk about some Air July announcements from the Ripperverse. We got to talk about Midnight's Edge. They had they had a whole thing. Uh, then I got about uh, what was it like four, no five oh, different circle. fucking. Yeah, I used to be a five, fan of Midnight's Edge. <laughs> five different Twitter things open. They got like four tabs of, of YouTube. Jesus Christ, we got so much to do, guys. So much. I'm ready. I'm ready. Uh, but the first thing we got to talk about is, is the most important thing. Uh, I don't know if you have you heard of this guy called Dick Masterson, TJ Laser. Oh, the rabbit guy, the uh, Buster Baxter guy. Buster Baxter himself. That's right, the rabbit guy. <laughs> wow, uh, Dick, you've been reduced to being called the rabbit guy. Dick Masterson, he had his show the other day, the Dick Show, episode four hundred two. Uh, he was talking about meat intervention. His family wanted him to stop eating meat. Yeah, TikTok ban. Uh, Sean and Maddox, they want a double date. That was a nice little AI story. And then, the the best part, the only part of the Dick Show really worth watching, in my opinion, is when they go over the Yaira trailer with none other than the Geek Getaway, Tony TGD, Frog Tony, to some of you, the chosen one of CG. That's right. Let's I made go. my Dick Show Alliance debut. Alliance of Detractors. <laughs> I was out there uh, detracting with the best of them. So, uh, you know, give it a listen. Let them know. Uh, convince Dick to let me come back on as a, a more permanent guest, not just a, a quick call-in. Oh, all right. Now that that's out of the way, we got one more non ripperverse thing to talk about. One more non ripperverse thing. <sighs> TJ Laser, uh, did you... Uh, follow twitter a lot are you, are you uh, up on your twitter game every now and then not really have you, have you seen the latest news about deadpool 3 no I haven't seen the latest deadpool 3 news huh? have you uh, by any chance follow our good friend Vito Giswaldi on the twitter I do yes Okay. so then I don't know how you missed this so we're going to go into this but first Red says I was surprised Dick got you on the Dick Show, Tony. I wasn't. He invited me personally. He came to me and said, Tony, I would like you to come on the Dick Show, uh, be our special guest, uh, call in, and we're going to talk. We're going to have a little conversation. I said, 
anything for you, Mr. Masterson. Whatever you need. Because uh, I remember. I remember when I was just a wee, wee detractor. You remember this, TJ? This is way back in the lore. If you guys were here for the early days of detracting, way back in the lore. I got a phone call. And I picked it up and uh, it was a white guy on the phone. And he said, Mr. Masterson would like to speak to you. I said, oh, would he? He said, hold on. And he connected me and Dick said, Tony, I'm going to need you to fly out to L.A. and come to my house. And I flew out that day. That day, I didn't even, you know, wait to buy a ticket at a, at a better time. I flew out that day, TJ. Went to Dick Masterson's house. He didn't let me in because I'm Mexican. He's like, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're Mexican. Can't come in the house. But you can stand outside. I said, okay. It's okay. I stood outside the house. And he said, Tony, I cannot do daily streams detracting on Eric July. But you, you can. And I will anoint you chief detractor. Do you accept this responsibility? And I said, Dick, it would be my pleasure. It would be my pleasure to be detractor number one. And thus, the Tractor Cast was born. And we've been detracting ever since, baby. Detracting ever since. And that is a true story. You could look it up. Go way back in the archives of this channel. Well, not that this is when back. you were handed the black retard gem. Yeah, and I was handed. See, you remember. Dick gave yeah. me the black retard gem and said, Tony, I need you to take care of this. Uh, I've been doing it ever since. It's been fantastic. Uh, but let's give you a little economic lesson. Because I, I know that's what you've been waiting for. All that talking by Tony, you're like, shut up and just uh, play the song. High risk, high reward, the economics of Maddox. Part owner, oh lord, it's a ballsy move. Some people not Maddox. Sing my rap, lads, phonemics, what pain it, not any. Are you digging my groove? I gave you 40%, you're a cold. Maddox. You gave you 40%, you got a chance to get rich. I gave you 40%, don't do no crap on the bluff. I gave you 40%, so right now you get nothing. Yes, Bianca, he came to me. Lots of men do. I have that effect on all genders. Uh, anyway, I don't think that's real, but it, but it would be hilarious. It's 100% real. 100% real. Uh, guys, I've never lied. I don't lie. What do I need to lie to you for? Who am I trying to impress in the chat here? Huh? Anyway, TJ, you don't follow uh, Marvel News that closely, so uh, let, let me bring this up for you because, man, <laughs> when I saw this today... I just I said a little prayer. Uh, so this is from Cosmic Marvel. It says, Deadpool and Wolverine will reportedly introduce a new multiverse concept to the hashtag MCU. The concept, in every universe, there's one specific hero that if they die or get removed from their universe, that entire universe would vanish. Each universe has a different hero. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. What are you shitting about? That sounds like an interesting concept. That sounds like a concept that... Could you imagine if, like, someone made, like, an independent comic about, like, a guy who worked for, like, an agency, like, like a, like an interdimensional agency of some sort, and he, he went around removing... No, no, killing, killing superheroes, like, like some sort of superhero killer, like a super killer, yeah, if some, you will. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Something like that, right? Like, that'd be an interesting concept. You'd probably buy that. Hell, I know I would buy that. I would spend like a hundred dollars or more buying like a like a three or four cover set of such a concept, TJ. And, and I yeah. know that 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 would be you know delivered in a timely manner, uh, of course, right? Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, uh, for us, it was not the case. As Dita, as Vito says here, oh, for the love of. Super killer, everybody. Marvel has stolen the idea of super killer. Off. Well, <laughs> shit. <laughs> well, I know somebody I, who won't get ripped off this way, and that's uh, B.A. Turner. The vigilante Hail creep. jabronis. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, Wizard says, I don't think this is real, but it would be hilarious. I hope it is, just because it would be so hilarious. <laughs> so hilarious. Uh uh, didn't didn't Spider-Man do the same thing with that vampire? Um, with Moreland, uh, there was something with it, but I don't know if it was exactly. Uh, Sketch says they copied my whole fucking flow, Vito. Yeah, uh, it looks like he's gonna have to scrap Super Killer guys, start from the drawing board. The comic book <laughs> might be delayed just just a tad, just a tad. Damn. Oh man. Uh, 
So I found that amusing when, when I saw that today. Poor, poor Vito. Man. What are you going to do, though, right? What are you going to do? Uh, hopefully his comic comes out soon. Uh, if it comes out quick enough, right before Deadpool, or, like, right after Deadpool, like, if this is true, right, um, then um, possibly he could, you know, kind of mark it on the back of it. Like, look it, I had this idea first. It's been, I've been working on it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I don't think he's going to get it, though. So, uh, we'll see. All right. Time for some business, TJ? Some actual serious business? Let's go. Let's do some business. It is what it is. Let's do some business. All right. So this comes to us from... Uh, this, no, that's not the one. Damn it. Where's the one I'm looking for? I got so many tabs, I don't even know which is the... First off, I want to show this. Let's show this first. Okay. So I didn't think this was real. Someone showed me this... Um, fuck you call it thumbnail right i i swear to god tj i thought they were lying i was like there's no way eric july put his head on the look at me i'm the captain now meme of the somali pirate oh god w with the words look at me i'm the magical negro now i thought somebody else made that <laughs> yeah i thought that was foolish. i was like there's no, i i know he made the tweet <laughs> about making as much money as the american society of magical negroes but it's like there's no way he actually put that as a thumbnail but no, he did. Uh, Eric. Look at Eric July stealing content from WDW Pro. You love to see it. The Disney one. <laughs> I, I, I just, this is too much. This is too much. And also, Eric, it it's not a big accomplishment to make as much money as a movie that bombed. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure the Marvels has made more money than Yairo. What does that mean? Does that mean Marvels is a better movie, better product? Then, see, you can't compare. Comparing yourself to other things of different genres and uh, just doesn't work out. You know, there's a lot of shit that made a lot of money. It's probably not as bad as Yaira. At least I hope not. Um, I just wanted to point that thumbnail out because that was funny. I was like, Eric, why? Why would you do that? Why? Because uh, he has no humor. You know, I'm not the only one, though. I'm not the only one who, who took exception to that. Because, uh, not our good friends, but I guess they're uh, fellow detractors. Uh, Super Sly, he made a video. Eric July's weird flex on American society of magical Negroes. I figured if we were going to talk about this, at least we'd get a black guy on. And because Angus didn't want to hop on with us, he don't like us no more. Sure. Uh, I guess we're going to have to do it this way. We're going to have to live... Yeah, we're gonna have to live vicariously through Super Slide. Uh, I heard in uh, Deadpool three, he also has to fight nightclub bouncers and Hellfire demons. Well, that would uh, be hilarious. Did it, uh, didn't Yara sales come to a complete crawl? Yeah, they always do. His 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 are like the first two days, so fucking top heavy, and then it's just like a crawl, and then a little at the end. You can only get so much money from Bruce. Yeah. All right, let's see what... Uh, let me know if these guys are low, because when I listen to it, they always sound so... Like, their volume so down. Okay, so, uh, American Society of Magical Negroes, we all knew that when it first, when the trailer dropped a couple months ago, nobody asked for this movie, nobody wanted this movie, we all knew this movie was going to flop. Okay, let me just first off say one thing, and it's something that I fucking hate, because he just said it, and I hear... Everybody say this phrase. We didn't ask for it. Okay? Stop using that fucking phrase. Everybody. It is the worst fucking phrase ever. And here's why. Here's why, TJ. I didn't ask for Contra to be created. But it was. And I'm glad for it. I didn't ask for Star Wars. No one asked for Star Wars, right? Because Star Wars wasn't a thing. No one... You don't ask for things most of the time i'm gonna say like 99 percent of the time things that are created brand new things right aren't asked for we don't know we want them art largely consists of things you didn't know you wanted it's entertainment it's media uh you know you can ask for food i need food i need shelter i need uh, warmth right i need heating electricity things like that you'll ask for but i don't know what i want to see until i see it right but that's an indictment what... on this current generation of people, right? They're all what they care about is sequels and remakes. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, Jabba the Cup Truck. I didn't ask for this stream. Need me either. True. Uh, <laughs> this is the Tony take nobody asked for. Exactly. <laughs> uh, screen Time says, I didn't know I wanted the Yaira trailer. Now I can't live without it. Yeah, exactly. What's up, Angus? Oh, my God, that thumbnail. Yeah, so, yeah exactly. Yeah, we took it like chumps. <laughs> yeah, like chumps. Uh, it was my deep blue. My deep blue. Deep uh, blue. So, so, yeah. So, guys, stop saying this shit, right? Just... Just be like, this is a thing that is bad. It's not that we didn't ask for it. It's a thing that we got and didn't don't want afterward, right? Like, oh, we got this and we, we, we rejected it. We didn't we didn't like it. Uh, I didn't ask for these nuts. Uh, all right. And I've always said that sometimes it's not about these companies making money. Sometimes it's about putting. Seriously though, can, are they? Does he sound like like the volume's low? Like. Is it just me? Thoughts and ideas into your subconscious. The premise for the American Society of Negroes is basically a society of magical black people that spend their waking hours using magic to make white people feel safer. That is the premise of the movie. Now, if just you listening to that, hearing that, nobody wants to go see this movie, especially. Okay, so first off, I don't think Super Sly actually knows what the term magical Negro is. Uh, and I believe I believe the Society of Magical Negroes is a s satire movie, right? Okay, so uh, the term magical Negro, right? So that's an old term used to describe a black character in a piece of fiction that shows up, helps a white guy with his problem, and then just kind of fucks off, right? Yeah, uh, I think um, Alfred, but black, usually. It's, it's sometimes a butler, sometimes a maid, something like that. Yeah, but usually their role isn't like Alfred's has, has a pretty substantial role. I'm thinking more of um, Bagger Vance. Even less right? of, yeah, true. Uh, like a Bagger Vance or, um, you know, Morgan Freeman uh, when he plays God. Like he shows up, he's got magical powers, he helps the white guy, and then the white guy learns a lesson. But he's not, the story isn't about the black guy. He just happens to be there, right? And that's what a magical Negro is. Uh, it, it is a, a term used to describe this uh, phenomenon, right? This trope. Uh, so the society of magical negroes is taking that trope and saying look it actually is real there really is a society of uh, magical negroes that go around helping white people and it's supposed to be satire when this new black guy gets inducted into the club and then shenanigans happen obviously and probably lessons learned i didn't see the movie it looks stupid it didn't look like super funny but it looked like eh, there might be a, a chuckle here and there right but I think, like I said, I think Super Sly here is unfamiliar with the terms. He doesn't know what the movie actually is trying to uh, do. Those that are uh, in this movie that are projected and uh, promoted. To Green, Green Mile is a good movie. example. So, uh, Urban Folk. Uh, Green Mile is perfect example. Like he has, he even has magic powers, sure. and there's no like. <laughs> Eric is too dumb to understand calling himself that, and why it's funny because he's literally this. He helps. FNT not be racist. Carl Weathers in, in Happy Gilmore. Yeah. It's all in the hip. It's all in the hip. <laughs> Chuckle at the knee. No, that's not what I said. <laughs> We're not going to go see this. Maybe a handful of sprinkling of, of, of Europeans and, and Caucasians. Yeah, possibly just for the, the, the cannon fodder behind it. But weird flex. So Eric July took time to kind of chide that this movie is, is flopping going to flop well that's the first thing duh um so let's take a listen real quick like i said this is a real weird flex by eric because of all things he could, he could flex on uh products that, not, that didn't make money to compete he's not flexing on anybody in his industry uh for him to kind of say look i'm making more money than you so let's take, take a listen real quick Say it's as much as $70 million that they spent on this movie, which is an absolute disaster if that's the case. I just don't see that. But they did for sure spend more than a million dollars on that and far more than a million. But to put that into perspective, Yara number one also, it's all over the weekend as well. And Yara number one is at a little over a million dollars and 1.2 million. So we've made as much money as the American Society of Magical Negro. Well, they're actually up to 1.3 now. So well, American Society. Everybody buy tickets to the American Society of Man. Don't go to the movie because like, it doesn't actually look that good. But just buy the ticket just so that way it makes more money. <laughs> yeah, just right, despite him. Pull off a Bruce on Eric July. Why <laughs> not? <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, once again, Eric July didn't have their budget. Um, Eric July's budget is small. His uh, margin of error is extremely smaller. Um, also, um, Focusrite Pictures put this thing out. Focusrite is owned by Comcast Uni and NBC Universal. They can afford to do this type of thing and lose money on it. Eric July cannot. Eric July's 1.2 million is helping to keep the lights on. That's a big difference between you having to, having to hit a million, 1.2, 1.3 million to keep going versus them putting out product, them writing it off as a tax. You, you want to hear the, uh, the funny thing about this? Uh, it was projected to gross around 3 million. Uh, so they actually, they actually had high hopes for the movie. It, it failed. It, it got like a third of it. Uh, but I mean, they they actually, you know, this wasn't a movie that they just didn't try with. They tried with it. It just didn't uh, succeed. Apparently, Arthur the King opened up that weekend, too. That's probably what beat him. Uh, it happens. Axel, uh, right off loss. And them still chugging along and still making earn. I, I thought I had a lot of fucking tabs open. Jesus Christ, Super Sly. Jesus, All these yeah, look at that. <laughs> and your computer's just, just begging you to stop. Please, not another tab, Super Sly, please. Can't, can't take it. I'm tired, boss. The computer's overheating. <laughs> yeah. It's just that meme from the Green Mile. I'm tired, boss. Tired. Earning profits, shares, market share, all that good stuff. Universal, NBC, Comcast is going to be okay. If American Society of Negroes flops and flops hard, they will be all right. They're not going anywhere. They can miss multiple times. Eric July cannot miss maybe once and then that's it. What First of all, the actual buyers is right on par with AlphaCore. And when I say... I, I didn't know Chris Bacon was going to make an appearance oh, in this. Pulled up. Look at that. He pulled it. Chris Bacon pulled it. He put, he put his interview with Chris Bacon in, in his uh, Magical Negro video. We got the three in one. We're reacting to Super Sly, yeah. and then we react to Eric July's video. Now Chris Bacon. Yeah. <laughs> right on par. I mean, within like two to less than three percentage points. Okay. And the, the actual book sales of the books themselves are actually down compared to Alpha Core. So what's driving that number is simply the amount of merchandise that's currently available because there's more merchandise available than there's ever been in the price points of this merchandise, particularly those packages that people gobbled up in day one and then moving on into day two of this campaign. So these numbers are going to probably start to stall and these campaigns have done this in a very rinse and repeat fashion from day one to day two it dropped off over eight and chris bacon was correct it did stall tremendously here in this uh, last couple of days 80 percent today from yesterday it dropped another 75 percent and again this is on par with alpha core so we're not seeing anything great. We're not seeing the hype behind Yaira come to any type of fruition. Going to save him. You also have to remember he every campaign he's dumped more and more resources into. Like he, what the hell was that transition? I'm not. I'm not a professional. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a, not a professional YouTuber, but damn, like star wiping or something. Like. <laughs> just, a, just moved it out of the way. Like we're we're watching a Rubik's cube. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I wasn't even sure. Like, did it like when it moved? Did did it go to a different part of the interview, or was it the same interview? And it just he just wanted to add like a fancy graphic to it. Uh, I don't know. It was a weird cut. He did the live action trailer here. He's gotten you know better artists as time has gone on. You know, supposedly the Saska sisters are capable writers. Um, so he's trying to do all of these things and to have no statistical audience growth at all. What's up, George? I I'm here to defend the honor of Hardgrave. How about yeah. you? I I'm here to find out who the white guy on the left is. TJ. Uh, it's TJ Laser. Yeah. No, 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 no. In the in the in that big square uh, picture window. That's a that's the right side. The white guy's on the right. No, side. no, 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 no. Uh, the uh, the white guy on the left. 
Are you calling Super Slay a white guy? Yeah, you know, you know why I'm calling him a white guy? Because, because I, I don't know, but I'm sure YouTube will demonetize us for whatever it is like you're going to say, George. <laughs> I don't like where this is going, but let's keep going. We've gone this far. Well, Why is he a white guy, George? Because I don't hear any any uh, Har Har Harlem Globetrotter accent coming out of him. He's just quiet. He's not going, oh, no, you didn't. Oh, no. Snap, crackle, pop. You white guy. Oh, you're too used to Eric July. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's not even saying it is what it is and all that stuff. What the hell is going on here? Uh, at least you didn't call him a basketball American, George, so we're good for that. And he's the shortest Harlem Globetrotter trotter I've ever seen. Hey, Eric is shorter. Come on. Uh, well, uh, looks like uh, we're not selling to one demographic. Thanks, George. It's not losing a few percentage points as this as this campaign plays out. That's kind of how I see it trending. There's no world where that's successful. And particularly when you look at the fact that he he scaled his company based on the ISOM one results. Because when he put out his first and only transparency statement, that's where he said, I'm gonna go out and buy the where I'm gonna get this warehouse. I'm making all these people part. Yeah, you do look a little sad there, George. Are you okay? You, you uh, like you're, you're hung over. It, 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 it's ju it's just the angle, you know. The angle of the incidents is, does not equal the angle of reflection, you know. Science, science. Yeah, that's all. He just looked a little sad. Like maybe you're a little hung over. Yeah, no, a little no, tired no. today. Yeah, no, it's okay. That's all good. You know, I I took my amphetamines for today. I always do. Part time to full time. I'm hiring the best artists that I can. I'm hiring the Saskas. I'm hiding. I'm hiring, uh, you know, Mike Barron to write books. I'm getting EVS. I mean, Shane Davis to do covers. So he's he's spending money. And, I mean, like he's just dumping it out as fast as he is bringing it in. And the number of employees that he says he has, the number Wait a of awesome. contractors that he says I he has. I just realized what Eric July is doing. Uh -oh, okay. What's he doing? Yeah, I, I figured this out. Uh -oh. Eric July is modeling himself after Mr. Beast. But as fast as the money comes in, he blows it. As fast as the guys come in? Did you say as fast as the dudes come in, he blows them? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll, we'll go with that. <laughs> That's more plausible. There you go. <laughs> and you made a great point. That's going to, that mill is going to keep the lights on for a little bit, but he's not, his pockets aren't getting any deeper. And what we've seen also for this campaign that we haven't seen before is he's taken the crowdfunding approach to this. And we all remember not too long ago how he was bashing crowdfunding. And we see now why he's kind of why he eased off of that over the last two or three months. It's like, it ain't there. His oh, customer base cool. isn't there. Holy uh, the that was like an uh, uh, Incredible Transition. Hulk, uh, uh, you know, early 2000s movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. Crowdfunding. And we see now why he's kind of why he eased off of that over the last two or three months. Yeah, oh, oof. Like, it ain't there. His customer base isn't there. It was a bad cut. Uh, don't don't cut when he's still talking. You have to wait till he finishes and hit that hard cut. And then yeah, man, you gotta look. You gotta go back and uh, rewatch the Incredible Hulk movie. You know. Well, it's not just that. No, because he he, he was still stalk, talking when it cut, and then he was already talking when it cut in. So the two kind of blended there at the end. Audio. Yeah. Yeah. So let him finish a thought. Cut. And then before he starts a new thought, that's where you start the cut. So that way you have that half a second of dead air in order to not make him sound like he's talking over himself. There. Um, he's got the cult. He's got his rotter dies. And that's it. Good. Um, but the word is out. He's not gaining audience. It's not getting bigger in any real way, shape, or form. And he now... Uh, in Cowboy... Hold, hold, on, hold on, George. In Cowboy says, certain people got mad at me when I asked how... Uh, what EJ was doing is significantly different than crowdfunding. I got run out, of, run out of a Discord over it. Well, before, at the very least, before it was different in that he had his product already printed out, right? Now, he doesn't even have it printed out, and he doesn't even know how many he's going to print. So it's looking like a crowdfunder. Uh, he might claim that he doesn't need the money to print out, but it looks that way. It has the appearance and he needs the money in order to print things out. What were you going to say, George? 
Ah, uh, you know, I, I was just going to say um, something, but, you know, I lost track. Because, Damn! You know. No, you did, girlfriend. <laughs> oh, wait, all right, all right. What, what did he say just a few seconds ago? He said, uh, 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 you know. I don't remember what I just said a few seconds ago. You want me to remember what someone else said? Yeah, just just hit the back button. Just uh, uh, one, 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 one tick or one click. Uh, you know, well, before I do that, I got I, I got a five. What is this pounds? Pounds? Oh, thank God, it's not that uh, vi uh, video. Huh. Uh, it says had, EJ guys, is guys. You got you got a you got a super chat. Whoa, anything whoa. above two bucks, please. Whoa, whoa, whoa! In my ear, Joyce. Uh, says Brian, uh, I'm just passionate. Eric July is, is is Monty Brewster. That he is. That he is. Now, there are other crowdfunders who got the book done first, but it's still called... No, but there's a difference between having the book done. Like, I'm going to have the book done, not printed. He had the book printed, and all you had to do was order... Uh, the problem with Eric July is you ordered, but then you still had to wait like three months before you shipped them out. Yeah, it's because he still had to print it. No, he had them printed. He showed them off, George. No, he showed off a sample. No, he showed off a whole bunch of them. We saw that they were printed out. He showed he off had, a bunch of samples. He had 20,000 printed copies he showed before off the first ISO. Gosh. Oh, okay, George. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I rewound it already, so. Guys. And that's it. Um, but the word is out. He's not gaining audience. It's not getting bigger. Uh, yes, yes. I, here it is. Way, shape, or I, I figured it out. Eric July's audience is getting bigger, but it's not the way you think. They're, they're, all, they're all getting fat. They're all getting lazy. And they're all do, uh, making uh, cutting shortcuts. Well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and he now knows more than ever, it doesn't matter if it's Chuck Dixon. It doesn't matter if it's the Saskas. It's not going to matter if it's Mike Barron. It doesn't fucking matter. He... Eric July. Damn it, Katie, four more clips. Jesus. As if I don't got enough tabs open. All right, thank you. We'll take a look at them. We'll we'll get to them. Uh, is the product. He's always been the product. That's what people are buying, and they're buying it less and less and less every single time. He has been his you own worst what? enemy throughout his entire process, and those are the numbers. I'm afraid to stop it, whatever you want me to, George. But if, if, we, if we come out with an Eric July comic book right now, we, we'd probably make a lot of money. Manicus Finch says, send Katie the link. She's got the link. Or, it's like, wait a minute, Eric July. I don't think how, do you think jo how do you think George got the link? I, 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 I was on my way to the Comics Gate Kings and just happened to end up here. I don't know. <laughs> they, they, they put out a phony link. The Kings are like, Tony, give me your link. And they put it in their room. They're like that way. The, we'll you know we'll yeah. trick George and them to click the wrong one. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was, I'm, you know, I just took a left turn at Albuquerque, and like, here I am. Gosh. Yeah. By the and way, like, here's you know, the here's the real link, guys. And everyone clicks it. They're like, yeah, we got rid of those guys. Here's for the real kings. And they put the real link. I think that so. that's what Rich did to EBS. <laughs> <laughs> uh Pilgrim Media for $2 says, Geeks and gamers see the trash fire and see nothing. Uh, you mean, I think you meant say nothing, but yeah, they see and say nothing. They're playing dumb because uh, a lot of them are using Ripasend. Uh, Ripa's end is coming to an end soon. Uh, we, we got, Taylor we, didn't do them favors. Well, oh, okay, wait, two bucks. Go, go, do it, do it, do it. We retired that other one, George. Oh, thank God. I was mm. about to jump. I mean, we're going to bring it back just for you, George. Ah, oh, you bastard. Well, don't tempt it. This isn't my opinion. <laughs> the numbers are what they are. And in business, we look for trends. And the business trend is spot on. It. Once again, he's hitting his metrics, but because of his excessive overspending and this, oof, the profit margins is getting smaller and smaller. His operating costs are getting, starting to grow and grow. Hopefully he's, put, he's, he's trying to stop the bleeding. This is an unfair comparison, weird comparison. You're comparing your campaign for a comic book 
first. I'm surprised he didn't say anything about the thumbnail of Eric as a Somali pirate going, I am the magical Negro now. <laughs> it's a feature film. Not even, that's, you can't even compare the two, but let's continue. Um, has made, and uh, we didn't spend anything near what they spent for anything, not a trailer, not anything. And, and he still won't tell us how much he spent on the trailer. Um, oh, that's easy. I if, uh, if uh, the, that whole thing there, um, production, it was two and a half minutes. It was a yeah. two yeah. and a half minutes. Three, uh, that's about, about, uh, three, about three, uh, three, uh, three to five, uh, three hundred to five hundred thousand dollars with a sixty percent tax credits. So, well, he said he spent about as much as of uh, as a forklift, and that the Yaira costume that she wears at the very end costs more than the trailer. Uh, bullshit. Um. Uh, but you also you, you here, here's the difference, right? Because Eric Eric goes, well, uh, they spent a whole bunch of money on the movie, it made one point three million. They spent a bunch of money on the movie, right? But he he's not taking it into consideration. He spent money, whatever he spent on the trailer, whatever he spent on the um, the writers and everything, because he didn't write the books. He got to pay the Saskas. He's got to pay the artist. You know all that stuff into making the the product exist. Then he didn't take into consideration all the money he's paying for the other products that are part of the campaign that are not the comics that he paid for. Because right? this is not all profit. He's making it sound like his 1.3 is profit and their 1.3 is, you know, he's taking all the other stuff out of it to make it look better. Uh, but I think if you if you, if he gets down to brass tax, it might be around the same amount of money of profit, right? It's a it's a hundred thousand dollars a minute for uh, for an animated commercial. Or it wasn't an animated. Uh, uh, for, it was live no, no, action. no, just uh, humor me. Hundred thousand dollars a minute for a one minute of animation, and it's it's about the same amount of money uh, for a, a live action, okay. and, and, and and there's there's a lot a lot involved in it. We know there was like a hundred people in the credits. So it was just a two minute trailer. Yeah, that, that's that's not uh, easy. Yeah, right, sorry. Kind of looking at him, kind of crazy, and I know a lot of you guys were like, Vancouver gives tax breaks. Blah blah blah. Listen, you could have shot this thing in Texas. Yeah, tax, tax breaks. Tax Atlanta breaks. tax breaks. L.A. tax breaks. Um, yeah. Wyoming tax breaks. Delaware tax breaks. So please stop with the uh, the with the Vancouver because the Saskatchewan sisters from Canada. Stop. Yeah. Okay. Because that's plane, bullshit. Plane ticket the loan for that. Uh, see, that's bullshit. See, the thing with the tax breaks is you get a tax break for the money that you uh, that you spend on location. So if you're in Canada at a particular location, you're going to get the tax breaks for that location. Uh, well, that's why he sent everybody up there. Uh, what's up, Super Slices? Thanks yeah. for coming to my video. No problem. Yeah, I'm, I'm in shock, though. Oh, oh, I was oh, oh, hold on, that George. Hold on, George. I'm talking to the right, chat. All right, all right, all right. I was shocked, Super Slice, that you had you didn't say anything about the thumbnail. I was very taken aback. I thought you would you would you would have hard on Eric for that, that thumbnail because man, talk talk about minstrel show. Putting yourself in the Somali pirate. Uh, you know, I'm the captain now. Putting his head on that guy and putting I'm the magical Negro now. Come on, how could you not have talked about that? Go ahead, George. What were you saying? All right, uh, I'll just I'll just cut to the chase. Eric July uh, has missed uh, a, a prime opportunity to make a lot of money. And I'll tell you what it is. It's that woman there dressed in that really slick Yara costume at the very end. If you Porn? made that in, if you made that into a poster, if you had that. Uh, that pose, that that photograph on uh, one of the covers of of his many uh, many vari cover variations, it'd probably be the highest selling cover in his entire campaign or crowdfunding or whatever it is store. Possibly, yeah, well, because wrong. yeah, that it, that's that's that money. Wow, uh, it, it, not just on the all, table. In, all in my George, all in my ear. You can you don't have to be that loud. Oh no, no, I'm I'm trying to compensate for the uh, the guy who c continues yelling every time he comes on here. Who's from? Alaska. He's not here. He hasn't been here in like a long time. George. I know. I'm, I'm missing the guy already. That's why I'm yelling. <laughs> Uh, Pilgrim Media for two dollars says, "Who makes a making of doc of that shiznit? I've never seen a making of doc, uh, seriously, of like a, a trailer. Oh, well, two minute trailer. Yeah, it is the weirdest thing. All right, let's give you a little Sturgis. You were saying, George? Jo oh, George left. I warned him not to tempt you, and he did yeah. the thing." <laughs> Thanks for your input, George. That staff and crew, half of his staff is from the U.S., the other half from Vancouver. Just the plane tickets alone, the food, the lodging, the equipment. Stop. 
I get it. This is y'all's guy. You want to win? I, I want to win too, but not like this. Is not a win. You're comparing your comic book hitting its metric because it has to versus an NBC Universal focus rate putting out a movie and already expecting it to, to, to be a loss is not a flex. It's not a flex. This is a multi billion dollar company that can afford to have subsidiaries put out crap movies and not miss a beat. You, sir, you get one shot at this. Don't Shout miss out. your chance to blow. For, um, getting us to this point. If I had their Shout out. crap, the cool thing that I could do with this company. But I, I, someone give him, I want, give him $10 million. I want to see him do some cool stuff. I just, I just could imagine the crazy shenanigans Eric July would get up to if he, he had like $100 million. Shout out to the Rivers fans. Um, we. And yeah, shout out to you, to the fans that are helping Eric keep the lights on. This this is for y'all. This is a win for y'all to help keep the lights on. With that being said, I don't get too long with it. Y'all have a good one, peace. All right. Take it easy. Damn it, I didn't mean to replay. I was trying to stop it. Yeah. Uh, I think it was really ridiculous uh, that that Eric would do that. Shout out, says Thunder Duck. Shout out. Uh, all right, guys. We're going to debut a brand new segment here on the show. Uh, TJ has no idea what this segment is. I was working on it before the show. I got everything all set. Hopefully, this goes off without a hitch, TJ. Are you excited? Excited for this? I'm curious. Let's go. It's a brand new segment. Nobody steal it. EVS, I'm looking at you. Do not steal. It's a brand new segment. <laughs> All right, it's another exciting episode of Frog Tony, Retard Hunter. We're here in the deep jungles of Twitter. We found ourselves a retard. His name is James Hurley. Now, uh, you might be familiar with this man, James Hurley, because he is a retard of levels that I thought were previously unreachable, guys. Unreachable levels of retardation. Okay. Uh, so he put this tweet this tweet out at student of God at Matt Barr. Here's the clip of Frog Tony saying he is a better writer than Chuck Dixon. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna play this clip for you. See if you can uh, possibly find why this clip is retarded. Okay, you ready for this, TJ? You're in the clip. Look at that. I'm in the clip. You're in the clip. You ready for this? Let's see it. All right. Strange Signal says, I am a better writer than Chuck Dixon. Oh, damn it. You just wanted me to say that so you could clip it. Fuck. Got me. Got me. Damn it. Gotta be smarter. <laughs> Gotta be smarter than that. He Wait, clipped me. Fucking hell. He made the big fuss out of that. <laughs> this retard. This retard clipped me. Reading someone else saying they were better than Chuck Dixon, then he even included me saying, "Oh hell, you just wanted me to say that so you could clip it." And then uh, he went off. New levels of retardation I've never seen before. <laughs> I told you, told you the levels of retardation <sighs> off the charts, off the fucking charts, guys. <laughs> reading a super chat and clipping you saying it. Not, <laughs> but here's the thing, right? He could have easily clip this and not included the last part he's so fucking retarded okay that he clipped it included me pulling up the person's comment that i read and then he included the part where i said oh no he just wanted me to say that so you could clip it and then he's passing this off on twitter to matt Barr and student of god and whoever else will listen to his retarded ass that tony thinks he's a better writer than chuck dixon Gentlemen, that was fucking Even case of ripotardis is all I can say. <laughs> Ripotarditis. <laughs> Ripotarditis. But uh, we're not done. We're not done because we have one more example of some retard we need to hunt. Uh, are you familiar with the uh, genus... Retardus Americanus Navy Boyus, uh, more commonly known as Matt Barr. Oh no! What did so, he do this time? 
Retardus Americanus Navy Boyus Matt Barr here says, I said PTP was a piece of shit. Nobody listened. Then everybody knew. I said Liam was unhinged liar. And everybody already knew. I said Tony was disingenuous. I thought his support of rape threats and pedo humor was vile. Nobody listened. My spidey sense verified with receipts. Hail Comicscape. Hail Comicscape, guys. Uh, so what is what is Matt Barr here uh, gloating about? What is he responding to, TJ? Do you have any idea? Have any any clue? No. Well, it's, it's to this. It's to uh, Nicholas McHugh. McHugh says, Frog Tony goes after EVS. Oh, man. I'm in trouble now. Guys, I took a shot at the king. So, uh, okay. So, so here, here, here it is. We're gonna, we'll go into it. it. Says at the Geek Getaway, exposed as an SJW. We're getting, we're getting double retardation in this one. Attacks EVS. Right. All right. So this is a, this is a Mad Max stream where Mad Max is going over a Dane and a little movie perp stream. So, uh, if you don't know Mad Max the Mandalorian, he's a uh, anti. Anti SJW, right? He's a person that goes after. He's an SJW that goes after anti SJWs. Uh, I met him through the Amico fiasco. Uh, initially, we didn't like each other because I was obviously calling out the scam, and he was obviously in the cult. Uh, we had several quote unquote debates where I just steamrolled the shit out of him, and uh, basically got him to look really retarded and agree with everything I said. Um, so flash forward, and uh, me and Max, we. We're cool at this point, you know, when this happens. And um, EVS had popped into a Mad Max stream, right? And they were talking. and uh, So Max was insistent that he wanted to get EVS back on because he wanted to debate EVS. He was going to debate him. Okay? And I said, I said, Max, this is behind the scenes, right? This, this is, uh, you know, inside baseball, behind the scenes. He's like, I'm going to get EVS signed, and I'm going to debate him, and I'm going to prove that EVS is... Uh, you know, an idiot, and I know better than he does. And I said, Max, I said, you're terrible at debate. Fucking terrible, right? You, you're, you're, you don't prepare. You don't know what you're talking about half the time. Uh, you have no idea what other people are talking about. I was like, so, you know, if he comes on and he just starts saying things, you're not going to know if he's lying or not. And basically, you're just going to agree with whatever he tells you because you're bad at this, right? I said, if your intention is to bring him on to make him look bad, it's going to backfire. He's going to look good. Your audience is going to think he looks good now. And whatever it is you hope to accomplish is not going to happen. Now, I say this not because I don't like EVS, but because I liked Max. Because we were friends, right? And I don't want friends doing stupid things. Uh, unlike Friday Night Tights that see Eric July putting out a Yaira trailer and going, hey, that's a great job. <laughs> good job. Yeah, you don't want your friends to embarrass themselves. I, I go, Max, I don't want you to embarrass yourself, right? But he was insistent. So then he did a stream where he was he was... Uh, EFAPing Dane and Perp and they're talking about EVS and he's still talking about getting EVS on it. And so I'm in the chat and I'm going, no, this is you know, this would be bad for you essentially, right? Uh and so uh Mr. Nicholas here, he even gets a part of the chat. Uh I say uh what else popped in? What's up, Katie? I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, I hear you now. Yeah, you were you like when you first came in, it was really low. Um, oh, well, you hear me now? Good. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll read through a little bit of this. Um, it says I said casual conversation normalizes the person, and allows them to come off as not so bad, which leads people down a bad path, right? Essentially, what I'm telling, I'm trying to talk to Max in a in a way that he would understand. Okay. You talk to people that are SJWs, they don't understand normal language, so you got to talk to them in their language. It's right. It's like talking to someone from a foreign country, right? You can't talk to them in English. you got to talk to them in their language. I said, Max and RJ gave EVS a platform among Max's audience and lefty people, right? It's true. Max and them are lefty. They, they let uh, EVS on. I said, Max no potentially made talk EVS... like Eric July. Because <laughs> yeah. he uses these phrase, phrases, platform and shit. <laughs> I said, Max potentially made EVS look, quote, not so bad to Max's audience, right? Again, 
Uh, this is all inside baseball because I'm telling Max, because Max is insistent that he was going to get him on to make him look bad, right? That's what I'm arguing against. I'm not arguing against EVS coming on. I'm arguing against Max thinking that having EVS on was some sort of win on his part, right? Uh, and I even said Bill Maher comes prepared, okay? Max doesn't come prepared. I'm telling Max, you weren't prepared. You can't have somebody come on, right? If you're going to argue with somebody... You can't just wing it. You're not. He's not good at winging it. He doesn't have a good memory. He barely remembers what he says. Uh, he'll tell you. But I'm, t- I'm telling you all this to tell you this. Okay. So uh, this this is me. I laughed at it. And I explained a little bit about what's going on. Uh, of course, Nicholas did his whole thing. I said I literally just explained that in my tweet. Uh, he said you used Bill Maher to shit on Uncle E. No, I used Bill Maher to shit on Ma- like. Nicholas is so retarded that he's not even paying attention to what's going on. So then, uh, eventually, Nicholas says, Was Frog Tony shitting on EVS or not Mad Max? So he has, he's tagging in Mad Max now. Uh, please and thank you. So, thankfully, EVS came and he says, I thought Frog Tony was one of my, quote, detractors, and that's why I talked to him. I sent him my comic last year, and he liked it, and now we're pals. Whatever he said about me in 2022 is water under the bridge. So there you go. As you can see, that was 12 hours ago. We're good. Me and EVS, good. No problems. No, uh, you know, uh, animosity. No ill will. And again, know. they've had the discussion together about comics, based, comics getting everything. Uh, yeah. Here we and are. he was here. EVS came here. I kicked everybody out. We had a discussion. I said, EVS, this is what I've been led to believe what Comicsgate is. You know, I would like some clarification. He talked. We had a back and forth. I agreed with, a, I want to say like 95% of everything he said, I agreed with wholeheartedly. I said, yep, that's what I want. That's what I'm looking for, right? And th- now we're here. We're here. <laughs> go f- go far back and we're all related. Or retarded. So either way. <laughs> right? But see, this is why... Um, our buddy Matt Barnes, extra retarded, because this was 12 hours ago, okay, at 8:26 a.m. today. Okay, uh, hold on. I hate I hate that you can't go back and post like that. See, so this this was from 12:35 p.m. Matt Barr, you're a little late to the fucking party. You're over here gloating about this this post when when EVS has already said that th- this is not true. It's already been settled. The matter's already been settled. Matt, you're, you're, you're late. You're late and retarded. Guys, guys, if you're going to try to get one over on somebody, at least check the replies, right? Check the, see what's going on first. Don't jump the gun. Matt, you jumped the gun just a little bit, and that's why oh, what a surprise. you are. Man, that's why he's one of today's retards, um, but. Isn't he always I, I, a fucking retard? Always yes. fighting on the internet. Always. Thank you. Uh, I will change out of my retard hunter clothes. And remember, uh, Even I join us next week. That. Join us next week for another exciting episode of... <laughs> All right. <We're> back. <laughs> I like that. That's good. Logical Mail says, the reason why I asked, is it possible that Eric Joy screwed one of the sisters in exchange to promote Yaira? Oof. Uh, I don't think he would have to screw him to promote Yaira. I think he, he would just screw him because his wife is overbearing and made him look like a chump when she forced him to put her ad in the comic. Uh, what, do you, what do you think about that? You're a lady, Katie. Wow, that kind of rhymed. Uh, so I assume you might have thoughts. Would you feel comfortable watching uh, your husband hugging up on another lady, putting an arm around her like that, like we've seen Eric July do? No. Fuck no. I would not. I'd be like, uh, what's with that? Like, I wouldn't be a bitch or out to back, but, or say anything at first, but I'd be like, okay, I'll keep that in the back of my mind. Because uh, we can forgive and move on, but we never forget. So if I was his wife, I'm sure she's like, okay, noted. I'll keep that in mind. So then now she got those clips. 
They're going to play Katie's clips in court. They're going to be like, see that? Right there, Katie got you. Busted. <laughs> Wouldn't that be some shit how that would happen? Oh, my God. Oh, Lord. Oh, it is weird. Here's your, uh, we're going to give you a little economics here. A little economics lesson for logical men. High risk, high reward. The economics of comics. Pod owner, oh, Lord. It's a ballsy move. Some people, not many. Sing my rap. Lats, phonemics. What payment? Not any. Are you digging my groove? I gave you 40%. You're a cold of bitch. I gave you 40%. You got a chance to get rich. I gave you 40%. Don't do no little pop from the bluffing. I gave you 40%. So right now you get nothing. Um, Bianca says, I believe he put the ad to support his wife's business. Yeah, what I'm saying is, Bianca, that his wife slapped him and said, put my ad in your in your comic book. I don't think he did it on his own. There's another super chat from Logical Mail, too. I think they missed that. Is it? Oh, did I miss that? Ah, oh, there it is. Hey, Tony, something hit me. Uh, it is, is it true that the Nathan Grayson screwed Zoe Quinn in exchange to promote whatever game she was putting out? Uh, and so I guess that's why the reason why I asked is it possible that EJ screwed one of the sisters oh okay uh, so this right here th this is why Gamergate is such a clusterfuck right because there's so much misinformation and so much hearsay and the game of the telephone and all that okay. Nathan Grayson didn't screw okay Zoe Quinn didn't screw Nathan Grayson to get good coverage or a good review. They just happened to be fucking when he covered her game. Right? He was putting out an article about uh, upcoming uh, indie games that you should you know, pay attention to, be on the lookout for. And in that article, he mentioned Depression Quest, the game that Zoe Quinn was working on. He failed to disclose that him and Zoe Quinn were in a relationship. Or he could have Partly, said that he's the, a friend of hers and left it at that. I mean, yeah. Just at well, least that's what that's that. why well, that's what I mean. That's what I mean by yeah. relationship. You know, whether it's a friend relationship, but I believe he didn't disclose. Here's here's the thing. I believe he didn't disclose because Zoe Quinn was obviously cheating on her boyfriend with Nathan and four other guys. So I think he didn't disclose originally because he didn't want uh, the boyfriend to find out, right? To be suspicious. Um, but then when the boyfriend blasted them all on the internet and, and put everything fucking out. Instead of owning up to it and just going, yeah, I fucked up. I should have let you guys know. Right? And that had been the end of it. It would have just died right there. No Gamergate. Uh, instead, they all doubled down and said, no, you're actually uh, sexist for pointing that out and wor being worried about that. And then they turned it into a review and they started gaslighting people. Like, there's no review. There was never a review. Yeah, because no one ever said there was. It was never a review. You're right. You're correct on that. You're the one who invented the review. So, yeah. So, it was a big fucking mess. But thank you, Logical Mail, uh, for bringing that up. Uh, let's give you a little... Uh... Buck, 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 buck. Buck, 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 buck. Buck, 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 Remember when we thought he was talking about his wife on stream and it was his dog? <laughs> Yes, yes, I remember that. That was so fucking funny. Uh, so Blood Ruth is going to be written by those two Luciferians as well as a, with a naked Yaira in front of her. What? There's a yeah, naked there's Yaira. A, they made a poster of Yaira with uh, Blood Ruth, right? For some reason, the coloring on Yaira is so messed up that it looks like she's nude. Oh, okay. I, I was going to say, she's not really nude. Like, I seen someone saying something about like naked Yaira and lesbians, and I was like, what? How are you guys talking about? Damn. Uh, no, see? she didn't. Yeah, I think that was BBS who remarked that first, that she looked new. <laughs> uh, let me see. Let me get the Damn, original tweet. Sue. Too. What happened? Sue just hooking you up. That's what's happening. I, I can't see because I'm on the Twitter page, so I have no idea what you're talking about. I guess you'll have to wait and find out. Don't do that. Well, that's I can't. Not, that's not, that's <laughs> we'll keep it as a surprise. <laughs> yes, it's a surprise. Uh, but it's goodying the polymath. Uh, did they put it out? Where did they put out the tweet? I don't see it on their page. Unless it's 
I don't think I've seen that. I don't know if that's out there. I've seen the picture of... Okay, here it is. Damn, it's that far back. Fuck, it's all the way... No, it's five hours ago. How many fucking tweets do you ladies put out? Stop. <sighs> fucking people. Just as much as Matt Barr does. All right, so five hours ago. Guess who's writing Blood Ruth? It's us. Because you fans have demanded it. No, it's because you fucked Eric. That's that's why you're writing Blood Ruth. You two both get us drunk. <laughs> this is a nude, okay? Uh, Look the Ripperverse is the fans' first company. We're always listening to you. We absolutely love writing Sydney. Just don't tell Yaira. Awesome art by the equally awesome Philip Burnett. Look, I don't think anybody was going, hey, we, we haven't seen what you wrote on Yaira. Why would anybody be demanding you to write fucking Blood Ruth? Is that what what Eric's telling his wife? Lolo, see, honey, I'm keeping them, I'm keeping them around. See, what it is is, honey, is they now writing Blood Ruth. I know they was writing Yaira and I told you that was it, uh, but they writing Blood Ruth. That white oh. girls writing, they, they writing that black sister comic? Yeah, yeah, honey, what it is is there's two of them, and one of them wrote Yara, so I need to give the other one the other girl, because I got no other girls in the company. That theory that Blood Ruth is his wife's self-insert might actually be some, if this is the case. So, so this is the image, and yeah, she's naked. Also, Blood Ruth's head looks huge for some reason. Well, I think this is fan art. Here, let me see if I can get a bigger... Uh, What's up with Yara's tits, man? They look weird. Well, they look the perfect size. What are you talking about? Okay. And they look like they're about up to her chin, dude. Yeah, that's what I said. They look like Suits Yara. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. <laughs> they're copying you, Suits. So, so th this is like a pink that is really fucking, like, almost clear. Because it, there's almost no difference right here between the, the, the color and the thigh the color in the boot so yeah i can see where people might be like wait a minute what's worse is look at that fucking hand what the hell's going on with those hands oh god it's fucking uh that was his name uh rob liefeld did you get liefeld to do yeah, this yeah liefeld disease look at that <laughs> this is a liefeld drawing ah fuck this one's not so bad um but those hands it's almost like two different drawings that they threw together but yeah, look, look, uh, I think they're naked. But uh, thank you for the final is boxing. Uh, we're going to talk more about the announcement in a minute. Uh, but here is your uh, chicken. Buck, 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 buck. All right. What else we got? Do we got another super chat? I think there's another super chat. From Suit. From Suit himself. What is that? It's like... Uh, we got some of those uh, didgeridoo dollars. All right. Suit with the big 50 Australian. That's a lot of money. Guys, that's not a little bit of money. That's a lot of money. Look, I got to be honest with y'all. I... No, 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 uh -oh. Y'all almost had me, see? Flip this again. <laughs> Y'all almost had me. Then we'll have another retard hunter signing segment. <laughs> Let me, uh... Look, I gotta be honest with you. I, Frog Tony, am a better artist than EVS. Ethan is quite pathetic story at storytelling compared to me. My Frog comic is also better drawn than Cyber Frog because I simply have an artist who knows how to draw. There you go, suit. Clip away! <laughs> Damn. <laughs> right, but thank you for the 50 Australian dollars, which is $32 US. Which is, that's a lot of money. Suit, you... I love you, Suit. You don't have to give me that much money to have me read stupid things. Uh, I read stupid things all on my own. All by myself. But uh, I appreciate it. Uh, now i got to do the math. Next time, make it an easier number. So, that, so the math is easier. Uh, but what, what we can give Conversion one? in the same... Yeah, like well, right, yeah, yeah right, to, right to conversion. You, you have the... A lot of room. You had fifty dollars worth of room. You could have wrote me the conversions. Do me a favor. Help, help a brother out is what I'm saying. 
Ah, uh, what do we got? What's what's the? Uh, I ain't got no big deal. Ah, right, here we go. You niggas, I'm living my best life. Back and forth with you niggas, I'm living my best life. Back and forth with you niggas, I'm living my best life. Back and forth with you niggas, I'm living my best life. Back and forth with you niggas, I'm living my best life. Back and forth with you niggas, I'm living my best life. Back and forth with you niggas, I'm living my best life. Back and forth with you niggas, I'm living my best life. Back and forth with you niggas, I'm living my best life. Back and forth with you niggas. You all heard Tony. He, he don't want it. Tony out. Uh, Smiller in. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it is? If I were doing a frog comic, I would call it Frog of War. Damn. That's what yeah. people in the chat are saying. <laughs> and I send it to Ethan. Then he will kick you out of comics, David. And Smiller back in. <laughs> uh, all right. He says, I couldn't. I had three characters left. Uh, you could have played one of the, my cartoons instead of your stupid... Cl- Sorry, we don't play your cartoons for money. That's not how it works. Smiller in! Tony, out. Yeah. Ethan's just going to play that clip at the beginning of his show. He's like, guys, I'm very uh, disappointed. I got some disappointing news. Smiller in. Tony, out. Uh, Sorry, I had to go AFK. The le- what did I come back to? <laughs> uh... All right. Uh, let's see. Here it is. Big announcement, guys. The big announcement. Uh, man, they just look evil. Just... All right. Hi, guys. Hi, Hi, it's Jen. And Sylvia. And we have a special announcement to make. We are not only the writers of Yaira, we are the writers of the upcoming book, Library. Oh we have been sitting on this one for a long time, you guys, uh, because you demanded it. Yes. How? Co- okay, so how could you be sitting on this for a long time if they also demanded it? And I called it when the trailer, the making of the trailer came out. Remember? I well, I called it when when, when 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 Blood Ruth came out. I was like, oh, the Saskas will write that. Yeah. I think everyone was calling it. Yeah. It's yeah. way too obvious. But why would anybody? Yeah, go ahead, Katie. No, I'm saying, why couldn't he just hire another woman to do the project? Like, I, I, I hate these women. I hate them. I do, too. I also don't think they're good writers. Uh, their movies suck. Um, I haven't, that trailer, 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 that trailer proves suck. everything. Yeah. The, the trailer 100% shows me. And again, if they were sitting, they go, we're sitting on this for a while. No one was demanding. Did I see anybody demanding them write Blood Ruth? I seen everyone demanding that Blood Ruth should be a thing. That I remember, right? People were like, hey, uh, you should make Blood Ruth a character. How come there's no Blood Ruth book? And Eric July was all mealy mouth. Well, I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to have a Blood Ruth. Cause, uh, mm-hmm. I was like, okay, Eric, we all know you're having a fucking Blood Ruth. Every time you introduce a character, it's, it's getting a fucking book, right? But, uh, yeah. Uh, we haven't seen what they wrote for Yaira, so I don't think anybody was demanding it. And I would laugh my ass off if if it was really bad. If it was like the worst written book, and everyone's they're like, "Oh shit!" Now we got to look forward to another one of these. Now we got to pretend that Yaira is good and that Blood Ruth will be good based on the Yaira that is not good, but we're all pretending is good. Uh. Hey Jimmy, you have got it. We will be the writers of Blood Ruth, and Blood Ruth will be, as you probably guessed it, a horror book. Yes, it is going to be scary. It is going to be bloody. Um- okay, how could a comic book be scary? First off, um, I don't, I don't get that. Uh, what's up, Jimmy? I was scrolling up looking for you. Uh, comic books can't be scary. They can be weird. They can be ugly. Uh, they can gross. have horror elements, but yeah, they can't. Like I don't think to frighten you. Yeah. You just close it. You can just be like, oh, shit. And that's it, right? It can be that creepy. I mean, you could that's achieve it. that with movies, but that's about it. I don't um, think you could do Tony, it with comics. Tony, but. Jimmy wants to link. Link? Oh, okay, let me give you the link. I thought I gave Jimmy the link. Give this king his link, Tony. Come on. Oh, I thought they were doing kings tonight. That's why I, didn't, I probably we, didn't give them They one. were. I think they just finished. We've been doing going this long? All right, it's it's in the uh, the cool kids room, Jimmy. You know where that is. <laughs> you know where the cool kids room is. I uh, read some Junji Ito. Uh, yeah, I ha- I've read some Junji Ito. It's disturbing, but I- I'm weird. Okay, Again. so here's the thing. 
for me, I don't know about anyone else, but for me, when I know something is fake, right? I don't get scared at horror movies. I don't get scared at reading horror things. I don't get uh, disturbed watching, you know, YouTube stuff, read like creepy pastas because I know they're fake. Or the SCP now, shit. Yeah. If you want a movie to scare me, Mystic River, the very beginning, this movie almost gave me fucking anxiety. Okay, beginning of Mystic River is literally a kid running away from a pedo, right? And you're you're like in the POV of the kid running and you can hear him breathing heavy and you can hear the guy chasing him. That shit gave me anxiety. That was scary because it's like, oh, that's real. Like kids actually do get kidnapped, right? Uh, what's up, Jimmy? He just walked right into that one. <laughs> Man, look at the way I got my camera. Pos- oh, okay. I was like down there in my camera position. I looked even shorter. Wait, put me at the bottom again? Put me at the very bottom? You, when you no, come in last, you, you, you end up at the I, bottom. I, well, I looked like I was. Look at this. I look like I'm in a, I need a booster seat. Look at yeah, it's good. down there. It's because the banner cuts off part of, part of your. Uh... Yeah, I look extra short. Man. There you well, go. Thanks. There you go. <laughs> cool. What's so up, what, Jimmy? What Catch me up, guys. What, what are we What are we watching? Hello, Katie. Uh, right now, we're watching the announcement of Bloodruth. The Saskas, who you, the fans apparently demanded that the Saskas mm. write Bloodruth, even though apparently they already were writing it. They just didn't tell anybody, and they've yeah. been sitting on this for a while. Also, Yaira hasn't come out, so I don't know why the fans who haven't read Yaira, the only thing in the Ripperverse they would have written, yeah. would have demanded them to write another Ripperverse book. It doesn't make any sense to me. I think Eric July is just fucking one of them, and he's giving them jobs to keep them around. I hope it's not the tranny on the left there with the fangs. <laughs> I think that is the one. Oh. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the making of trailer, Jimmy, but he's hugging yeah. on the one sister, and it's like a long hug. One oh. of those, like, not not like where you, you hug what? and then let go. It's like a hug, and then you drag your arms across the lady. More than three Mississippis, uh, it's sexual assault. That, that was like a five Mississippi. Uh, at one point, he's like rubbing her back when she's sitting in a chair and he's doing like the back rub thing. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's crazy. I wouldn't even touch you guys on the back. I mean, I, I don't think I'd hug you guys more than two Mississippis, you know? That's a Hopefully. long, that's a long hug, man. I don't even hug my mom that long. Oh. <laughs> she gets three Mississippis. That's it, mom. Sorry. <laughs> He just pushes her away. Pfft. Yeah, oh, we're not that country, mom. One Mississippi, Sorry. two Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> we're from the south, but you know, got to cut it off. Yeah, Suit easy. said, "I just tweeted EBS, you're going down." Yeah, Suit made me read uh, his super chat, uh, which says all this. I don't know if you could read that, Jimmy. Uh, basically, it uh, someone clipped me reading a super chat saying that I was a, I'm a better writer than Chuck Dixon. So suit super chatted me saying I was a better writer than EBS and that my <laughs> my artist is better. And then James Hurley will clip this again. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> was it the hot one on the right? They're um... not hot. Sean, Shank, Sean, whatever, Christopher, they're not hot. Get that out of your head. No, he said the hot, one of them has to be the hot one, Katie. Even if they're both ugly, one of them is, is has to be no, objectively hotter than hot. the other one. No, 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 they're not hot, they're both- right? Even if, they, even if they're both ones, one is like a one and the other is like a 1.1. 1. 1. So she would be technically the hot one of the twins, right? No, they both fell out of the tree. <laughs> well, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Even uh, even Ray Charles, man, he could tell the difference between hot, like what he thought was hot. He'd grab him by the wrist, you know? You know, he'd blind, he'd grab him by the wrist. They had a little wrist. He was like, oh, you're hot. <laughs> Trey says, Blood Ruth is going to be great and will bring in millions. I don't know. Here's my issue with all this, right? And um, Eric July's Isom, Isom 1 and 2, and I said this before, they were basically like all ages books, right? And then he's like, all right, we're going to do Yaira, but it's like a 16 plus book. I'm like, well, why would you do that? Like, why would you spin off a 16 plus book from an all ages book? And then now oh. Blood Ruth is going to be this horror story, which is probably going to be 16 plus too. I'm like, it's two characters from your all ages, family friendly, anti SJW comic book company that are now 16 plus books. I'm like, it doesn't make no sense to me. I mean, if I'm going to be completely honest, I, I think the only character that actually has interest or that could be interesting is Blood Ruth. I think it's got a good marketable name and it's the only character I think you can actually add a story to. All the other stuff has just been done before, you know? 
So well, Bloodroot has been done before. The boys have a character in Gen V that is a black lady that can control blood to do various things like Bloodroot. Oh, in Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat had a character in its uh, its lore. Um, oh yeah, Scarlet. 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 Yeah. 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 Sandman says, I don't know, Punisher branches out from Spider-Man. This is true, and I knew you were going to bring this up. This is exactly what I talk about, being prepared. Okay, so, the Punisher that spun off of Spider-Man was not the Punisher Max book. Remember, when Punisher spun off of Spider-Man, they were still Comics Code Authority. So the violence in Punisher was no more than any violence that was found in a Spider-Man book. Criminals in Spider-Man shot guns, they shot at each other, people died. Uh, there's no gore in the original Punisher run. You know, a bullet will hit hit somebody and the guy falls down. It's not like the guy's chest explodes and there's fucking guts going everywhere. Uh, you're thinking of like later on Punisher where it's like it gets more violent, but that's later. Well, Eric July's in the beginning phases and he's going, hey, we're going upping the violence already. Well, I don't know. I still, I, I would still, I mean, you know, agree with the comment um, because that would still rate at about 16 plus book, you know, with, with Punisher, even if, because there's still guns and there's still violence in it. So it's a little more more adult than the spider-man was but i think what they're talking about up here going full-on horror and based on the film they made in the past how graphic horror to them i mean can we expect you know yeah. i mean it, it, yeah. it, it blood roots in the mystery of the beer stein mansion <laughs> I, think the other thing thing be, I think it's gonna be pretty pretty rough i think it's gonna be very gory very rough I'm going to um, die laughing if it ends up uh, being the same as uh, Longa's Isadora. <laughs> I'm going to laugh if someone vomits on someone else. If someone vomits on another character in one of their books, oh. it, it'll just be <laughs> chef's kiss. No, it feels to me like if they end up writing Blood Ruth, um, it feels like they've worked their way into Eric Dry's company and are slowly taking it over. Yes. Yeah. Well, they're the keepers of the lore. They're writing Yaira, which is his biggest book, yeah. and now Blood Ruth, which I... Objectively, just looking at things, uh, there was a lot of people interested in Blood Ruth when she debuted. Uh, the EVS cover uh, was a fan favorite of everybody's. Oh, and uh, Ice and Two? Yeah. yeah. You know, the design, got that book. Because, like Morb said, this, like she looks, she's dressed like Solomon Kane, so obviously people. Hmm. I mean, the thing, too, I mean, like if they're coming in and they're ahead of the Lord, then you want to hire writers. You want to get the best writer. Not yourselves, you know. It's like they're, you know, they're inserting themselves into everything and taking all the all the jobs. I mean, they're pretty much, you know. Uh oh, boxing historian for five says I'm calling a humiliation ritual for Eric July by having these two in his business. His association with the Blaze is also an alarming factoid. Uh, could be true. This could be his. Uh, if we see Eric July on Halloween dressing up as Yaira, we'll know it's true. We'll know it's true. <laughs> this, this is his uh, initiation. Back and forth with you niggas, I'm living my best life. Back and forth with you niggas, I'm living my best life. Back and forth with you niggas, I'm living my best life. Back and forth with you niggas, I'm living my best life. Back and forth with you niggas, I'm living my best life. Back and forth with you niggas, I'm living my best life. I have an earworm now, and if I get beat up by all <laughs> the black people in my neighborhood and they get pissed off on me, I'm gonna blame it on you. <laughs> I'm like, what did you, you, you got you. You guys couldn't see, but as soon as I played that, I seen Jimmy's face just dropping lower and lower. Every every N word that came out of Eric's mouth is lower. lower. It's like, I can't believe Tony did that. <laughs> it's catchy, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let, let's uh, hear the rest of this announcement. What the hell is it? Uh, and the art is in. Insane. We cannot wait to share this book with you. It's gonna be out this. Wait, wait. Love you. Guys. Wait, wait a minute. I was gonna point out real quick. These guys have no idea what is good art. Look behind them. You're gonna. You have that on your wall. That's your artwork, and you're telling us there's gonna be good oh, art. Yeah. Ooh, you, good eye. You know, they don't. They don't know art. artwork. <laughs> yeah. Just spraying yeah. paint all over the place. Yeah. The art. Yeah. Yeah, that's the stuff you like and put on your wall in your own home. I hate to see what Jeez. you're gonna put in the book. You know. Well, I know the one. I don't know if you guys were... looks like my four year old did that one. <laughs> what the one on the left? Yeah. yeah. 
don't yeah. know if you guys remember way back when, when the Saskas were first talking about um, Yaira and writing it, uh, they were comparing it to writing for Marvel, and they said literally um, things that Marvel wouldn't let them put into the Black Widow book that Eric July was letting them put into the Yaira book. Oh, wow. Wow. And I have no idea. And the, the Black Widow book is about Black Widow fighting off some uh, like pedophile ring or whatever. And I'm assuming, based on their other work, that they wanted like Black Widow to like shoot a guy's dick off or something, probably. Because their other comic has like a bunch of like nuns like ripping off cop sticks. So I'm assuming there's going to be at least one dick ripped off by Yaira <laughs> in the book. Well, hopefully it's with her, you know, I was going to say, you know, with her vagina, but I don't know. They're scary looking Maybe, she, maybe she's got teeth. They're not she's very got... pleasant to look at. <laughs> she, she's an alien, so she might got like those like uh, vagina dentata, little teeth inside. Oh. A lot of kego exercises. I mean, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, instead of winter is coming, it's going to be blood roots. Period is coming. People will die. Are you prepared? <laughs> yeah, Are you know. ready for that time of the month? Blood roots. Oh shit! Blood root, <laughs> Mister Period, and she is not happy. God, it's such a horrible. Like it's so insulting. It's like, of course you would, you would named it after a black woman. Good, good job, Eric. That's very. Smart she's got great powers, but it only happens once every 28 days. Unless she's <laughs> late. Oh, yes. It lasts for a week. Um, yeah, we're real assholes, too. So it's, you know, perfect. <laughs> That's why I follow the Bible. I don't know if you guys read the Bible. I'm a very holy, very religious man. And in the I Bible, it's very like, clear. Tony reads the Bible. I can tell Tony reads the Bible. It's very clear. Men, if you're religious, you follow your Bible to the letter. It's very clear. It says... When a woman is unclean because of her monthly, send her away from the village until it's over. Kick her all the way out. Tell her, go. Leave your house. Leave the city. Get far away from you. They knew. They knew in the old days. Women are cranky. Women are going to be bitches. And, it's and better off. You just like problems. Away. Yeah. Don't yeah. forget that one part in the Bible, Tony. You're, you know, and I'm, I'm quoting, or I'm going to add a little bit because I don't remember it verbatim. But it is, if a woman shaves off her eyebrows and redraws on high arching eyebrows and has a pair of fangs, stay away, stay away from that woman. Yeah, I believe that's in Leviticus. Yeah. Might remember. be, might be Revelations. I was thinking, but you know, know. <laughs> uh, well, girl has no name. Says what verse is that? It's true. Uh, it is in. Uh, I want to say Deuteronomy. Uh, either Deuteronomy or, or Numbers. I'll, I'll I'll look it up in a minute. And actually, Dan was here. She's she's the Bible historian over here, man. She's got every verse memorized. I wish she was. You know, she's not around. <laughs> I can ask her. I always, I always, always do that. Whenever I want to win an argument, I go, "It's in the Bible, right?" And I always confirm it with Anna. She goes, "Yes, <laughs> it's in X and X verse." And I go, "See, right, you, here, here it is." It says the Bible states that when when a woman has her monthly period, she remains unclean for seven days. Anyone who touches her is unclean until evening. Leviticus fifteen nineteen states that if a woman has a discharge and the discharge from her body is blood, she shall be set apart seven days, and whoever touches her shall be unclean until evening. Leviticus eighteen nineteen states that one should not approach a woman to have sexual relations during the uncleanliness of her monthly period. So any other discharge is is is, is game on. What? Yeah, any other one, you're good. If it's blood, no. I don't. I, I don't know what it means to be clean, but uh, ew, no. Un, when they say it, when they say Our unclean, day. like they say <laughs> pork pork meat is unclean. It's unholy. It's a, it's a, you know, bad. That is okay. base Leviticus. Yeah. <laughs> They knew that they were like, "Look, we need we, 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 we grab my Bible and actually look in there." <laughs> it's it's in there. It's in there. They were like, "Look, guys, guys, we all know they're they're a headache once a month for like seven days. We we got to figure out how to get them out of the house." And they're like, "Hey, let's just throw something in the Bible." It's like God's on our side; he won't mind. And they put it in Leviticus. See, I got the King James version, so. Look it up. <laughs> I'm not lying. I didn't I'm lie. Cool. I'm not denying it, Tony. I'm just saying. I mean, that's why we, we're assholes anyway. We don't want to deal with y'all when we're on our period. Y'all you know, go fuck off. <laughs> if anything, you make us mad. <laughs> so speaking of that Yara trailer, because I got to get off the period. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to the rest of this uh, announcement here. Oh, yeah. Wait, 
for you to check out Bloodroot. <laughs> Yay! Don't do that. Don't, don't. Oh wait, go back. Is there's an animation? Let me see this. Yeah. I gotta see that. Ah! Can't wait for you to check out Bloodroot. <laughs> So the devil is in Blood Ruth. No. Guys, the, the two... Say, I didn't see this. This is the first time I've seen this. So the, the Satan sisters are writing a comic about a, a lady. Uh, and now the devil's in it. Eric, what are you doing? Eric, you, you're trying to beat those accusations of hiring Satanists by getting them a book that's going to have uh, the devil in it. Well, if you look on the campaign for Yaira, they are referred to as horror queens. So, I mean, they, they still are into all this stuff, man. They're, they have not, you know, <laughs> not repented, you know? Yeah. Look at that. Wow, man. That art is They're pretty good, though. Right? Look at that. That looks yeah. a lot like um, that artist uh, that was on iVampire for Vertigo Comics. I can't remember his name, but it looks a lot like him. Well, yeah. Well, hold on. They're going to announce the artist right here. Michael Montenet is the artist. I've never heard of him. It's not bad. It's not bad. I mean, he, he fits the, the theme. It's very a lot of good use of dark shadows. Uh, you know, it's, it's a good artist to pick for that book. But, I mean, just, yeah, you're right. I mean, taking a look at some of that stuff, I think they're going to go full satanic on it, man. You know, you never go full Satan. Never go full satanic, you know. But I think they're going to do it. So... Yeah, Not a I book. think that's probably going to be the most interesting comic to see come out from them. Yara will tell us what to expect a little bit with Blood, Blood Roof, but I got a feeling that Eric's going to let him just let them do what they want to do and not care. And then hey, it's going Black, to come out. Oh, yeah. Black Angus is here, man. A hilarious guy. He's been quiet. Is he still <laughs> freezing? I'm oh. quiet? What do you mean? I take a couple oh. days off for work and I'm quiet all of a sudden? No, I'm like, man, every time we, we stream, when you're on camera, you're, you're, you got hilarious things to say. But when you go icon, what are you doing back there behind that? Oh, I just got Dairy Queen. Oh, so oh yeah, Dairy Queen. The only thing that shut me up is Dairy Queen. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But, you know, I think if, if we look at it the way that Eric started his company and then after the Yara sisters, the Yara sisters, I don't know what they're called, but they... <laughs> <laughs> they are steering the company in a different direction. They they really are, and I don't know if it's I don't know if it's I mean I think it's going to hit a reef, you know. I I, I think it's it's going to hit a pentagram and sink or something, you know. But the timing is wrong because they're doing this way too early. It's like they just announced the IRA, and then all of a sudden blood rose out of nowhere. Uh, maybe yeah, they feel the ship sinking. Maybe they see smoke. Yeah, they need that money because the Yara didn't bring it enough, and I'm pretty sure he's not confident in gooding the polygon. Oh, desperation, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. look, they, they they're gonna have Yara gooding, um, Blood Ruth because it said 2024 horseman. and Horseman, yeah. They might might need that money. Uh, not enough likes. Never enough likes. Get them likes. Horseman up. is going to make five billion guaranteed, easy. You really think so, Black Angus? No, Chuck he doesn't. Dixon. <laughs> Chuck, Chuck Dixon wrote Dixon. the last one. He wrote, he wrote Alpha Core, and that didn't hit five million. Chuck Dixon. You just say it enough, and it's going to work. Trust me. Trust me. <laughs> well, according to a to a retard on, on Twitter, <laughs> I write better than Chuck Dixon. Well, what about uh, Mike Berry's Gooding book? When when does that come out? Uh, this year. This year. Yeah, oh no! Out. But I meant what? <laughs> I mean, if they if they have a, like a. Is it going to be? I don't think they have a. Or, no. I think it's going to be a uh, fall. Oh, okay. I mean, Mike. I mean, Mike Barron's an amazing writer. I, I, I was so disappointed in Chuck Dixon's writing, you know, and, and on, um, on that Alpha Core book. But honestly, I, I don't know why they're putting out these books so fast. I think, like you guys are saying, there's something going on. They're trying to keep you know while people are willing to buy and throw their money at them before they actually end up reading the material they're like let's before they get a chance to read yara let's get them blood ruth you know and so, i would imagine too that like over time it's got to wear them out you know like the artist inkers like if you're they're constantly just i don't know i feel like it's just way too quick yeah I, I just think it's weird that he has someone else 
as the keeper of the lore for his own comics. He should be the one that knows everything. Not, no, he shouldn't need anyone else to keep everything straight. It's his well, he universe. identified as a creator when he first came out. He was a writer. He was putting out his own book. But then he, he just kind of says, oh, no, he's just a business guy. He's not even, and we can see he's not creative. He's just a business guy, you know. And oh, God, Excited? Oh, God, I'm so disappointed already. <laughs> yeah, uh, he just says soon, my friends. So I don't know when exactly. So they've already got the books printed. Looks like the proofs or something. Yeah. Gooding, Gooding the polymath? Is that what it says? Yep. That's what it says. He's a polymath. You know, he knows it's lots a of math. Wrong polymath. There you go. Yes. <laughs> According to Eric, the polymath. And Enrique Cabrera is right. The Saskas never wrote horror. All they did was gore porn. <laughs> or slasher stuff. For WWE, but that's about it. Yeah, Horace, you know, it, it was so great with the original Friday the 13th, the way that was created, you know, and, and it wasn't really like it was such a great, great film. Like they knew how to build up suspense. Hitchcock knew how to build up suspense with just you never really saw, you know, a lot of like the, the slash and gore. You actually just saw the reaction of the victim. Like you see their face and you could see the, the, the fear and the terror in there and and all the Hitchcock films. Yeah, Goldie Hooper, to... Texas Chainsaw well, Massacre. Yeah. Well, hold, hold on. Go go back to Hitchcock. You know why there was terror and fear in the, in the, in the eyes of the actresses, right, Jimmy? Oh, <laughs> the actresses? <laughs> no, no, seriously. This this serious. No. Hitchcock yeah. actually terrorized them on the set. He actually made them very uncomfortable purposefully in order to get those reactions. Like He was like the ultimate asshole on the set. In yeah. order to get the proper emotions from his actors, he was an actors. artist. He was just, you know, that was just his paintbrush. You know, asshole is just another tool for him to. to well, they said like oh. on the birds, he would he would literally like throw birds and shit at the lady, like birds like, and shit. <laughs> yeah, I think the same happened in The Shining. Well, I mean, naturally, the birds shit. Yeah. Wow. No, but I mean, you know, it seems like the, these these uh, these um, Yarrow sisters are like from a different generation of and they've done a bunch of slash and gore stuff that's not horror man that's not like setting up anything you know you know i mean horror doesn't have to be, always necessarily be grotesque just to be a horror film you know to be scary well yeah. but it certainly can be i do i do like gore horror in general i just don't think uh i don't think the stuff the Sasuke sisters did was good so, like, like for the record, I think you could probably make something with the undertones yeah. of what they did and probably do it correctly. Well, yeah, I'm not saying that you don't. You, you wouldn't use actors more, that but... actually had problems or past, which, from my understanding, they did. Which, wow, that's yeah. a whole fucking bag of worms. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm just... Kubrick did the same thing uh, in The Shining and scared the actress so yeah. bad she quit acting. I think uh, he he on the I know this because I've watched a ton of behind-the-scenes stuff for Kubrick movies. But yeah, for uh, The Shining, he was the same way. He'd like have other people scare people, and he would scare people. And you mean The Shining? You don't want to get sued. <laughs> That's from The Simpsons. <laughs> um, suit. I, I love your animation, and I love your uh, little broke duck mountain. But I cannot play this on my fucking show of you having two ducks. Uh, oh, I know which one you're. Th yeah, it's that's... amazing. It's so. It is great. good. <laughs> yeah, so I'm sorry. You can't great. get away with that. I guess you probably can't. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Yeah. You you could. Because it's on YouTube already, so you could get away with it. Normal people could. We can't because as detractors, there's 197 people watching, and I can guarantee Whoa. 180 of those are people that hate us. If we just want to clip anything you say out of context. <laughs> oh, come right? on, guys. Oh, yeah, that too. Oh, if you, right. you don't have to clip me out of context. I'll give them all to you right up front if you need them. <laughs> no, they'll just report the us. Words. Well, what I'm saying, they'll, they'll just report us and shit. I don't want to deal with that headache. Uh, so Sorry, no. I stepped away I just for need like to upload what? a... I need to make a new channel, and I need to just upload a minute video of me just saying all the things that would piss people <laughs> off, and then anybody can just use that from then on. Thank, thank you, Mighty Magic. Uh, yeah, but I'm saying, like, there's, um, people will report us. I get reports all the time from oh, YouTube yeah. going, oh, hey, it's, they, it's, they reported your video, yeah. you know. 
Uh, because we're mean, we're bullies, we're harassers. Uh, BTM Review Show, Duckback. Well, there you go. Go watch BTM Reviews. Hey, I heard well, he's not monetized. Monetize. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell happened there? He showed Duckback Mountain. Oh. I, I, no, actually, I don't know. He got demonetized? When did it? Like, didn't he just got monetized? He can't like, prove his citizenship or something like that. He he's lost his ID or something. It's coming in the mail or something like that, he said. <laughs> He lived in Alaska at some point, so he might just be a stowaway from Canada. We don't know. What you're saying is he's a terrorist. He's an infiltrator. (laughs) (laughs) BTM the infidel? (laughs) Well, Eric is Israel. Oh, Oh, God, no. There we go. There's the connection. Wait, does that make us Hamas? (laughs) Hey, I'm fine with that. I'll claim that. Um, Look, I'm... Can we not? <laughs> I I love. I would just like to say. I would just like to announce that I love the Jewish Inshallah, people. Inshallah, Tony. I love all of the Jewish people. They're my favorite I'm of Jewish. all the peoples. I can make all these jokes I want. I give. <laughs> I'm just saying that if the I Jewish people ever that. wanted to take my property and make it into a movie in Hollywood, I love the Jewish people. Are you saying that Hollywood is run by Jews? <laughs> no, because I love them too much to say that. <laughs> oh, well, that would be. True. I'm with failure. I disavow all of this. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh, getting a workout, ah, yeah, oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Eric, I'm gonna be strong, oh yeah. Wait, was it called McDonald's, or uh, did he make a new name for it? I didn't see. No, it was just called McDonald's. Okay. I, I was wondering what like little gag would be if they. That's from months in the gym, bud. Months. Yeah, months in the gym. Months, months and months. I'm still too tall. <laughs> <laughs> now he's become swolgeous. Swol- <laughs> from months, months in the gym, bud. Uh, all right. What it is is, um, we got to see this clip here. Yeah, I put up a lot of clips today. Yeah, you did. Everybody's welcome. Yeah. Go so, check hey, out later. One too. I was just gonna say, Preferi, I love I love that avatar of a uh, like rock and roll frog. <laughs> rock and roll? There's no rock. What the hell are you talking about? He's got spikes. <laughs> oh, it's like that a road warrior. Road warrior. Yeah. That's twisted sister frog. <laughs> oh. Oh, that too. We'll go with that. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. All right. So this is a uh, suit yourself. Obviously, he put out this tweet. He says, "Um, Ethan Van Skyver. Eric doesn't know where we got." This page from maybe Instagram, he says. I think he forgot that this page was from Isom 2, page 114. It was promotional, it was his promotion of Yeah, Red Elf, of course. Let's see what Eric has to say and handle it, handle it like an absolute champ. And it's funny because some people got baited into this, uh, this, this, this page that's not in the book. This page is not in the book. Oh, you well, really did get caught red handed. Holy shit. I saw the title of this, but that's what you're talking about. Holy fuck. Yeah. <laughs> he just, he the just page like. From Ice on Two's pitch imagery. Right. But well, it, well it, gets, it gets better. It gets better, guys. Let, 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 him, let him explain where he thinks that page came from. And they all, oh, well, she can't. Th- th- this looks terrible. Yada, yada, yada. And there was, uh, they thought that this page, that I think they was trying to. They, they they got it from a story. I don't know where they, where they got it from. I think it was their Instagram in one one way. Jesus. What? He thinks it was an Instagram or, or one way. If he doesn't know where the page came from. If we pronounce it, uh, his name, Tony, in our Hispanic, our true Hispanic accents, our Latino accents, it would be Eric July. A lot, amigo. See, <laughs> Eric July. You lie. Twisted sister frog. So Tony and Ethan are sisters. What? No. <laughs> I, w- I will tell you what. I just got back uh, my uh, notes. So I, I gave Nerdette's newsstand a, a copy of the script. Uh, she read it. She gave notes back. And she's like, well, I was really worried that it was going to be a lot like Ethan's cyber frog. Everyone th- I don't know why everyone gets this idea because there's two frog characters that they have to be identical. 
And she's like, it was completely different, and like it had, it was like nothing to like Cyberfrog. Like no shit, because it's not the same. I didn't just copy Cyberfrog. You're gonna so, get that with the, just the imagery. Like people see Mascara and they think like, Killer Croc, and I'm like, uh, I actually yeah, but at least read, that looks closer. Like Killer right, Croc and like, Mascara look the same. Killer Croc to make sure I didn't like accidentally cross over any. Uh, yeah, so it's like just oh, yeah, image wise Frog until Man. you get it out. There's a Frog Man's from Marvel. <laughs> And it's funny because uh, uh, the Frogman from Marvel, like, we literally discussed that, like, the first day we were talking about the comic and why the name was okay and why I chose the name and everything. And we went through the whole thing. Um, and as far as, like, Cyber Frog, that was another thing. Like, oh, it's like, it's not, nah, it's nothing like it. Nerd Edge Newsstand read it. She liked it. She gave notes. Uh, there was a couple of things that I, I was like, yeah, I'm going to take that. I got I, I see where you're saying with that. And I actually, I'm on the second draft rewrite. Uh, I've already improved. TJ, you guys, TJ, I already improved the first page of the comic. It's fucking fantastic. That's right. Hey, Tony. I dropped I drop more lore in the first page of my comic than Eric July does in both items combined. What's up, Katie? <laughs> you should give it to Vicky. Vicky Burst. I, I, I am. I, I'm gonna give it to you. Good. 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 When I get the, good, when good. I get, when I get hey, the final, me, uh, blow up my camera for two seconds. I got something in the mail that's cool. I think I put this on sword. Twitter. But... It's a dildo. Richard. Oh, oh shit! Yeah, he Look got it that. too. <laughs> Yeah. Man, I haven't got my copy. Hey, 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 let me just say, hold on, real quick. Let me just say, Jimmy was correct because if you're brave enough, anything can be a dildo. <laughs> <laughs> if you're creative. I've you know. got other things here that would work. Jesus <laughs> oh, Christ. Oh, no. Wait, other, other items that are mysteriously shaped. Let's yeah. keep going. I've got pins. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. We don't need to see your collection. We understand. We're, we're grabbing anything on my desk that's cylindrical in <laughs> shape. <laughs> why is uh, why stop there? Slave. Why stop uh, there, Layton? Grab the yeah, book and put it up for everybody to see. Come on now. He did. Oh, oh, oh. I know, but longer. This is a, this is a big said. proud moment yeah. for Richard. Did, did the Blood only the woman on this panel just say longer? Yep. Me. <laughs> What it Fuck. is, is Lane Katie. So did you read it yet, or are you just going to leave it in the... Uh... I, I, so what I did was I've gone through the first five pages. I went through the first Those five were free. Pages. The first five pages were that's free the, on Indiegogo. That's, that's the point. I wanted to see what the art looked like in person, because all I've seen is the stuff on the screen. And then over the next night at work, when I have time to, like, to myself to sit down for, like, a couple hours, I'm going to read through it a few times and go over it. I want to take time and take notes and things. It's only 20 pages. I want to do a review. It involves writing, you cock. <laughs> okay, uh, calm down. Do What's up, Eric? Show me uh, blow. Oh, sorry. Blow me up. I want to. I want to show. Uh, I want to show him something that. Inshallah. He, that he shouldn't. You should. You shouldn't insert this. It's also oh, shaped. Oh, look at that. Oh. It's also oh, shaped. You got like, a dog uh, tinier what? than my dog. How is that even possible? <laughs> I'm gonna lick my fingers because I was eating. Have you trained it yet to kill? Yeah, you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful. Back, back. No, no, no. Don't kill him. Show him that cute little oh. face. Show him that cute little face. Yeah. You'll think you I'm, you you'll say think that. I'm safe. Oh, Jimmy says one. that, but if if you know Chihuahuas, Chihuahuas will oh, yes. will pick one person in the house, yes. and that is the person they will protect. Yeah, no matter what. Mm -hmm. That's why right away it's like Jurassic Park. I was like, oh, I need to get them right at birth. Yeah. <laughs> I need to bond with them so they don't bite me later. Because they will. They'll be vicious to everybody else but one person. They bond with one person. Look at that. Look how tiny. I, I, had, I actually had one. I had, I had I a chihuahua. I want one. We, when I was growing up, uh, we had chihuahuas. And, and we had a little fat one, right? And my yeah. dad was insistent that the chihuahua liked him. She's like, oh, he's like, the chihuahua loves me because I come home late from work and I, I'm eating and I feed the dog and the dog sits on my lap and loves me. I said, no, that dog doesn't love you. The dog likes you because you feed. I said, that's my dog. It's mine. And he goes, no, it's not. I go, I can prove it to you. I go, look. And I picked the dog up and put it on my lap. I said, try to pet the dog, Dad. He goes, why? I go, you know why. Because try to pet the dog because it's sitting on my lap. It's, it's going to bite you. He goes, no, it's not. The dog's not going to bite me. Aww. So he goes, go, this is I go, go ahead, go ahead, try. And he went to pet the dog, Jimmy. 
And that fucking dog lunged at him so fucking high. And it's a, it was a little fat dog, but it lunged at my dad. And my dad's like, you motherfucking son of a bitch dog. I feed you all the time. I'm like, I told you. It's my well, dog. When, when I went into the hospital because I was a, I'm a heart failure, I was in the hospital and they rushed me in the back. They actually thought about I was I had heart failure. And the only th reason that they would thought about making me wait and rush somebody before me was a little girl who got bit. She got her lip torn off by a little three year old girl got her whole entire lip torn off by a chihuahua. I was like, It's large that? googly eyes remind me of Gary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, if you, if you oh, shake God. it. MCU. Look, check it out. Watch Star Wars. Yeah, I'm going to freeze frame this and put a beard on that dog. <laughs> MCU. Are you? It, she shakes so much, she vibrates. Yeah. Yeah. They all do. Oh, ladies, I have nervous. Our ladies love have chihuahuas. Three Brussels griffons. Um, oh, I don't even know what that is. It sounds oh, like a white people dog. Awesome. They were carriage dogs <laughs> back in the back in the day to get rid of rodents. So they're like cool. they hunt. It's it's so cool. They're these tiny dogs, but they have oh, hair instead of fur, and they hunt. <laughs> they're like cute, ugly. Yeah, Speaking of cute, cute, ugly. What's up, Eric? What's up? What's up? What's going on? Hello. You excited for for Blood Ruth coming out now? Oh God, that's that's actually why I stopped. I don't have a lot of time tonight, but I was like, I have to stop in to talk about this fucking <laughs> Sasuke sister stuff that's just blowing my mind right now. I can't tell you how confused I am about all of it. Like, is he just gonna let them do everything now? Is that pretty much what it is? Like, they're just gonna write every book. They're gonna have the lore. All, all that is under their control. I feel like that's the direction it's heading. Well, he apologized to them the other day. Did you see that? Um, if it was on a live stream, unless Katie clipped it or Clipsama had it, I probably didn't see it. Well, what was it? Uh, I will share it right now because the one where it is like so victimhood. so fucking bad. He, oh, wait, he, is it the one where he was like making? It, yeah, let's watch this. This is uh, yeah. I only saw. Oh yes. I was about to clip this, actually. I was just about to clip gonna, this. And... I, I have this book marked on Twitter to talk about on my show tomorrow. <laughs> there you go. You know what? I got to start bookmarking things. Thank you for reminding me. I just like go looking at the no, last one. No, no, like, don't was that clip at? Don't, don't bookmark, Tony. Why? Have a second account that like you don't use. Send it to yourself in messages. Because I've had so many bookmarks where it's gone. I don't know what happened. Message yourself. I don't have any bookmarks, so I think one bookmark is going to be okay. No, no, I'm saying Just like delete your bookmarks, bro. In, in in this game, YouTube. Oh, bookmark this. Show it. It's gone. Trust me. Message. I think what he's saying is that they delete the messages and whatever. Let's just play the clip. Oh. By the way, Eric, congratulations. Oh, appreciate you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Yeah. yeah what is it at now? Uh, one point two million. Yeah. yeah. Unreal. Okay. Can I ask? What, what what kind of accent was she supposed to be doing? Uh, mm. she's uh oh man, I'm not gonna give it all the way in there. Let's just say Slavic. Let's just go go with that. Let's just say Slavic. First off, that's completely on the wrong part of Europe as far as the map goes. <laughs> yeah. Slavic. Yeah, right, what, what, is he, what what was the real accent? Icelandic. <laughs> no, no, this the it's supposed to be Icelandic, but. He yeah. well, I would refer to the real accent she used as Down syndrome. <laughs> like that, that's the <laughs> easiest descriptor I would use. Well, we have to be well, I, would, I would just <laughs> look, look, the easiest thing to say, Eric, all he had to say was she's an alien trying to speak English. That's it. Went, oh, okay. That, that would just end any discussion over the accent. Like, why does she sound weird? Because she's an alien. But it's literally, in the, it's not giving anything away, it's in the cards. She talks like Shane Gillis looks. <laughs> That's all uh, I'm saying. <laughs> hey, Dan Lawrence that, is here. You guys got to send him the link. He's uh, uh, Eric completely ignores that. Hannah is laughing at the trailer. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> uh, TJ, cool? send. Yeah, yeah. Thank you you. Want me to send it to Dan? Yeah. I want to uh, say right now, if 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 she were another guy, he would have already gone off on her at this point. Oh yeah, like mm -hmm. like seriously, if if this were another per another guy in the stream, he would have gone off on her. She well, also that's has a be bit of a fan base that interjects with his. That's the other thing is he won't call out and do that with anybody he thinks has fans that will actually defend them, and Anna definitely has that. So I think he's just like ah, we'll just leave you alone. <laughs> 
Well, in my personal opinion, there's no better to ask Eric than Anna. Because mm -hmm. without Anna, right we wouldn't know about Eric. So she's on the he, list now. Like I said, <laughs> she's, he's not going to lash out she's on her as the, being a woman. So she's at the truck. Uh, all I got to say is thank you, Anna, for doing this. They're, they're losing. You, they're you. losing all of their women. I mean, Nina's gone, and I mean, this seems like Anna's oh, almost Nina's checked gone? out. Uh, yeah, Nina, Nina I believe Nina, on Twitter. She can. Yeah, Nina it. was kicked. I don't think she's on Real BBC. She's definitely not on F and T anymore. And they made a statement about it, so she's not hanging out with them anymore either. Oh wow! Yeah, no problem, Dan. No problem. Oh, what happened? Dan can't make it away. Yeah, he says he's got work. Uh, he's got oh, work. okay. Oh, I won't send it then. It's it's always. Um, like, I want to send everybody the link, but then I always feel weird, like, because, like, oh, if I send Dan the link, is he going to feel obligated? Now I'm, like, pressing <laughs> upon him to, like, now you have to come in. And then, I'm like, I don't want him to feel bad, that I, thinking that I'm going to feel bad if he doesn't come in. Being autistic oh. is, is weird when it comes to social interactions like this. Oh, I got no problem with manipulation and guilt. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I've seen it, Jimmy. <laughs> that's, that's why we got a show starting this Saturday, this Sunday. <laughs> yeah, the Nerd Hangover. The arm, yeah. Like nobody else will stream with me, Tony. Come yeah, in the chat, they're, they're talking about what happened with Nina. It definitely was because of um, the whole thing with uh, with um, Dick Masters. I'm pretty Kerfuffle. sure that's what happened. So well, I I I want to be clear here. I am not actually sure about that. I have uh, because I was watching at the time both the real BBC and like the Dick Show and all that stuff at the same time. I believe timeline wise, she left uh, or got kicked from BBC before um, the Dick stuff happened. Is my understanding? Well, then was it retaliation? Then that's the thing. It's it's. I mean, I feel like it's got to be connected somehow. I think it I, could I just... have been retaliation because she was removed from the BBC stuff before any of that happened, and then like okay. a month later was when that took place. Yeah. All right. Let me just say this real quick because there is a lot of misinformation going out there about this particular incident, right? And I heard it the other day uh, about Dick's part in this whole thing. Dick was not criticizing the book without reading it. That is factually incorrect. What Dick said was, based on the fact that nobody's actually talking about the story, I believe that it might not be that good. That's what he said. That was right. his criticism, quote unquote. Every, but everyone else is making it seem like he was actually criticizing, like saying the book wasn't good and yada, 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 when he was no, never doing No, in fact, that. he was saying he was calling the people out who do that. Yeah. So, that was so fun of uh, people, like well, yeah, then Nina, Nina put him up to yeah. reading it was because she said, no. Well, well Nina didn't you? put him up to reading it. What happened was again, Nina was was saying how good it was, and then then Dick said, "Well, I don't think it's going to be good because no one's talking about the story." And then she goes, "Well, have you read it?" And then he goes, "No." And then he goes, "Well, did you read it?" And she goes, "No." He goes, "Well, why don't you read it?" And then she tried to read it on stream, and then he goes, "Like, well, I'll read it." Yeah. She goes, "Well, why don't you read it?" He goes, "Okay, then I'll I'll read it then." That that, that was the. Uh, course of events right right so now we know but, uh, what i was stating was that happened after she right. had already been kicked yeah. from the real bbc so there was no it that was not recourse for that my understanding is the reason she was kind of kicked from the real bbc is just because i as somebody who watched those episodes she was constantly arguing with the chat and other people and i don't think that worked and so it led to some interruptions and things on the show, and I think eventually they just said, we're done. Uh, that's yeah. the vibe I got. Allegedly, she probably got booted for not giving as any play, allegedly. Right, that, <laughs> that's <laughs> the rumor I keep hearing from people. I don't know. Well, she said that wasn't true. She, she went on Twitter and said, as was never inappropriate with her in the DMs. Also, she, was really, she emphasized with her, like... Yeah, that was a weird statement because, I mean, the, it was very specific about what she was talking, which is good. I mean, you want to be specific, but it was kind of a yeah, weird statement. Yeah, I don't statement, think you, you want know? to use any ambiguity in a statement like that. No, but I think, you, like, saying, uh, as was never inappropriate with anyone, as far as I know, is no, a lot that, different that's from... that's what I mean. That's what I mean by she doesn't want ambiguity. She's saying that 100% on purpose because there might be somebody who comes forward or something like that in the future. 
So yeah. I think that's what I mean by that. She's and and she doesn't want to be in like what you're saying, Layton. I don't think she wants to be in the middle of that. That's the that's yeah. The she no, be exactly. Of, right? That's she's putting that out as a serious statement, saying, "Hey, I'm stepping back from that uh, bullshit and uh, leaving it open for anybody else." That's kind of what that tells me. Uh, which, how would that even be possible? She lives in Mexico and as is in the UK. Well, people, uh, right. grumpy. I don't know if you know this, but they <laughs> invented this thing. It's called an aeroplane. The Wright brother, the Wright brothers, they flew the first one at Kitty Hawk. Okay, I and, fly and it allows from people Alaska to get it. to Florida. I don't know how far that is, but it's fourteen hours. I'm curious if that's also like, that's a fucked flight. <laughs> well, you don't even you don't even need to do that because I don't know if you guys understand this. There's a little thing called the internet, and on the internet, you can put your camera on, and they can put their camera on, and you can Tony, do things. I can't put my dick in somebody through the internet. I don't know if you're aware. No, of but but you could <laughs> like you could you could be like, hey, get naked for me, and I'll and I'll touch myself while Wait, I'm watching you. Is, get is naked. she is she Puerto Rican by some chance? <laughs> Nina, because that's uh, American so. territory. <laughs> Jesus Christ! She lives in Mexico. Oh, I thought maybe. Wait, I'm just wait. saying that there's 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 lots of ways. To do things inappropriately with each other. <laughs> Not with that attitude. Screen time, continue. <laughs> it's like I'm just no, no, because because like Layton's Le- 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 saying that like it's no big deal. You can't we can't put your dick in someone over the internet. Yeah, okay. Well, tell that to your wife. You know, you can't go like, hey, honey, I was just watching some girl get naked while I jerked off. I didn't put my dick in her, so it's not cheating. Well, would no, that fly with you? Would that fly with you, Katie? Different scenarios, you fuck. Don't change this up like your you fucking wouldn't. boss or destiny. What is the police? No, that's what I was saying. I was saying they could still be inappropriate with each other without having... Because he's like, oh, one lives here and one lives there. I'm like, there's many ways no, to be inappropriate. I'm not making that up. I was. Grass would be grass. That's what it would be. <laughs> yeah. Digital that. astral projections, yeah. Digital so you watch porn... I think it's a little different. I think it's like one step above. From Iran. Yes, I believe. Nina is Persian or Iranian. She's she's from Canada and then later moved to Mexico with her husband. There you go. She's nice, but she blocked me on Twitter, so I I have to call her uh, uh, all the words now. That's just how it works. She's argued with me on Twitter, but usually in defense of one of the other people that, that... I don't like on the, in that group. You know why she blocked me? People in my chat pointed it out because I legitimately he didn't know. It. <laughs> it's because of the fucking clip I made of, yeah, you, Black Angus. What, which clip? Which clip was it? So I made Katie intros, I think, part was introing some of her streams with it, but it's a clip yeah. of her saying, guys, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to start all of this. Oh, and she, and exactly. then uh, uh, it was Cecil made a joke about how the events of October 7th wouldn't have happened in Israel if you hadn't <laughs> done this. And I, I clipped it. It was, it was it's hilarious. Man. What I the would f- stand by that clip 100%. Yeah, this is totally that's... random, but what is up with Eric July's like, like uh, positive quote, daily quotes now? What the fuck is up with this? Like Everyone said he was being sad. Oh, he's a guru. E- EVS, yeah, EVS said you're being sad and not happy, so now he's like putting out tweets to prove that he's happy. Just like EVS said he's cheating on his wife, and then suddenly he put out like a tweet of him and his wife together. Uh, <laughs> in Chris Bacon's words, you can easily yeah. whack the dog. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But I will say this. I disavow all these people, Nina. Just don't block me on Twitter. We're great. We're still good. <laughs> I just Nina, Nina, I'm a piece of shit and an asshole. And I have said multiple times on the stream that everybody, and I believe everybody does here, disavow me across the board. No. So, be clear, always... anything I well, edit or say should be taken with not a grain of salt, but the entire box. <laughs> Eric July had a, a live stream today where he said, um, he goes, well, I want to make some things clear about the numbers, the numbers for the campaign, for the Yara campaign. So yes, he's watching yes. all these streams or something. Oh, because... No, no let me tell you. No, let me tell you. Let me let me tell you, because I have got four fucking clips out of that one stream today. And that was my last clip I was going to work on because the whole time he was talking, I was thinking of Chris Bacon. I was like, oh, I'm going to clip so this I, and show can him. I let, can I let the stream in on some interesting stuff? And I think I might do a video on this. I had taken screenshots of some of it to do this with. But on YouTube analytics, you can see where people click to see your video from. And I love this little piece of analytics on YouTube because you can use it to actually track some, like, how many people are coming from my Twitter account to my YouTube page, right, is a really good thing to track. 
and one of the have... things you can see is outside sources. Well, I have a bunch of Eric July videos that have gotten one, two, three thousand views. So you can see those stats and look at where they went and came from. And a yeah, lot we got that. You said that like six times. Get some point, Leighton. A lot <laughs> of them came from Discord. I do not there. use Discord at all. I'm only on there for political stuff. My links don't get shared on Discord. Yes, they do, Leighton. Well, that's the thing. So what I believe is happening. I'm I'm let, let, let me tell you, Leighton, the Discords that I'm in, we share the links to all the all the detractor stuff. You fucker, it's you. So, <laughs> so what why, I would recommend. Why, why I'm not in any if, of these back channel shows. I'd like recommend you. everybody here to get <laughs> Tube YouTube Buddy. It's called Tube Buddy. It's a free plugin oh, yeah. you you put on your web browser, and you can see the analytics to every every YouTube we'll channel you go to. It's great. Yeah, yeah, so you can you can learn a lot from some of the bigger channels and get to see their behind the scenes and how things work, you know, some of their Well, data. this whole time I thought people were doing back channel shit and this entire time it's been fucking Tony, so... It's always fucking Tony, you know. So I, I, I don't know, maybe it should be hashtag blame Tony, but I still yeah. think Katie... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still rolling Katie with the hashtag is an blame angel. Uh, a saint, uh, guys. Ruby King for $2 says, The Ninja Eric is cheating on his wife. He might be. He might be. Um, but who knows? Who knows? Well, it, yeah. it's, it's when you become a millionaire, in order to be part of the millionaire's club, be indoctrinated, you have to have a side piece. I'm going to tell that to my wife uh, when I get married. <laughs> I'm like, look, honey, it's not my fault. They made me do that. We're in the club yeah, now. And it's like a rule. Yeah. We're yeah. millionaires now. Every yeah. millionaire cheats. You know it's you're gonna state mandated whore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Part of All the right. Uh, all right. What, what were we doing? Oh yeah, we're watching. Playing a clip. Yeah. Um. It. If you follow my Twitter, I someone guessed it right, and I actually confirmed it. I shouldn't have done that. That was a uh, NDA to myself. But yeah. What? That's the stupidest thing. He and it was wait, an wait. NDA to himself. He owns the company. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, how can what, he? What? How can he NDA himself? He is the owner. Unless somebody because the Saskas, the, the Saskas NDA him. How? Oh, they're running it. I think that's how. What happened. He said, that's How do you think? an NDA to myself. Is that what he said? Yeah, that's what he said. I, I, need, I need to close ca captions with Eric. I can't always understand what he says. Do they own a stake in the Ripoverse yeah. company now? Are they are they no. owners in the Ripoverse? Well, they, one of the Saskas owns something, and it's not the Ripoverse. Oh. It's Eric's dick. I was making oh, a dick joke. Shit. It was oh, a okay. dick joke, guys. Gotcha, gotcha. 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 He's uh, fucking one yeah. of them. He's fucking one. He's fucking them. He flew all the way to Canada to fuck one of them on the set. Didn't you see the behind the scenes? God. Well, they they text him at four in the morning. Okay. I did. Yeah. They, I, they, yeah. I... They text him at four in the morning. He's hugging up on one of them all on on the set, and suddenly now they're writing a second book. Honey, uh, by the way, you know them sisters that you, you're worried about. They're also going to write another comic. Yeah, so let, I'm going to have more late insert. night. I'm gonna have more late night 4 a.m. phone calls from the Sanska sister, uh, talking business. Does he uh, does he not understand? Act like in all honesty, does he not understand what an NDA is? Because that doesn't make any sense unless he's joking. Oh, yeah. No, I, I believe that she said if you tell them anything about this book, you cannot have this pussy. Oh, See, well, there we them. go. No dick action. That's what it meant. Oh, it's an NDA. shit. All right, now it all makes sense. Now it's coming together. There we go. That's why when we called them the Sucker Sisters. Eric July was like, wait a minute, they know. We know. He no dick action to himself. <laughs> it He's like, yeah, that's, what it's like. that's an NDA to myself. Fuck, no dick action. Sue <laughs> uh, so yourself then. Sue <laughs> so myself. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so was that, I, was I, that I, her myself. first time trying to do that accent? Because I had I such a hard time understanding he her. Uh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. She had a, uh, we had a coach with her and everything, so no, nah, it wasn't the first time. And, and his so Whoa. Well, people are saying, what, Icelandic? I don't think that's Slavic. Yeah, th that's, that's, uh, <laughs> I don't think that's, that's, that's accurate. The, 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 
okay, well, fuck the NDA. Uh, the Icelandic <laughs> shit is 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 accurate, um, for sure. Here comes the lawsuit. Yeah, <laughs> fuck it. Well, well who NDA are you going to be myself. suing yourself? <laughs> yeah, NDA myself. Look at the guy Sorry, right Sasuke above him. Yeah. Cal- chat. Cabrudos? I love. Yeah, is he? It's like he's watching them through a computer, not like he's on the panel. Right. You know what I mean? Well, like, he's from Brazil, so you gotta forgive him. Oh, okay. So um, I'm correct. in Alaska. Fuck that shit. Okay, so yeah. let me let me explain. If, if this guy here, <laughs> hold on. So this guy here, Cabrudos, uh, he's the guy who runs the Sweet Baby Ink Detected um, group on Steam. Oh, really? Okay, he's cool. Oh, oh wow. Okay, he's from Brazil. Yeah. Okay. That that, that didn't. I... It, well, I'm that. so lost. What does he run? What does he do? Okay, so Sweet Baby Inc. is the company that's been uh, injecting woke politics into our games and ruining yeah. them. Oh. Uh, and, and he he did a uh, Steam group that was basically going, these are the games they worked on, and then yeah. they tried to get his account taken away because he's a big meanie. Wow. And that's going to kick off Gamergate 2, Electric Boogaloo. Damn. Part I two, love yeah. how much... Um, she doesn't give a fuck about anything she's saying to Eric July. I mean, she's yeah, sipping she her drink and she's yeah. laughing. It's like she just doesn't give a fuck. And like, I've never really watched her content like that, but this is fucking hilarious. Oh, yeah, this she put so a big dick up is. on the table and she's like, I'm not as big. Look, look like, I'm, I, I'm not I saying any Anna conspiracy theories. <laughs> I'm not saying any conspiracy theories, okay? But I don't think Anna regularly wears that hat and I think there's an earpiece attached to EBS. <laughs> EBS is in her ear. <laughs> Hit him, hit him! Hit him with the accent. Yeah, we've never seen her wear a beanie. That's a good point. Yeah. But I can just see this like, all right, now She's, ask him what's what was with the accent. What's that Shakespeare <laughs> thing that Roxanne won? What's that one where the where the, the ugly guy wants to date the beautiful girl, but he uses with the, the fake nose? Yeah, with the fake nose. What was that one called? Uh, uh, Roxanne. No, but Roxanne was the modern name. But there's a real name for that play that. Uh, Cyrano de Vergier. Yes, sir, sir, yeah, and that's what uh, that's what's happening right now. <laughs> yeah, he's pulling a Cyrano. He's like, all right, I need yeah. you to laugh, take a sip of your drink, don't make it too obvious, don't look at me, don't look at me, stop. Now, now, now hit him again. Yeah. Don't <laughs> nod your head, don't nod your head every time I talk. Just keep looking straight. Yeah. What are, Frog what are, exactly. <laughs> what are the chances that, that they're never on stream together again after this? I feel like there, there's going to be a high probability that any planned streams will not have them no, together. No, that's what I'm saying is she has a fan base big enough and willing yeah. enough to talk about that that he will not do that. And yeah. she knows it. Yeah, she's that's huge. A, that's funny. Yeah, big, big fan base. Yeah. Well, you know He'll what be on stream, is... but he won't answer any questions directly from her. He'll be like, what? I can't hear you, Anna. Sorry. Hold on. I gotta go. You know what it is, too? Is like She's on Simpcast uh, sometimes. Like She's in her own world that sometimes she'll pop in with the comic stuff, you know? And so... Day uh, text I've been saying. She has no fucking... <laughs> day text. in the matter. <laughs> it's all organic. It's all genuine. Her, like, just... Oh, yeah, I'm hanging with you, so you do this. Like, what's going on? She's catching up. She's not involved. She's not... You know, it's not really her interest. So this is a genuine... Hey, Eric, we're kind of friends. What's up with... Okay, you're, how much are you making now? All right, cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. When you guys think, too, she's probably watching Trash Cash. She says she doesn't quite, you know, tune into all of it, but she admits, I even have the clip where she says that he actually puts on a really good show. He's entertaining. Well, so, she was on the one. She popped in. Yeah, so. but I'm just saying, you know, she she watches, so... Oh, by the way, Katie, I haven't been on stream with you since it happened, but I have to say, outside of all this stuff, because I don't want to like go into it too deep, but I feel so bad about what Eric did to you. That was fucking wrong. Like, so fucking wrong. Um, Thank you. That, all that drama. I don't want to bring it up, but I just wanted to put it out there that from an outside perspective, because we don't really, we're not on stream very often, but I saw that and I just thought it was fucking disgusting. Could somebody explain to me how Nita Infinity <laughs> has me unblocked, but Star Wars Girl has me blocked? Oh, she has you blocked? Weird. I think it just happened. I just revealed the secret. She's like, fuck, fuck, code red, code red, block Tony, block Tony. Well done. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate that, hun. Yeah, no problem. No problem. How did you get blocked by Anna? Anna's so cool. I have no idea. So nice. Probably from the Eric stuff. He probably told them to block these people. Oh. Because Nina actually had me blocked. Black letters. And, and then she unlocked me. Suit? Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> was, well, like, it was getting good. Yeah. Like like uh, Mandy, for some reason, Mandy had me blocked. And then 
what? suddenly she had me unblocked. And I was like, what the hell's going on here? Like, I never interacted with, like, half these people. Like, I'll be blocked one day, then unblocked. I'm like, okay. You know, it might be, like, you're in a, a, a reply somewhere. Like, not you replying, but your tag is. And so she's like, fuck X people in this thread. And so it's, like, just a mass targeted blocking and then it's like we're trying to like oh wait who is this person in this feed oh clearly by their comments they're not whatever i didn't like so unblock that's right, my guess this up we got 15 seconds blocked, we, oh, that's good. <laughs> we, we can do it <laughs> my bad <laughs> okay accidents you own it so it... <laughs> yeah, yeah true. <laughs> you're your own boss who's true. gonna yell at you you yeah true <laughs> Well, so sad sounding. <laughs> it's so awkward. Yeah. That is so fucking Ooh. awkward. It's so amazing. <laughs> yeah, they, they cut out the best part. Whoever clipped this clipped this wrong. Because right after that he There's goes, more? sorry. Yeah, because right after that he goes, Oh, I see the Saskas in the chat. Sorry, sorry, Jen and Sylvia. Oh uh, shit. I know NDA. Yeah, because he apologizes to them about the NDA. That's where <sighs> the the joke might be like him uh no, he's not joking. Like he's like his head is down. He's like, I'm sorry, Jen Sylvia. He's like, he's how really is the like, accent NDA though? It doesn't make any fucking sense. You hear it. The only it's thing in we're the trying credits. to figure out is yeah, we're just trying to figure out wh what it's supposed to be. How is that going to give us any information? We barely know anything about the fucking character to begin with. Telling us where the accent is from is not going to be the oh. final piece in a puzzle. She's Norwegian. Is that what someone said? <laughs> Nordic, yeah. So Iceland is like oh. you know Northwest Europe. Uh, no, my thing with the NDA, my my curiosity, I guess, is that given Eric benefit of the doubt, maybe he's saying sorry, as in like, oh man, I've been so hard on all my workers to not. No, no, NDA. literally, he, he he literally goes, I broke the NDA. I'm sorry, Jen and Sylvia. That I'm so, I'm hard for. He's literally like apologizing to them for revealing yeah. the accent. You know what it is? He might be so retarded that even though he's the owner, he actually thinks it goes both ways, that both parties could sue each other over NDAs. No, I think I think they told him not to say anything or he's not going to get any pussy. That's what I think. <laughs> so, what was the other video? You didn't finish the previous clip that you were you were showing right before this. We never got to the end of that. Yeah, that was... Um, what the fuck was that? That was from Suit. No, 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 not, not the, not the, the duck porn. No, no, he the, clipped it out. That was, that was from Sue. Oh. He clipped it. Uh, that was Eric talking about uh, where that page came from. Oh yeah, yeah, that was the one about where that saying that the page wasn't part of the book, and he was confirming that uh, I think uh, Sue was confirmed it was from the book. Yeah, I'm just yeah, waiting for Norfrica. Norfrica, that's the one I'm waiting for. That's the those two guys. I mean, I guess See, it's the rally. <laughs> so. This is the book. Uh, yeah. This looks almost identical to the, the comic I have with that exact same rip on it. Uh, anyway, this is well, the you, book. Yours has a couple extra stains on the pages. Yeah, especially uh, on all these great Gyra. And this is the uh, the panel that they were talking about with the head turned. Yeah. And he's claiming it wasn't handle from. It, handle it like an absolute champ. And it's funny because some people got baited into this uh baited this, this, this baited. page is not in the book and they oh well she can't th th this looks terrible yada 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 and there was uh they thought that this page that i think they was trying to they 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 got it from a story i don't know where they, where they got it from i think it was their instagram in one one way are we sure this is an ai voiceover because it's not safe this it's... this really means that this guy really didn't pay attention to isom 2 at all yeah, it, it means yeah. a lot of other things, but it also means he completely just didn't pay attention to that book whatsoever. Because if he had, he would have known this page was there as a spoiler kind of teaser for the upcoming stuff. Uh, well, his and, books and then, are products; they're just products. They're no, merch. no. They're YouTube okay, merch. you you guys are are wrong, and this is why you're wrong. Eric July knows that whatever he says, his fans will repeat. Even if it is factually incorrect, even if it is a hundred percent verifiably false, yeah, he's done true. it before. He will There's just say shit. Just control the narrative. Yeah. yeah. Remember this. This is CNN. a clip from live streams. This this is live streams that he puts private that only his members and his fans are watching. Uh, he he doesn't expect us to watch them. He says a bunch of shit. His fans will then repeat that, and then he'll pretend like he never said it. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. I never said that. That's why he gets so mad when people fucking clip him and stuff. 
and then make a big deal. Uh, he literally. Why is the audio unsynced? That's what's. Just... It's, it's, it's the way a Twitter video is. Oh. Uh, it, it it's him. Damn it! Now it's gonna restart. And they, I don't know where they, where they got it from. I think it was their Instagram in one one way. And then we go to the campaign page, and you guys see. First of all, this is her best work. Kanan White also deserves a lot of credit for being uh, the art director here and elevating her. Rejoin. <laughs> and it- so if he's just outright, like, casually lying about this shit, that means he's lied about a ton of stuff. Because... He's doing it now, even when it's like staring him in the face. He's just lying. Eric and July lying? I just, I, I can't imagine being one of these simps for him, watching him lie to me, like right to my face. These people bought the comics. They saw that fucking page. They know the pages in the book. Well, they're not reading the comic, and he knows that. He knows <laughs> That's that. true, Jimmy. It's all You're about the right. parasocial <laughs> relationship. It's probably not right. even yeah. about the comic. Book. I also think they're just used to being lied to at this point. I think people like. The fan base he has today is nothing like the fan base he had when I was watching his videos two, three years ago. It is completely morphed into this sort of, we're here for the next product, we're all the X, you know, kind of FNT circling people. Mm -hmm. That's what he has left. He doesn't have much of his, like, liberty. He's a salesman now. That's what he is. He's a salesman. Yeah, he's gone fully into that. You know, he's a used car salesman now. But you know what? Um, <laughs> hey, you know my what? dad sold cars. I have respect for those guys. You know what I find so interesting? He just so to be a good car salesman. Is that he yeah, calls you guys trolls. He calls you guys um, the, the, the tractors. tractors. But you guys were all at one time fans and I customers. Wasn't. But yeah. well, most of you guys. And you, you guys have all been the ones that have realized that, you know, you, the, the, what you bought wasn't worth what you paid you know you didn't feel that it was i mean it was like maybe but it's hey, not you know, I'll, I'll, i'm going to direct you guys to this to this uh, yeah. tweet okay so this is from today right, from Jamie. today okay remember what he just said before what he just said on that thing he doesn't know where it came from they're disrespecting deborah's art he was uh um very very adamant that the art was great it was never bad it was never anything okay so mm. we're gonna read this tweet he goes uh, from Eric July, from Eric July himself. I'd like to give a big shout out to our art director at Camp White. He's an unbelievable artist, but his leadership has been invaluable. We brought him on specifically to be uh, specifically be not simply an. <laughs> wow, Eric! <laughs> I, was, I, I thought I was stumbling. No, it turns out you just wrote a really retarded sentence. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> brought him on to He's specifically be not <laughs> be not an, simply an editor, but a teacher and mentor to all of our talent. All there were off. several all off. Yeah. You, you missed it all off. off. <laughs> I said the right thing just out of instinct. All off. Yeah. Uh, there were several books in production when he arrived. Yaira, Isom number three, Blood Ruth, etc. Blood Ruth, etc. Is that the name of the book, or is there yeah, Blood Ruth? And this would be yes, was a comma there. Yeah. Uh, he uh, combed through every bit of each book and communicated to the artist what should be corrected. Slash redrawn. Oh corrected. shit! Oh shit! Eric, you said there was no redrawing in the book. He probably means they need to redraw the panel. Like I'm just in good faith. I'm trying to you know give Eric. Listen to you giving it. good faith criticism. There you go. <laughs> okay, so wait, wait. We're gonna go on because and what could be added to improve the pages. Oh. He's unlocked new potential for Cliff, Joe, Deborah, Michael, and the rest. They all respect and value Canon's input, and their additions and redraws are unbelievable. These books no. have been taken to the next level, and no, so have I, the artists. Wait, right there before you go past that. Now, Canon White being an art director, that Michael guy is pretty good. Um, but I, 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 there was a post that Canon posted about a picture of Yaira. His anatomy was way off, and I just I just gave him some feedback, and I never got a reply back from Kanan. I just said, hey, he drew her breasts way too low on her torso. They were, like, underneath her arms when her arms were crossed, and he drew her head too small. So should a guy doing that kind of work like that himself be art directing these other artists? But also, isn't, hasn't Joe Bennett been doing artwork since the 90s? 
Oh yeah, he's a yes. why does he need Kanan to tell him how to do So all so has Cliff Richards, but I mean Yeah, like I don't what the fuck? Because he, well, see you got you got to understand how Eric works, right? He won't we all know Deborah's the one that fucked up, okay? Yeah. We all know that. Deborah fucked up. So, in order for him to obfuscate what happened, right? He's going to put all their names in it. Because remember, I don't know who the fuck and the rest. You don't even need it. He could have just put all of our artists. He, but he wanted to make sure that you knew that all of these were getting help in unlocking new potential. When actually, let, let me put it in from Eric to English. Deborah fucked up and Cannon figured it out and then he helped her fix it. And uh, you guys were 100% correct about the art being shit. And I'm, I apologize because she's a pinup artist. She doesn't really do well with sequential art. Uh, we should have checked that before putting her on the book. But we're dumb because we're SJWs and we thought, woman book, woman artist, we fucked up. Yeah, the Blood Ruth, speaking of you saying that, Blood Ruth is so out of character because I mean, besides the horror history of the Saskas, you got two white women's drawing the black voodoo mama and a white guy drawing her. Like, that's strange, given the track record. Also, he, that last part, he admits that Yaira will be the first book with his input, which means he's already trying to cover his tracks with Yaira. That's mm. that's crazy. So, Yaira will be the first book you get to see Canon's impact on, but his imprint is on every single book we release. Incredible artist and incredible dude. Uh, and then they called Vicky called him out because for whatever reason Canon White put out a new art picture that I guess he said was fan art of Horseman with a now a third costume design. Yeah, uh, for the character. And so I used AI so I could see the fucking character because it's like somebody came all over the fucking picture. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure in the picture that he drew, Canon is a very he's, a, he's very talented, he's a fantastic artist. But if you look at Yara's boobs. Look how they're right yeah. in the middle of the torso underneath. That would, if that was a, a, a living person, maybe they're raindrops. Yeah, they're, they're raindrop saggy boots. titties. My, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, like, like raindrops, where they're like really heavy. Poppers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They would be, you know, she'd need a breast lift. But look at her head. Her head's too small, too. You, know, you guys, uh, you guys ever see the Simpson movie when the Native American woman is give, the Eskimo from Alaska is giving him guidance and she swings her tits in the direction he needs to go. <laughs> I, I'm That's just it, it might sound super, super old school now. Maybe I'm completely wrong about this, but one of the things when you have a brand new character coming out, like a number one issue where you're introducing a new character, you, you have the, the person writing it and then you have the person drawing it. And that establishes what a character looks like because they draw over, like, I don't know, 8, 10, 20 issues of the comic, whatever it is. And they establish what that character looks like. And then from there, you can build on and change or whatever. These characters coming out from the Ripaverse, I don't know which one is the fucking right one. Which one is the one that's supposed to be the, the, the right version or the, the way it's supposed to actually look? Because we get like 2,500 different fucking versions of these characters in the first week. I don't know what well, you're supposed to look like. Well, and they don't have the model point. sheet. Her voice well, the, sounded like they took all of those characters and put it into one. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying well, the, 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 this guy needs an art director ahead. himself. Yeah, true. Well, the, the problem is with the costumes and everything, they don't have model sheets. We were talking about this from day one with Isom. Uh, nothing was ever what they call on model, right? right. Uh, they didn't sit down and decide, okay, this is where the costume ends. This is how far the sleeve goes. This is the color of orange we're using. Like, we sat down. And, and we're amateurs. We're fucking amateurs, right? Me, Finbar, TJ, uh, Potion Sword Run. And we sat down and we literally went, okay, this is the shade of blue for the frog. This is the shade of, of red for his costume, right? Whenever you put it, whenever you color it, that's the color it goes. Not one shade, not one fucking number off. That's the shade. On the hexagram. Yeah. Uh, $2 from red. I ain't mad at you, Grumpy. Uh, bunny Bunny. Well, thank you. I'm not mad at Grumpy either. Bunny, bunny. Well, let's give you a little, uh, I know what you want. High risk, high reward, the economics of Matic. Part owner, oh lord, it's the ballsy move. Some people not Matic. Sing my rap, lads, phonemics, what pain it, not any. Are you digging my groove? I gave you 40%, you're a cold. Matic. Gave you 40%, you got a chance to get rich. I gave you 40%, don't do no crop on the bluff. I gave you 40%, so right now you get nothing. Oh, uh, Michael says that's about that artist guy, um, the buckler artist guy, 
Flash this guy. Dillard. 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 That's what the song's about. You just yeah. <laughs> you just both <laughs> figured that out. Yeah. Oh, shit. you see, you see, what it is is, I was, <laughs> I wasn't really paying attention. So you, the regular version, you don't pay attention. When he threw in the Maddox, that's when you're like, wait a that's minute, it's he, about Dillard. Yeah, because I was like, Maddox, what no, what, what's he talking about? Oh, snap, 40%, now you're getting nothing. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I know okay. what he's, yeah. Oh, man, that's so sad. Oh, man, that's all makes me sad now. Oh, I need a hug, guys. Oh. Hugs. Uh, Michael says, TJ went into detail about model sheets on one of the streams. He broke it down well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Jessica James' stream. I'll share the link later. <laughs> uh, like I said, you know, for being amateurs, for being the most amateur people uh, making comic books in CG, uh, we're actually trying to do our best to be as professional as we can. Uh, I had people look over the book. Uh, DJ Eric's one of them. Uh, Nerdette. Um, obviously, the team looked over it, and, and two more people outside the team. And I got I'm the excited. feedback. And uh, well, thank you. Uh, I've changed a few. We added a new uh, page one, which I think better introduces the story and um, sets up the world on the lore a little bit better. And uh, there was some rewrites. I noticed I did have some like errors in um, my grammar, in some of the sentences, and uh, I added to some of the sentences and made them a little snappier. So, you know, we're improving it every day. Every day we're trying to make it better. Uh, it doesn't seem like they do that, though, at the Rupert They just throw out whatever. Whatever's good. It's just first time, first draft, first go. We're done. Uh, so how many copies are you going to buy, DJ Eric? 50? 60? How many can I put you on? Um, whatever, whatever gets you to your goal, I guess. Whatever your uh, your goal is, I'll, I'll buy it. Uh, I think 50,000 should be Oh, good. shit. I, I retract that statement. Don't clip this. I never said that. 50,000 copies <laughs> in a warehouse. Don't become Bruce. Yeah. Now it's, it's become canon now. I can't change it. No multi but it's not just 50,000 copies. Uh, it's 50,000 orders. So you have to order each one separately. Oh, so, shit. Okay. I, get, I, get, I, get, actually, you know what? Technic. What, what did <laughs> Eric, get on his first one forty thousand. So if you get forty thousand one, yeah, that's all we need. You got to get Chris Bacon on the case to keep track of that. <laughs> all your numbers. <laughs> comic dude, no red well cons. On We're not red conning, guys. I promise you, no red cons at all, ever, in our comic. <laughs> Maybe that's why he doesn't edit. Fuck, you figured it out. If he edits, that'd be a red con, Gix. <laughs> oh. He's like, no, no. See, it's the first time. That's it. I can't red con it. I've already read it down. Once I wrote, write it down, that's it. <laughs> uh, all right. We got some uh, clips from Katie. Yes. Uh, since we're speaking of writing, let's uh, learn about my writing style, Deborah and Cannon White. Oh. Wow. Oh, I'm going to enjoy this. <laughs> so am I. Where we're going, we don't need roads. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, they we don't need grammar. Cannon? No, that's uh, Katie titled it. Oh, instead of Canaan? Oh, did I? Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's Canaan from the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> and funny. What, what, what was on your mind, Katie, <laughs> thinking about white cannons? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Shout out, turn to black. Alex with a five says, Shout From Ice on One and now uh, Private Salvage, uh, you seem to enjoy detective stories. Which is awesome. Well, that, may- <laughs> that wait, was wait, an insult. Not a typo. Salvage what? isn't a typo. No. Oh my it's God! The- is he a tr- is he a junkyard detective? I was gonna no, say no. That's like, his these name. Names, these names, all of them, like the ones on the fucking cover. Like, what is it? New Might, Meg- whatever the fuck those Meg- names is. New Might. Yeah. yeah. Like, who the fuck is he? Just going chat GPT, give me names. Like, what and the fuck? Tony. Yeah. Well, I think he's looking. Someone names. said. Someone said that he was looking up names and then looking to see if they're copyrighted. Now he's like, oh fuck, I need to add extra letters. <laughs> So it doesn't oh go God. through the iPhone situation. It's like, like it's like in a uh, Dark Empire. It's Luke has to fight Luke with two U's. <laughs> have we heard anything about Isom? Uh, have they in any of the streams talked about where the future? He said Isom three is coming. It's uh, been worked on a lot. That's what he It's said. not coming. It's not coming. Isom, I, I can guarantee. It has erectile it. dysfunction. Here's why. <laughs> Eric July. They put out a tweet talking about. Uh, would you guys be interested in a? 
ill-advised omnibus, right? Well, the ill-advised arc was ISOM 1, 2, and 3. Three's not out yet. Why would you be thinking about an omnibus before three's even out? Here's why. Because they're not allowed to put out another ISOM comic. So if he puts out an ill-advised omnibus, which gets you all three together, he could do that campaign. Still technically put out ISOM 3. Fuck you haters. See, ISOM 3's in there as part of the omnibus. And still uh, not violate the uh, settlement agreement. agreement. How funny is it that his flagship character, his Superman character, he can't use as like a regular comic book anymore? That's so. Well, he could. Uh, because he, he Eric's Eric's fucking retarded. He doesn't have to rename it because he could. He has to rename the comic, not the character. The character could still right. be Isom. Uh, he could just put, like I said, the Adventures of Isom or Ripperverse presents Isom, right? The as long as he makes it clear, Isom. Yeah. But the problem is he knows that any change, if it's changed in any way, shape, or form, we're going to laugh at him, and he can't have that. That's why he's he's at this place, because his pride won't allow him to go, yeah, guys, I fucked up. You were right. So Isom's, Isom being gone is a victim of Eric's pride, basically. Pretty much. Yeah. Isom and like $350,000, from what I hear. Yeah. Allegedly. Man is my favorite character uh, as an adult. Uh, what draws you to those type of stories? Oh, just answer that. Just answer that. No, but I like the tech. What did he say was his favorite character? If stories, which is awesome. Well, Batman is my favorite character uh, as an adult. Uh, what draws you to those type of stories? Oh, just answer that. Just answer that. No, but I like detective stuff. Uh, look, very much. Wasn't he really mad when Dick called Ice up a detective story? Yeah. Didn't he get really upset and yeah. say that? No, it's not. He's not a detective. What do you, he says specifically in the story he's not a detective. And he got all mad. But now he's admitting that it is actually a detective story. That's got a weird take like. here. I don't think any comic book I've ever read, including all a lot of the Batman stuff. I mean, I've read a lot of Batman comics. Um, I don't think comic books really do detective stuff right. I'm a big fan of, like, pulp and old school 1920s, 1930s books. I yeah, think yeah. Um, Daredevil, some Daredevil uh, ones do it. Yes, no, I, I would actually, I'd actually, I'd agree with you there. I think they do like the the. Uh, so I really like the old Daredevil stuff. The nineteen thirties pulp magazines were not always detective. Uh, pulp just refers no. to the type of cheap paper they we were printing on back then. No, so, so I like um, and, and what I really like is like I guess a lot of people refer to them as like train magazines, but they were like. They're these little books. I have a ton of them that were printed in like 20s to 30s that are just these little like novels, but they're like short. Yeah. You know, they're it's like 20, 30. That you get from the Jehovah Witness. Yeah. It's like the same the size shadow. format. Yeah. Did anyway, you Layton, I just I, break I, what happened? You broke Layton. I agree with Layton 100%. Uh, a lot of Batman detective stories are like, look at all these clues, puts it in the computer. Oh, it turns out it was uh, Penguin. The computer does everything for him, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, it's very it's, formulaic. It's, it was one of the... <laughs> <laughs> what was that, Lee? Like my grandmother. We'll talk to her. She'll start telling us a story and pause for 45 minutes. We go on to another conversation. She still continues. Oh, my God. You look so much like Chumley in this picture. Is that Chum? <laughs> That's a Chumley picture. That's not you, Leighton. No, that that is definitely me. It's a, it's a, It's from last year. <laughs> you look like a happy so, Ewok. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it's also my old glasses. I have now you look like Chewbacca. You, you, uh... <laughs> he grew up. He's a, he's a full-grown Ewok now. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, a lot I of think the Batman you stories. Growing your hair that. makes you look like you lost weight. <laughs> Maybe no, losing I weight lose makes him look like losing weight. Yeah, see? I lost about 45 pounds since that photo oh. was taken. I, I should clarify, though, by the way, because you and I just met, Leighton. I like you, man. That's why I make fun of you. I only make fun of the people I oh, like. Oh, no, you're fine, man. <laughs> if I don't tease you. Uh... Is that what Anna's going to be saying in court? He used to make fun oh. of me all the time and said and said that it was because he loved me. <laughs> yeah. Be like, you and then the judge is going to look, like, Mr. Reyes, this is your seventh time here in divorce court. Are we ever going to get this right? No, nah, you see, my uh, the one thing I'm, I know I'm going to be saying in court is, and that's why I killed you, Your Honor. And I'm gonna get, and I'm gonna get off. I'm gonna get completely off because I'm gonna be like, you know what happened? She burned all my comic books, Your Honor. And he's gonna no. be like, 
And I said, you know what was in that collection, Your Honor? Dragon Rage number one. <laughs> <laughs> Very valuable comics. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a rare, rare issue. So, you know, that's why I'm going to get acquitted. You know? If that doesn't work, just say, well, she was at uh, January 6th. And like, oh, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> cool. You see, Your Honor, I think she was an insurrectionist. And as my duty as a, as a yeah, law-abiding yeah. citizen. Hey, All right. Let's just with a few of those guys. <laughs> I, I'm not saying anything one way or another about Lofty being on top of the Capitol building on January 6th. I'm not saying anything. Oh, shit. Jesus All right. Play the clip, y'all. To my writing style, which I understand that not everybody's a fan of, um, <laughs> his writing style, and that's really our kind of approach with the with the company in general. We're trying. It's, to, to it's impossible to replicate Bad, how people would consume comic books back in the gap. Impossible. We we back in the gap. Back in no, the it's gap. not, Eric. It's literally not impossible. Uh, just write a comic book like a comic book. Just write a comic book in a competent manner. D- DJ Eric, you 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 read the script for my comic. Mm-hmm. Would you say it feels like a comic from Back in the Gap? Yeah, I mean it's definitely you know like the thing about uh, with all the mistakes and editing mistakes in, in Eric's books and everything, it just it, it just not a good read. It doesn't feel good. I mean, like even with all the problems with Alpha Core, at least there was something there. Like there's nothing in Isom. Your your book though, I think uh, you've got a pretty solid story. Yours is interesting. Like you you know something is happening. In these books, nothing fucking happens. It's just nothing. Like you don't know anything about these characters or about this world. They, they there's so much wrong, and and I don't know if it's the writing, if because uh, paneling is hard. Let me just say this, right? Like as as a first time, I wrote I've written a lot of things. I've oh, written, it's a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, for 20 years I've done you know. Um, Media criticism. I've written for men's magazines. I've written scripts for for TV shows and stuff, and not not ever that I produced, but I've written things. Right, I've been paid. It's not like I haven't been paid. I've been paid to help uh, pitch an animated series. I write uh, the first episode. Didn't get picked up. Uh, it was ahead of its time. It was ahead of it. It was like a a show about chimpanzees from a um, like a science. They got freed from a science facility, and the chimpanzee could talk. So the government's like, "Wait a minute, they're not wild animals anymore because they they have human speech." So they moved them into the suburbs, and it was going to be like um, playing off the political nature of things. Like, "Oh, they're they're not they don't have citizenship. How can they get a job? They don't have this right." Like, uh, it was going to be one of those type of things. Either way, ahead of its time, no one no one wanted it. Um, so I wrote that. I wrote some other things. I wrote some dialogue for video games. So I've written things. This, however, is completely different because I have to uh, think about the paneling and the pacing and going from, you know, uh, it's like still image to still, it's like free, it's like watching a movie, right? A two hour movie and then going, all right, now you, I need you to pick three frames and go, that's how, that's the story. Like, oh shit, I need this frame. All right. Then I need that frame. All right. Well, when does he that frame. become the twisted sister frog? That's what I'm waiting for. What issue? Oh, that, that that's going to be issue seven. Oh. I get that there, one. I updated my photo. <laughs> so back in the gap just means back in the day? Yeah. Yeah. That's his version of it. Wow. It, yeah, it's, Why did you say back like, in the day? For the artist, in order to avoid problems. And this can only work digital, obviously. Like you have to I remember the gap in the mall. Separate. Just yeah. in case some changes are made, but then you have to change the order and shit. It's crazy. So... Yeah, so paneling is hard, and I, I can see Eric July struggles with that because there's so many panels that I go, you don't need this. You can get rid of this. And I don't know if it was him going, I want to write a hundred and, what, what the hell is it, 109-page story? What, some, whatever the fuck ludicrous amount. He was like, I'm going to do like a hundred-page story. And he went, shit, I have all this room, and I have nothing to, to fill it with. And he's like, all right, three panels of the truck. Uh, I some standing there. like Another splash page. Another splash page. Right? He's like... It's hard. It's hard. Yo, Tony, who dis? Uh, who dis where? Uh, what up, Logical? Um, the gap in between my teeth? So, yeah. So, paneling's not easy. And I think... And I said this before. Air July would have been better off if he, he sat down and said, I'm going to write a 24-page story. Right? Smaller story. I, I think a lot of people even say... I've seen uh, videos and stuff where people are like... 
for your first comic, do like a four panel comic. Learn how to do a four panel comic. And then expand that out where you go, okay, now I'm going to do a two page comic with each one has four panels. And then do a four page comic. Which, see, it's a 16 panel comic, right? And then just keep branching off of there till you learn the pacing of the comic. Because, like, even as, as TJ, like, I tried to keep it as simple as possible. Like, I, and it was like no fancy paneling. I'm like, I'm right. gonna, let's keep this yeah. old school. Like, uh, but again, yeah, yeah. Uh, dude says he had bigger uh, than what Comic State does, Tony. He had to go bigger than what Comic State does. Yeah, I understand that. You could have, but he could have did that. He could have did, instead of doing one um, 109 page story, he could have did like three or four, four. 24 page stories right but four stories in the same book well i think you know he was thinking well the more pages then people think they're getting more for their dollar but they actually got no story yeah well that's what i'm saying like you could still go 100 pages but go okay 100 page like rich's book is 20 pages right so imagine you got the first five issues of that in your book right so instead of trying to make a long story made Five short stories that all connect together, right? Or even if you wanted to go, you know, I'm gonna do uh, 20 pages of Isom, then I'll throw a uh, uh, what the hell is that? Norfolk, 20 pages. Like make it a, a Ripperverse presents, and it's like five stories, five different characters. Uh, you get five different origins all in one book. Wait, people can say Norfolk? Is that real? Yeah, that's yeah. The stupid space band. No, they're not space. They're they're like gods. They're like Norse gods from Africa that also are in a band. Norse gods from Africa. He yeah. was king, okay, guys? <laughs> the very thing Eric July was making fun of. Wow. It just gets the fact that you, See, I hear North, I think North Africa. It's like, well, that's stupid. It's like, oh, no, no, no. It's a fusion of Norse and Africa. It's like Blood Ruth. Her name's Ruth, and she has blood. And then, oh, Yaira has ice powers, so she, clearly she's from Iceland. And he does, never looked up the fact that Iceland was like a fake name mm -hmm. for Iceland. It was literally Greenland... created as a marketing term by Vikings to try to attempt people to come to a new world that was supposedly full of good things that wasn't. But, uh, yeah. I, so, I've, read, dude... I've read that Iceland was a... Uh, a misnomer because like Greenland right is that's Iceland that's place. that's yeah because Iceland is smaller than Greenland so in order to get you to go to Greenland you call Iceland Iceland so you think it's icy and you're like oh well Greenland must be nice let's go to Greenland because it's bigger that's where they wanted you to go it's exactly what Leighton said but dude man saying that Variety magazine that would have been more interesting and it would have oh shit Norfolk needs to be 250 pages it has to be epic epic failure like Beowulf Hey, uh, I'm going to go ahead and head out and I'll pop back in if you guys are still going later. Um, All right, I'm, I'm sorry I yelled at you late and you don't have to leave because I yelled at you. No, what? <laughs> <laughs> I am going to be... I'm not Vito. I don't quit streets, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> I'm going to... All the way from Alaska. <laughs> I am going to be streaming tomorrow and I'm trying to get 500 subs. I'm 18 people away. So anybody who wants to go sub... You can go to, you don't even have to, like, you can click a link or you can just go to outlawthoughts.com. Go do that. Because I need people. I'm trying to get happen. monetized. It's a whole process. What are you saying? You have a YouTube channel? <laughs> yes. Yes. I have what? a channel called Outlaw Thoughts. Uh, thoughts? Like those girls that are. <laughs> no, like, <laughs> no, that's the only like fans. Your thoughts. <laughs> like oh. you're thinking, you know? I was going to go sub, right? I was like, how? Whoa, outlaw I'm thoughts. sure Katie will. He's I'm like, sure. what makes them outlawed? And let's find out. <laughs> and then what makes them thoughts? Like, I wanted to know. Yeah. I, I, I got to know. I got to find that's out. That's a good idea, though. Like, you should become a, a ringleader. Like, no, it's actually a terrible idea because a homeless Larry tried that and his channel gets no traction. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. We'll take it easy, guys. Peace. Take it easy. Take it easy. Yeah. Uh, Geek says uh, the first volume of Ultimate Fantastic Four flows like butter, and when it cuts up uh, to release issues, the cliffhangers make you want to read more. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like something like that, where well, like it's five I, issues. Did you see the guy that like rewrote um, 
Ice of One or something. I think he did like a rewrite of it. Did you see that? I think uh, Ethan talked about it on one of his uh, streams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ethan, 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 Ethan yeah. hired him for Elephant. Yeah, yeah. He's writing a book for Ethan now. But I would have gone even further. I think at a fundamental level, even though he fixed Isom based on the existing stuff, I would have com- I would have gone a complete different direction. Like if you want Isom to retire, I would have spent like the first three or four pages of the book in like some fucking crazy ass battle like isom is fighting all these characters there's blood everywhere you know he's getting beat up other people are getting beat up and right before you see him like get ripped in half or something then you flash forward to him retired on the ranch doing stuff around the house and all this other shit and then you you spend the book like flipping back and forth between like this action scene and what he's doing now so that you get something in there that's the problem so with you that so book. you wanted johnny rocket to, to like <laughs> draw new pages I just wanted something to happen. Like the book is so fucking boring. That's the problem. Like, even if it's just mm. one action Instead thing, of like, old man Logan, we have old man Isom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, something like that. Anything. I mean, if you're gonna be derivative, at least go for it. Like he's he's being him. derivative off of the shit that, that's boring. Kind of like Sylvester Stallone's Last Blood, where we get to see. The... <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> we get to see the first blood character I would... retired on the farm. I would love yeah. Eric to write Old Man I Song. <laughs> oh my god. Sketchbook <laughs> says he made I Some gay. I would pay to see what Eric thought when he saw it, because you know he saw it. Yeah, you know he did. Gay and badass. <laughs> I have a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, he, wait, the guy that rewrote I Some, he he eventually made I Some gay in the rewrite? Yes. Yeah, you, you didn't, didn't see that? that? He, I didn't see that part. Sam uh, okay, so you know Sam the ranch hand? That's I yeah. Some's gay lover. Oh shit! Okay, well, makes sense. I am. Yeah, it's all coming together. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sam, I am. <laughs> See, uh, Wizard says I can't show Tony my scripts until his comic comes out because he will hire me and hand all writing jobs to me, and I don't have time. <laughs> That's what it is. What it be? It's like all yeah, no, it artists. <laughs> yeah. But but it it is hard. It is definitely difficult, and it's not um, especially first time. Right, you don't know what you're doing. Uh, you're throwing a bunch of money. You got a bunch of yes men. No one's sitting you down going, Eric, this is bad. Like, I don't think he showed anybody his script. I'm going to be honest. Because it feels like uh, he just went out there and this is, you know, he's real proud of himself and just threw it out there without no experience. I remember him saying something about, well, I know how to write because I've wrote, written songs. I'm like, those, that doesn't translate those skills. But can't possibly do it because the internet is so accessible uh to so many people therefore the spread of information is quick so you kind of um i'm glad he's explaining the internet to us i, I wasn't sure he, he, he said he just said properly no 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 no. he just said that he can't write comic books like they used to because the internet is accessible to so many people like so he, he he's I think I figured this out. Eric is afraid to put any actual information in his book because people who don't pay for it will, will learn this information. And then he feels like he's being cheated out of income, I guess. Yeah. Because that's, that, that's the only conclusion I could draw. Like, I don't think Marvel goes, man, uh, should we should we have some action? No, no, no. See, they're going to share those pages on Twitter. Okay, okay. Should we, should we find out who the identity of the new Green Goblin is? No, no. See, because then someone will spoil that on a YouTube video, we can't do that either. So we just have Spider Man drive around for like 15 pages. Yeah, do that. Do that. Because too many that'll people teach. have access to the internet. Yeah, that, that'll teach those people for, for wanting no, to buy our know, comics. He's, coming, he's becoming Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson was against, you know, he was all for like uh, the Lost Boy stuff. And then he turns uh, when he like takes a stand that his followers. Gener- generally don't agree with and he's like all these anonymous trolls you know he's this is exactly what he's become uh he's flipped because now there's scrutiny on his creativity or really lack thereof and so yeah. now he's like oh people on the internet and they're gonna pick you a pot <laughs> yes information super highway anyone yeah exactly uh, enrique says i know how to write comics because in write text to the homie sometimes <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, I write, I write text messages, so it translates. Uh, we write snipe you know, letters. It, so they, yeah. I actually heard that that somebody was sending out night letters because of me, uh, and mm. I'm very I'm very proud that someone <laughs> cares enough about me to tell yeah. other people not to not to make fun of me. Uh, I've had so, two people so she, do that. 
two other people that I knew and sent like night letters. So I guess we're all in a club together, guys. Yeah. Fucking night letters. Yeah. Tevin Daniel says, got an update, Tony. <laughs> My second draft is finally done. I'm catching up to you in the race between you and Riley and from the Clipperverse. Damn. See, Vito lost that race, so you have a chance. Yeah. There's one down. Did you did you hear what happened, Eric, <laughs> with Vito's comic? Uh, no. Uh -uh. Oh, Marvel. Yeah. Okay. So the latest Marvel news, and uh, take it with a grain of salt, it's from Daniel RPK, right? Mm -hmm. But apparently, according to Daniel RPK, that the Deadpool three, the gimmick, is that each universe has its own anchor hero, and if that hero leaves the universe or gets killed, then that universe uh, dies. Oh. And that's how they're gonna do the multiverse thing. Okay. That's literally that's literally the gimmick of Vito's book. Mm. I still can't wait for Vito's book. Yeah, that's so that's rough. And the kicker is, if he actually got it out on time, it'd already have been out, and then people would be like, "Oh, look at look how like smart Vito was to have this thing, and he knew like he was he was ahead of the game." But now, if his book, when his book comes out, it's going to be after. He could he could have even been like Marvel read my book and they got the idea for me. So now I'm going to uh, take him to court or whatever. But you know. yeah, they ripped off Vito. Yeah, I like he could be like woke Marvel stole my idea. I now know why so many people watch Earth July. I like watching him. It's so crazy to think to hear the stuff that comes out of his mouth. It's so crazy to think. People have given this guy like eight million dollars thus far, plus all the super <laughs> chats. It, it's not really. I mean, look at look at um, DSP, right? People still give him money, just be like, shit. If he stops getting money, then he'll stop making his content. So we got to make sure he has money. He's always got I money. I was thinking about this before I came on. Is that uh, we collectively, us detractors and EVS, uh, us talking about him? I think is a revenue source for him it's like even though he's not directly engaging it is reciprocal back and forth and if we stopped i think his sales would actually dip really bad because they would i agree with that everyone's yeah. gotta like shield him because we're talking about him but then if we weren't talking about him then there wouldn't be the fervor to actually back eric but mm -hmm. I'm fine with that because I want mm -hmm. to keep going. I only want him to close shop. I don't want to, even though I joke about it, I don't want him to go bankrupt. I want, if he ever closes shop, it has to be his pride of just like, he won't admit it, but this isn't admitted. So, like, I suck. I'm done. I'm tired. Of I being mean, laughed at. <laughs> all you have to do is look at Rip Averse goalposts, and that proves your point, right? That account exists to like mock people. And then it gains a following from mocking people who don't like Eric and then uses that as a place to advertise Eric's materials. So mm -hmm. that is proof that that is exactly what his business model is. You Gold mean like Sturgis? A double agent. Yeah. He built like Sturgis, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I just think he's dumb. I don't think GoPost is a double agent. I th just think he, GoPost is <laughs> extremely like dumb. They're all idiots. Yeah. Like, they don't realize what they're doing. They think they're like, yeah, we owned you. And it's like, no, actually, you didn't. Or have the lore even. Mm -hmm. All of them. Push play on this. I'm so I want to hear the crazy yes. God, backwards. Push play. Yeah. <laughs> Conditioned. See, this is why Jimmy's going to be in charge of the, of the videos when we when we do our stream on Sunday. Uh, <laughs> oh, a culture full of people that want everything and they want it right then and there from Amazon and how they. <laughs> Katie. Just how. What. You got oh, a look. email, that girl. Was. You got you got you got you got to pay attention when you be clipping shit. Yeah. You, I told I'm you, you got to put on Do Not Disturb when you're. Mm. I do that. I do everything. You, 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 have, a, you, have, a you have a D. You have a D. You have a D from Dan. <laughs> <sighs> Crisis. Okay. Now you're you roping Dan into, into this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Poor Dan. Dan. <laughs> you just docked Dan. Oh, things. Yeah. God. Right then and there, from Amazon and how they operate to <laughs> just how. Things uh, uh, people are able to get things delivered to them very, very hey, quickly. I was just thinking about my writing style. <laughs> I, 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 I like to drop nuggets for sure, and I don't I drop the point nuggets. Is I, I like to drop nuggets. <laughs> Chickens in the chat. If you see my diet, yo, I'm happy if I can drop some nuggets. Yeah. <laughs> it's got the little goat turds, and just little balls, just drops. <laughs> Like a, like horse pellets, you know, dropping <laughs> nuggets. Uh oh, Katie Did's name is Katie Docs. <laughs> yeah. 
<sighs> I am not winning tonight with these clips. Damn. This is the second <laughs> one. The other one was Saturday. And it's is that like... Eric July's, uh, what is that, a coom face right there? What's going on? Where's his hands? Yeah. His hands, he's rubbing his chest. He's like, yeah. <laughs> Would you fuck me? I'd fuck me. <laughs> he's rubbing his belly thinking about dropping more nuggets. Yeah, so ooh, nuggets. I'm going to drop them in the deep fire. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, he's basically saying that he the way he writes is because people want too much information and they want it now. So he's doing the opposite because information might go out on the – I don't fucking know. This is because that's so, that's so interesting, right? It's so interesting. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me anything. That's so interesting as a reader. But you could – so the problem Eric is having, right, you could have six mystery boxes in your story. But by the end of the story, you have to open one of them yep. and tell us. As long as it's just one, as long as you give me satisfaction in one mystery box, then I'm like, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. There's a satisfactory conclusion, and I'm hooked into the other ones. And that's how you keep people engaged. But if you're just like, a bunch of boxes that I'm never going to open, you're like, this is retarded. All right, please play because I got to go to bed. I, I like to drop nuggets for sure, and I don't. The, the point is not to hold the reader's hand. I'm not. I don't build what? this universe with it in mind that hey, you're just gonna read this and go move on to the next property. No, it's like look, we're writing this shit for people that want to get invested in our universe, right? Oh so, um, I, 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 the, the the detective style stories allow me to really justify that in approach. So when I'm writing a story, what like is he salvage, about? I'm getting a headache. What he's saying is, uh, he, <laughs> the way he writes it is he gives you as little information as he can. That way you have to keep coming back if you want it. He, oh, he thinks, my God. he that, thinks that once you bought the book. That's a detective style writing. Yeah, yeah. He thinks okay. that you buy the book, so you read it, and now you're <laughs> stuck because you're like, oh, shit, I have to stay here to finish the story. Yeah. And because he gives you so little information, he can keep bringing you back over and over and over and over again. Uh, I just realized we're, with this this salvage guy or whatever, we're gonna yeah. have Eric July trying to write a mystery, like a real legitimate <laughs> oh god mystery, like a Batman story, basically. Even Suit is losing his mind. He read all of Eric's shit. There is no detective story. The case salvage the PI missing... in the mystery of the missing plot. Where's that plot? <laughs> no, you know what this is. It's really just inspired by his uh, mysteriously found CGC graded ISOM ones that popped up on <laughs> ISOM or uh, Alpha Core, right? He's trying to find that yeah. page off Instagram. That, 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he 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 doesn't know how to write it. Keep it simple, Eric. Eric, keep it simple. Now you're you know you're like I'm diving gonna... into the deep end of this shit, right? Like. You, you don't know how to write a basic story, and you're like, let me write the fucking next great novel. Let me write a fucking Lord of the Rings style grand epic. No, just write a small, oh, simple God, puppy, puppy get lost story, right? Write a little simple, a boy loses his puppy, and a guy finds it and brings it home. Like, four-page little thing. Let us know that you know how to do start, middle, end. It's a fucking guy. You're going to really in, in, enjoy it, 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 it despite it. He, him being a private investigator, we, we're very much like in the beginning, right? It's only 13 pages. Uh, so there's a lot that I needed to happen during that period of time. You're going to enjoy it. But, man, I hope y'all like it. Uh, this is going to be – this is really a market test. So as the audience gets that book, they order that book and get it, we will see how they respond. What market, though? Been... What market? This is not a comic. It's part of a magazine. Like, what market? Is he trying to uh, tap into, like, the, the Japanese – like manga type stuff. Is that what he's trying to do with this? Because it's no, not a comic. He, what he's what he's gonna do is he's gonna put um, this book out like seven bucks. It's gonna be a magazine that he puts out regularly that he's gonna shove stories in. Like instead of doing an ash can, which like a lot of people do, he's gonna put it in this magazine basically. Mm, okay. And so like you'll you'll read it and you're like, oh, Detective Salvage. I need a whole ninety six pages of this, Eric. Well, I would Kick say with the magazine, so though, you have to do something like every month. It has to be like every month. You can't like do a magazine and then five months go by and you do another one. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. Well, he's gearing up to have campaigns like every month. That's how does really Eric July, how does he speak and he goes forward, two steps backwards, 
in the conversation and then he comes back forward it's like one of those engines you're trying to start that yeah zing, 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 zing. <laughs> you know I, it's hard to understand him how do people watch him all the time and and i don't think they actually listen i think they just turn it on and then do other things and they're like every once in a while like, oh, they, they hit, yeah, they hit play and they're like we are winning <laughs> there you go yeah sturgis <laughs> many ideas this is what I feel like if I did get it, give, give it a shot in writing like something that's longer form or writing uh, a, a massive one shot for salvage, man, I have so fucking much fun with the detective stuff in that. Um, but yeah, it's I want him. So the way he wrote Isom as bad as as it is, he's like Neil Breen. I want him to write a long, like fucking novel sized uh, detective salvage P.I. where it's like the most stupidest. Like James Bond uh, meets fucking Sherlock Holmes shit, where it's like every mystery is like something that you would never be able to solve on your own because it's like, oh, you didn't realize this, but I know that your great great grandpappy was buried <laughs> in, what it is, is. In, in, in an Arkansas <laughs> tomb. And you're like, Eric, that was never in the book. Yeah, I ain't gonna hold your hand. It's gonna be like like obscure shit that you, there's no way you could figure out the mystery, and Eric's gonna be like all proud of himself. <laughs> It's like, Eric, how are we supposed to know what color bed sheets you have on your bed? It's like, see, you didn't realize Eric July has red bed sheets. That's why the killer is Jimmy. And you're like, oh. Like, so, um, hey, guys, I'm going to have to hip off here. You can go edit. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I already did that. It's, oh. it's actually unlisted, and I just I just popped, took it out. So, oh. But I can't help it, dude. I've been listening to these fucking people for so long. It's like fried my brain. I could have sworn I had checked everything. And fucking Eric July, dude. He makes you fucking lose your brain cells. Yeah. He does. We're, we're going to become er uh, doctors of Ericology when this is all over. <laughs> Katie got a night letter after Sue clipped me reading his super chat. <laughs> Oh, all right, guys, I'm gonna head out. It's Jimmy, it's good, good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you. Get in touch again. with me so we can get your uh, some numbers up on your campaign before it closes. Yeah. Okay. I'm four backers away from reaching 750. I just need four backers. Right on. That's all right, we'll get you some, we'll get you some more. four backers for you. And uh, personal goal, uh, your goal should be 1500. You should have 1500 backers, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Tony. It, you know? why, why do you say that like so like yeah, yeah, Tony. yeah Tony I really really do want a lot of people come on be happy Jimmy like, fuck yeah. uh, and uh, Eric Bunks good to see you and talk to you Black Angus, TJ, all y'all Tony I'll catch y'all right. next time right. see you later Katie, all right, take it easy, Katie. Bye. Take care, all right now that the lady's gone we can all stop holding in our guts <laughs> our farts <laughs> and finally scratch my nut Drop some nuggets. Uh, that's how hell the Lord got the way he is. Much <laughs> actual exposure. Yeah. Really I don't know if you guys seen hell the Lord put out a tweet saying that oh, God. he wrote he wrote he wrote a comic a story, and he was gonna sell it to Marvel, but then he found out how uh, SJW how they, they went. Were. Yeah, the, so the Buck Solo story. <laughs> And then Shane uh, Davis's wife went at him. It was glorious. glorious. Yeah, and then yeah, he fucking memed at her gay shit, and it's like what? What? Yeah, like, it was do? like a picture of like um, what was it Vito and Dick, and then like her or something Ethan. like that. It was, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like she's not in it. It has nothing to do with the tweet she put out about going to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> fucking god, these people. All right. Let's finish this clip up. It's got to be largely determined. It's unlisted, so we have to finish it up now by the audience for sure bruce with a 10 said it's funny when uh haters are critical of reverse art Kanan gets hired to direct the art then haters complain that the art's too <laughs> that's a too good what? point right it's like uh -huh. it, 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 it's the same thing with horseman right eric because you know some people operate from oh uh, because he's you said eric? He's a newbie and he's seeing all this yeah his name eric he, he you get you got to pay attention he's like stops and starts sentences just out of nowhere. He'd be like, you see, you got to understand. So Eric, what he said, yeah, then I went I, to the I, store and then my mom went, yeah. like, what? I was going to say, Tony, it's like I was the other day when I was watching one of his videos, he, he, this is how he goes. He's like, 
he'll say, um, yeah, and then some people, and you know what I'm saying? Like the other day when I was, and outside, it's really weird because when everything is just different when you don't think about this, and I'm like, you never, he never finishes a <laughs> sentence. A thought. He finishes a thought. Oh, wait, that's he, like he how he writes. Pop holes, he's even had yeah, pop holes in his sentences <laughs> when he talks. Yeah, his life, he just, he, he can't hold your hand, Jimmy. He's going to give you just a little bit of information. You got to figure out the rest on your own. He was going to find Jasmine, but then. Yeah. <laughs> That's why people yeah, keep coming there to watch the stream. Yeah. That's why he doesn't have breakfast a lot. He's like, fuck, did I have breakfast? What would it feel like if I didn't have breakfast? <laughs> success, he's under, he's undeserving. Nobody should be getting the success that he has. Instead, it should be given to other people that have been around the block because Eric July didn't pay his dues. And they operate from this. Why is he always a victim? No, I don't think anyone's ever said Eric July doesn't deserve any success or any money he's made. Everyone just goes, that looks like shit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I don't like. I'm not. I don't like him, but I don't care. He's got a successful business. What the fuck? I don't give a yeah. shit. Make more so we can laugh. <laughs> Point that like they think I'm incompetent, right? They think I don't know anything. You are. I'm stupid. Fine. Whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I don't and think so that. I like, know hey, that. He should be doing this. But when I do that thing anyway, even though it was a naturally occurring thing, it's not under no. the advice of anybody. Nobody, like, I didn't. That means it he was. Didn't, he, didn't <laughs> he, he didn't take any single criticism. No, but it, like, like he, whenever he does that, that always means that someone did tell him. That's that's EVS did. That is. Yeah. EVS kept saying you need to bring in some people uh, to help you. He's like bringing because Kenny why would you say that? Why would you say that? Who would say that in a natural sentence? Why would you be like, oh, uh, because I didn't take the advice from somebody? That's what they want you to believe. Like, who would say that? You would just say this is what I decided to do. Like, it, it just yeah. doesn't make any sense. Yeah. He's trying as to the art director because someone advised me. What? Uh, I was gonna say he's trying to take credit that it was divinely from his own brain that these ideas came from he's so much a businessman that uh businessman he had the insight yeah i said Business. businessman <laughs> horseman uh, <laughs> you're right but but the reason why he's doing that is because he's paying attention to what other people are saying to him which means if that's the case then he wouldn't have done it it wouldn't have happened divinely because he yeah. heard other people saying it like that's that's the point like i i just he's God, he's, so he's incompetent. Look like Sambo Gogo says, he admitted to making zero profit on seven million in revenue. He's 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 fucking incompetent. That's true. But he did pay off. I mean, he can't even start his videos without his mouth open. Sorry, Jim. <laughs> but he did pay off his mother's car and uh, their cars. He sent it right. in the live stream. Yeah. There is that. So he but see, here's what here's what Eric's problem is. Sorry, uh, Eric's problem is. He'll go, these people say that I should have hired uh, an art director. And then I do it, and they go, the art's bad. We go, yeah, Eric, because you still put out bad art. Like, hiring the art director isn't the answer. That's the, that's part of the answer. And then he has to actually do something, right? You can't just hire someone and go, well, you know, I hired a plumber. And you go, yeah, but Eric, your pipes are still leaking. Make the plumber fix the pipes. Then then we'll stop complaining, right? Like, Well, he's like, they said this, and then I do it. So it's like, oh, so that happened afterward. Gotcha. <laughs> Me to it, to do it outside of maybe the people that are here internally because we knew that was a that was a place that we needed to fill within our company. But like mm -hmm. with Horseman, a project that is one hundred percent I had nothing to do with other than building the world that Horseman's in. That was a Chuck Dixon and Joe Bennett, two longtime industry veterans. That they say I'm supposed to be leaning on. And okay. I let them run. So, so if Joe Bennett is such a industry veteran that's so good, why the fuck did Kanan White need to help him with his art? It's true. Well, I, see, here, this is where Eric is, is retarded, right? No one said give Joe Bennett and Chuck Dixon free reign of your company. No one ever said that. What they said was when you do something, when you're writing a story, lean on Chuck Dixon to help edit it. When you're doing art, lean on, uh, well, not Joe Bennett, maybe Joe Bennett. Lean on Joe Bennett to go, hey, does this look good? Hey, could you look at these these drawings from Deborah and let me know if, uh, you know, or Kanan White because now he's the art director. You know, could you take a look at these panels because I, I think they're a little funky? That's what people mean. Just going, oh, yes, oh, you want to do Horseman? Okay, thumbs up, Chuck. That's not what people mean when they say lean on your, on your veterans and people in the industry, right? Wow. Uh, you, as the owner of the company, should still be able to recognize a good and a bad idea. You should have been 
Uh, I like the concept of a guy going out beating up people, you know, violent vigilante like that. Don't like the name, don't like the costume. Let's redesign that, guys. Right? That's what you should be doing. Free. And some of them were still complaining about it. It's almost as if it's just doesn't matter what we do. But to your point, that's what happened with Deborah. Kanan gets brought in, elevates her like no other. And now you have people that are uh, saying that, and I love that she she posted some pencils, like she's showing everybody like, no, nah, that's me. And I love it. Uh, and you had people like trying to make up a conspiracy that like her, like I guess Joe Bennett, which it, he isn't even a fucking, isn't even a fucking inker, right? It was uh, the... Joe Bennett's not an inker. What does that have to he, he can redo pencils. Yeah, Jimmy, you, you're, you're an artist. Yeah, who's to say they're not giving her layouts? Here, work from these layouts, and then she's just drawing her pencils over those layouts. You know, and she's like, "Oh, look." Uh, okay, pencils. I just looked on Joe Bennett's actual page, and he's listed as a penciler and inker, and has been since the '90s. If you go <laughs> to the wiki page, it's literally the two things that's listed as yeah. his uh, expertise. Yeah. So, according to well, they... wiki, he's an inker as well. Yeah. All right, uh, Katie Did's channel for five dollars. Thank you, Katie Did. That's a lot of money. He says I want forty percent chickens. All right. High risk, high reward. The economics of comics part owner. Oh lord, it's a ballsy move. Some people, not many, sing my rap. Lats phonemics for payment, not any. Are you digging my groove? I gave you forty percent. You're a cold bitch. I gave you forty percent. You got a chance to get rich. I gave you forty percent. Don't do no crap on the bluff. I gave you forty percent. So right now you get nothing. The thing is, he obviously doesn't know comic book publishing world. He doesn't know, you know, how to produce and make comic books. I mean, he's new. It's his first time. I don't know why he's trying to be so arrogant about it. Why not? You know, he, he, no, you can't give him that excuse anymore. We're on what book four and five and six and seven, like all at once. Like he doesn't get the first time excuse anymore. Well, uh, it's no, but what about what, his what, business acumen? So hold, he, he hold throws on, it Angus, out the window. Hey, Angus, like, Angus, hold, hold on. I think what Jimmy's saying is Eric could humble himself and say, guys, I'm still learning, and people w wouldn't be so hard on him. But because he's being an asshole, that's why he's getting a lot of shit. Like, look, if he just said, look, guys, uh, Deborah put in some things. I didn't I didn't recognize that they were bad. Uh, we had Cannon White sit down and talk with her. We improved her art. Because we're judging the old stuff. Instead of going, yeah, you know what? That old stuff was bad. The new stuff is good. He's just going, see, this new stuff is good. I don't know why you guys are mad. He's like, yeah, well, well, that other stuff is what we were talking about, Eric. The other, the other things from the book, from, from Isom 2, you know, that stuff? Address that. And he's not. He's addressing new things that no one's even talking about. And he's not That's giving credit problem. to any, any of you guys for the criticism mm -hmm. that you guys are giving him. He's actually going back and starting to look at this stuff and adjust it. If people hadn't made the comments they made about Horseman or made uh, about that girl's work, Deborah's work. I want to be honest. I think a lot of times in, in, that people who are not fans of something can give some of the best criticism because yeah. oh, they're yeah. not going to be, they're not going to sugarcoat it. They're just going to tell you what they think about it. I, I, I've had a lot of people that don't, uh, you know, over the years that didn't like stuff that I did and they'd say something and I go, you know what? They might be right about that. And then I'll check it out. I'll, I'll correct it. And then I'm like, yeah, I mean, they helped me be a better artist in whatever I was doing. And so, you know, not it's not every time. Some people just want to talk shit, and that's fine. But sometimes wow. there's constructive stuff constructive stuff in there. I'll tell you what. There, there's been some videos where I fucked up the audio, right? I like the audio is, like, completely jacked up. And my friends and everyone's, like, they're liking the video. And they're like, yeah, this is great. Yo. And I'm like, and then I'll see an asshole go, Fucking audio don't work. And I'm like, let me see. Like, yeah, he's right. Like, wh why are all you other assholes telling me the video's good and, th and that guy's telling me the audio's shit? Like, wh he doesn't like me and he's letting me know. <laughs> he's laughing at me for having shit audio. I'm like, yes, that's the guy I'm going to listen to because Eric said, should be the same way. And in this video right now, he's like, yeah, when people are saying to do this, yet I I do this, but even if, even d just had done it because they don't, not because they said do it, because I did it, or whatever yeah. the way he speaks. But I can't imitate his, his sentences. <laughs> see, see what, what it is, is Jimmy, is I, I'm Eric July, and people don't like me. So even when I do the thing that they want me to do, they get mad that I did the thing that they asked me to do because I did the thing, but I didn't do it because of them. I did it because it was naturally what we was right. going to do anyway. But it just happened to coincide with the thing that it is that they which wanted me to do. 
uh, indubitably. <laughs> <laughs> See, that was spot on. That was spot on. Wow. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, he's just so arrogant, man. It's like, come on. We, we, we see. We, we, we can see the big mole in the middle of your forehead. We see the freaking hair on your shoulders, man. No, there ain't no hair. No, no, no. Come on. You, you know what? what? Honestly, like, I don't like the shit that he has. Like, I don't like his comics and stuff. But he could probably sell a lot more comics if he just wasn't so fucking standoffish. Yeah. Uh, all the time. All the time. And blocking people. He yeah. lost all, a lot of customers. A lot of, a lot of the customers are now on this show because they got yeah. blocked by him. Well, you, you went from 40,000 to 20 to like 15. Was he at like now, like nine, maybe? Eight, eight five. Eight. Eight. Yeah, I guess that's yeah, that might be something to do with why they're putting out book after book after book as quick as they can. He has no sense of humor. He has no self depreciation uh, ability of like, <laughs> you silly detractors, you have gotten me this time. <laughs> like, just take it. Just take it, John, Eric. Just John Pantalon <laughs> says, John Malin has no power and is streaming in the dark. He's summoning ninjas via sales. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is he closing out that campaign? I need to hurry up and get. I've, I've always not been able to get his fucking uh, his book. Let me look. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I have the. I backed it. I got it. Uh, says when the Saskas went down on Eric, do you think he said, "Yeah, there's a beard down there"? Too? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I just want to know. Is, did did my head? Damn it! Did, what did they say about the marker that said Sturgis was here? Like, who the hell is Sturgis? Why was he here, Eric? <laughs> Take the L, you and your Ripperverse. Look, he doesn't even have to take an L. It, it's real simple. Like I said, all he, all, he doesn't have to say anything. All I gotta do is just do, just do the moves. Like, oh shit, they're right. My art does suck. Let me make, let me make the next book better so they can't complain. Right? All this attention that he brings to it, all this. Oh, they said this and they said this about me. I know what it is, Eric. I'm not an idiot. I know the game. I know the fucking con. You're doing this because it makes your fans get upset and angry at us, and then they buy more product. Yep. Not yep. about actually yep. improving the product. It's about getting their, them angry. Like, they're not angry enough. The That's why I haven't point. made enough money, right? Yeah. Yeah. You guys need to be angrier because look look how they treat me, Eric July. I get it. I Playing get it. the victim. Yeah. One that is the, uh, I guess, drew the art or Kanan drew the drew the art that you guys saw and it's like no that's uh it had nothing to do with that <laughs> everything that you've seen and then as Huddy far as uh, the pencils are concerned that's all that's all Deborah she did all of that but yeah to your point Bruce but see again here's the problem you can show one image right you can show one singular image and it can be awesome Deborah drew this 100% she spent three days on this one image all right, now show me the sequential art. Oh, she did that one good, but the other two images in the sequence suck. Oh, she actually couldn't draw. Like, she can draw the, the person standing, but, like, having their head turned, that's where she has her problem, or hands, or maybe a, a certain angle of the foot impact shots. Like, she's not good at, with, with, you know, environments. Mm -hmm. You know, she's good with, with inside a building. Yeah. Maybe the perspective is bad. You know, there's all kind of things, and that's what people are saying. That's why, like, showing one image and going, "Haha, see this image is good." I'm like, "Yeah, but I want to see the rest of it." <laughs> it, it was a face, right? Wasn't it a? It was like a, a close-up panel, a woman's face or something. She was turning. What, what it is is uh, what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there are two people sitting at a table, like being interrogated, and then someone comes in the door, and she turns over. To look, and her head is like almost completely like owled, like turned all the way around. You're like the Exorcist. Yeah, you're like what the hell's going on here? Yeah, Dan Lawless called it the Exorcist. Singular, Tony. It's singular. That's what I said. I said singular. 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 Dropping nuggets. If we listen to Eric July long enough, we might end up mush mouth like he is. Yeah, I, I do. I, the more <laughs> I hear somebody, like it goes into my brain, and then I start. Well, I, out. Yeah, they're saying I wanna, what it is for no reason. <laughs> I want to like, thank you guys. You guys played this Eric July video long enough. It's putting me to sleep now. I'm ready for bedtime. <laughs> you got one more second. Jimmy, one more second. You got to one more second of video. Right, we we, we, we got to yeah. finish it. All right, go for it. She got too good, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. 
She got too good. You see, I think maybe maybe he's come across some of my streams or seen what like for me when I started on Dragon Ridge, I wasn't that great. And over the course of six months, I got really good. But it wasn't it wasn't like uh, it was it was hard work. It was hours and hours, man, of working, going back to the books and going back to the basics. And I put in a lot of hard work. He's trying to make it sound like she came to just him, just his presence, his ominous right over her right there. He just gave her his blessing. And yeah. there it is. She could walk on water, too. I, I also want to point out, how was he hyping up all of his artists before? Like, they're infallible. Everything they do is great. But now Kanan came along and made them great. Weren't they already great? Wasn't that what you were saying like two months ago? I mean, oh. legendary, apparently. Oh. And all this work that Kane's doing, just straight on shots. They're, you know, all these straight on character shots. They're, all the covers are starting to look the same. You know what I mean? It's like, eh, I think somebody needs to get in there and start, you know, art directing the art director. Right, right there. Forsaken Sandwich is correct. The hard part of comics is figuring out how to avoid drawing the shit you can't draw. Literally. That's literally was my biggest fear. Literally. I can say literally, you fuckers in the chant. <laughs> Uh, like Rob Liefeld no. and Pete. Yeah. <laughs> so no, because when I when I was doing the thing, uh, the script, I'm like, okay, I know Finbar is, uh, you know, he's not a professional, he's an amateur. I wasn't really sure exactly what he could draw, so I was like, I wanted to avoid certain things. So I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna do this like huge scene with like all these people and like 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 okay, let's keep it simple. And it helped with the story because now I was keeping the story simple. I was keeping the amount of characters, the 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 environment simple in my script and so i think it all helped and overall uh, it helped me write a better story because it's just hey I, I had to avoid certain things i had to avoid certain shots certain kind of uh scenes and i think it worked out in the end well that's how See, you, why you are you not challenging better. your artist yeah i was gonna say you gotta challenge you gotta challenge yourself as an artist to to get better you know oh yeah he'll eventually he's getting better um but like I said, I, I, don't, I didn't want to put undue stress on him. That was unnecessary. We've talked about this. Uh, but with George, we got George helping us, and he hates when I say that, but George is helping us. Like, we, He took that, that, that um, two-page shot. He's like, no, see, if you do this, and like, boom, we Dutch angled that motherfucker, and oh, it looks so beautiful now. So much better. But then I came in and also made it more than that. Yeah. Hey, I spent my entire career as an inker, man, and I'll, I'll take credit over every pencil's work I touched. People are like, I love Dave's work. It's like, yeah, you bet you do, because I, I inked it. <laughs> Tony, who's literally? <laughs> it's a rapper. Literally. I don't... No, I just want to fuck with me. It's, it's, you know it's I can't the Chicago. say things. So I, you know, I will say this. I, I believe, and this is like speaking to what Jimmy was just talking about, that a penciler does heavy lifting when it comes to like just laying down the, the foundation and stuff. But an inker can make or break somebody's artwork. Like you can have someone that works well with somebody else. Like I think back to like Mark Silvestri and Dan Green, like when they were doing their mm -hmm. X-Men stuff. Yeah. If anybody other than Dan was fucking with Mark's artwork back in the day, it looked completely different. There was like a level of realism that Dan added to, to Mark's work. So I have to give a shout out to all the inkers out there because they work really fucking hard to make, make the artist shine. Well, did you see there's, there's a famous inker who like ruined all the fucking Jack Kirby shit. Uh, what Vince? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, like, <laughs> I didn't even realize it. I seen a video on it. Like, like, watch the, There's this video. I think it's like Comics Explained or something. Yeah, shout out to the anchors. The anchors out there. Shout out to those. And the the anchors. anchors. Comic Tropes. The yeah, anchors. Comic Tropes is who I've seen it. Uh, awesome. it. It's basically, he shows like the original Jack Kirby pencils and what's, what's oh, in that the comic video after, after the anchor. And I'm like, oh my God. Like, he fucked up. Like, he just fucked Kirby's shit up. He would just remove stuff. He's like, well, that's too many things for me to ink. And just remove it and like draw a panel over it. I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Chris Bacon with the Big Ten, that's a lot of money. What it is, loving this illustrious panel this evening. How about some economics of comics for Mr. July? No one does it better than him. Than him? Uh, than him. Yeah, I was going to avoid the typo because he gave me 10. But... Oh. 
High risk, high reward The economics of comics part owner Oh lord, it's a ballsy move Some people, not many Sing my rap, lads, phonemics What pain it, not any Are you digging my groove? I gave you 40% You're a cold a bitch I gave you 40% You got a chance to get rich I gave you 40% Don't do no profit, no bluffing I gave you 40% So right now you get nothing Sketchbook says, I wonder, has Dillard heard the economics of comic song yet? Uh, probably because uh, probably. Matt Barr Matt Barr and them come around here all the time. So. He was really mad at uh, he was really mad at us for some reason, and I think it was this. <laughs> Possibly. I never even thought about that. That's probably why he's mad at us. Anyway, we got this other video. It's called A Jealous Creator. I haven't Katie seen this one. It. I haven't seen this one, so yeah. Bizarre adventure with 11 months. I saw a video where a jealous creator was on the verge of tears over the success of Yaira. The 3D asset shirt made him mad. I will now be buying it. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a lot of people that are uh, really. Uh, and I don't, look, man, it shouldn't be that way. I'm, I'm just being serious. So he sells spite anything. to his fans. He's he, that's what it is. Like bingo. Yeah, I told you that's his whole. That's his. Uh... Market. His enti- the, the entire Ripperverse was made out of so s- Someone was crying, which, by the way, I would never cry because of the success of the Ripperverse. But uh, I'm not saying I know who it was, but Angus, you have any? Oh, idea? okay. I'm sorry, what's up? <laughs> no, Eric said I, a, a jealous creator was crying about his success and saying that uh, the 3D asset shirts and the verge of tears. And I was making the joke that it was you. Oh, sorry. No, I'm um, trying to back a graveyard shift, but there's no like fucking add-on section. So I'm like, how how dumb are his his backers that he's making fun of them putting out that yep 3D assets like aha I gave you the the worst comic and I did we didn't even draw we just did 3D assets and y'all still bought and it. you're gonna buy the T-shirt spend more money to buy this shit even after you spent all that money on a bunch of 3d assets like yeah mocking his backers no respect for his fans or backers at all why don't you just get the 200 dollars tier with the special shirt whenever you see john malin he'll take you out for a beer can you imagine when you're wearing that shirt right you're wearing the 3d asset shirt and you try to explain to somebody like oh yeah the guy this guy eric july's got these comics and um you know people were claiming that he was selling comics with 3d assets in them and they're like, yeah, that's funny. So he made the shirt because he wasn't making 3D asset comics. They're like, no, <laughs> no, he put them in his comics and he sold the shirt. That's, that was like, what no, I said. I'm shit. like, I, I just think the police would arrest you because you're a grown man wearing a shirt with what looks like <laughs> Roblox on it. And they're like, sir, why are you wearing a Roblox shirt and why are you going oh, yeah. by the park? Yeah, Eric, you're nailing exactly what I, said, what I said when this came out. I'm like, what an idiot. Because like these shirts are advertisements. So he sells the same body. You know, someone's gonna see like, oh wow, is that Minecraft? Uh, can you? Like, no, 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 it's a uh, Ripaverse. Like, well, what's that? And it's like, yeah, it's this uh, comic. It's got Ice on, Alpha Core, and he's got Yara coming out, Bloodroots coming out, Horseman's coming out. And we're like, right. So, is 3D assets? Is that like a game he's making? Like, no, 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 no. See, people said he put 3D assets in his book, and so he made this shirt. And it's like, well, did he? It's like, oh well, yeah, but. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like how this is the whole point. Of the, the, good the luck f- trying to explain that to normies. Yeah, yeah. Wait, who is this for? I think there's yeah. an insider in that company or something that's just purposely bringing him down, or maybe they're just like, let's see if if he's dumb enough to fall for this. Let's get maybe it's, maybe it's she and Tony. Maybe Antony or <laughs> it's Alex. I think it's Alex the ginger. <laughs> oh yeah, I think it's Igor. Okay, I'm oh. still I'm still I'm, fingers crossed. If I was Igor, who's working on his own comic, does all the art for his uh, advertisements, and doesn't get hired to do a single fucking Ripperverse book, oh, I'd, I'd be, be resentful. Mad. I'd yeah. be pissed. So we'll I think see. it's Igor, but I like Igor because it sounds like it's an Apple product. <laughs> Igor. <laughs> Igor. It it like, Igor. It's a Saska Apple product. <laughs> the new Igor. Instant gore. <laughs> I love how his nickname is Chakal. Like the character yeah. from the Book of Life, Chakal. <laughs> the, <laughs> the fucking e- Igor. I actually liked Igor's art, and I reached out to him. I was like, "Hey, could you? You know, I'm looking to, to have something uh, get a commission." He's like, "Oh yeah, I'll do a commission." And then he found out who I was. He's like, "I'm not doing it for you." I'm like, 
And then he like made a post like some detractor tried to get me to do a commission. Like, yeah, you're mad because I wanted you to I wanted to pay you money to draw a picture for me. If anything, that's an owner. Like, oh look, the detractors had to rely on Ripaverse employees to help uh, boost. Or you just be like, look how good my art is. That even the detractors want to want to buy. Yeah, it. both of those. It's a troll on us. It, the way they could spin it, you know. Young and... Frankenstein joke. Yeah, Igor. It's not Igor. It's Igor. Frankenstein. I thought Eric's whole thing was like, pack all your shit at the door if you want to do the work. So why would they not want to do work for someone else because they have issues with Eric? That seems like you're bringing your baggage into your business, according to uh, to Eric. There. No idea. So. And like I said, I was real nice to him. I actually liked his work. You know, get your emotions tied up in. But you had people that were really sure that this was going to be n not a success. Who? I think everybody. I don't think there was a single person that said this wasn't going to be a successful campaign for Yaira. Yeah. He makes things up in his head, doesn't he? Even EVS was like, it's going to make millions of dollars. Like, he, he said mm -hmm. that on his streams several times, so. Yeah, I said 1.5. Uh, oh, like, is he yeah. talking about? He's talking about Liam, isn't he? That's what they're talking about. Oh, yeah. Because Liam made the front. Yeah. Yeah. Liam was like, I don't, I don't understand how this guy and his crappy comics are making more money than me. He's got to be talking about Liam. Yeah. Well, he's really passing over what Liam said, where it's like, what Liam wasn't just, I put a book out. It was like, I've done all this work. I've gone, you know, I thought we were merit based. And yet the same sphere that says all this is rewarding this retard <laughs> who clearly puts no, you know, I mean, he's not wrong. Yeah. Well, the thing is also, can you imagine if a CEO of any of the companies that Eric constantly attacks got on camera each week podcasting and kept referencing Eric complaining and crying about how successful these other companies are and how his entire business is, is spiting those larger companies. Like, this is not how you run a million dollar, multi million dollar business. Hey, don't talk about Eric like that. He's a magical Negro. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, I saw that video. I didn't watch the video. I saw the thumbnail. He's not, the I, I still can't believe it. I thought I thought it was a fake one. I was like, there's no way Eric July put this thumbnail out, and he did. Unbelievable. Damn, that train is going wild. <laughs> it's how many times it It's literally outside my window. I can reach out and touch it. Um, and look, there will inevitably be comics that don't do as good as others. That's with any publication. That's with any, uh, company. That's how it works. Uh, but yeah, I would say that if, if your projection was that it was going to be a failure, then, uh, yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't a smart one. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, people shouldn't be tied up in a, a creator or not. Shouldn't be tied up in, in like wishing and. He never sounds happy. Like he's like, you wishing me for failure, and that I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done that. that was he doesn't bad. make jokes either. But I would be like, man, these guys thought I was gonna fail. Fuck that, man! I made all that money. I'd be off. Because that's why I believe he's not. I, that's why I, one hundred percent believe, this guy is not making as much money in profit as he's making it out to be he's trying to say like oh look at this great success but that's not he's the, miserable yeah yeah that's not the uh body language of a man either he's yeah. like super tired or he's like look i don't fucking sleep anymore and he's I'm like, okay. yeah and he's stress weight. eating yeah. yeah he's always sad and depressed he's never happy doesn't joke like dude mm -hmm. I i'm over here happy you you're making money and i'm the one i'm more happy for you you know, Sturgis is happier for you that you're making money. Showing more affection to a white woman. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, that's what happens when, when black guys get rich. They find a white woman. Story is old as time. Waiting for us to us to fail. Um, it's, it's, it's like interesting. I guess for some people, my floor is like a million dollars because it's like even though there are comp publishing companies that don't push the units that we push and somehow are able to exist. Uh, it means that if we're, we can't exist um, unless we make a million, million dollars. It's like, yeah, man, um, it's weird stuff. Reco <laughs> he's, got, he's got all these employees overhead. He's got uh, two warehouses to pay for. Uh, he's spending money on a live action trailer for no reason for a comic book. He's spending money on animation. Oh, my God. That... Oh my God. 
million dollars cannot be paying for all that. I mean, he's got to be hemorrhaging money. I, I do. El Eldridge, I, for a fact, I want to see him be like, fuck them home ass detractors. Look at all this. I want him to come out with one of those guns that shoot out the money and just be like, dollar, dollar bills, y'all. Fuck y'all. Because then I'd be like, he's having fun. Like, sometimes I feel bad. I look at how sad he is. I'm like, man. He's too bad. serious. Yeah. He's yeah. too fucking Should serious. He's going to Should break I go himself. at Eric? <laughs> like, like, is he on the verge? I don't want to be the guy. I don't want to be in the note. Look, my biggest fear has always been, been to saying. be the guy in the note, okay? If, God forbid, he does something to himself, I don't want to be like, and that Tony is Pussy the reason. Style, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Eric leaves a letter on the nightstand. This That's what I'm saying. Just because of Tony. <laughs> all, all, he's gonna like, this letter on my nightstand was sent during the day. If you find it at night, it is definitely not a night letter. What it is is a note, not a letter, that I wrote at night. Because Tony oh, call the police and uh, get himself arrested because he's yelling at them. Just also, I'm gonna make a prediction. So goalposts get ready and clip this. But this is my prediction. Oh. I think that by doing away with his campaigns, it is going to lower the shill engagement on his numbers and his money and all that because. His fans, these people that always argue on Twitter, they're not going to have any information to argue with. It's going to really, really, really fuck with the engagement he has on we, his content. So. We're going to derail him even more because it's we're, we're going to dictate the narrative at that point. Because well, he, actually, you're both wrong. Okay, here's okay. why. Because as said, I don't think Eric July should do that. And then Eric did, put out a tweet went, hmm, maybe as is right. Maybe I shouldn't get rid of the campaign style. So I think that's already in his oh, in his mind. God. Oh, thank you, thank you, as it, for okay. So I hope Eric. I hope that's true because I love um, I love looking into all this shit. Like Chris Bacon's numbers are hilarious, so yeah. Yeah, keep bringing it up. But I don't think Gooding is going to get a campaign though. I think that's already a uh, that's already a done. Deal. No, I think Horseman isn't getting a campaign because it's a one shot. Oh, maybe. I don't know why oh, but, I don't one shot. As... but I think Gooding will. Uh, well, I think the goal now is to hide the numbers, like don't make it public, you know, with the with the campaign before when people would see like the higher it was getting close to a million people would jump on and want to get it to a million. But I think now they're trying to hide it. I think the numbers are getting lower. I actually think, though, that that's what drives a lot of his sales, because if people buy stuff of his to like throw that in other people's faces. And when, once that's gone, it's going to be really hard for him to make that kind of money. Yeah, they, they see the, they see the numbers go low. Like, shit, I better buy some more Eric stuff because uh, yeah, I can't throw it in, in the, in the oh, yeah. yeah, I can't throw it in the detractor's face if Eric doesn't make a million. Right. So, yeah, we win either way. You know, I think as the trackers, like he's already losing. As long as he keeps making comics, I win. I can't. I there's no losing for me. If Eric goes out of business, I win. If Eric stays in business, I win. If Eric sells his business, I win. If anything happens, I win. That's the beauty of being a detractor. I always. If win. Stir just makes a video, you win. So. Yeah, I'm the fucking house. I always fucking win. All right. Oh, I mean, we're running now because the numbers he puts out, it's like, oh, so like two thirds of your campaign are actually just the merch. No, even if he made it, see, that's what you don't understand, Angus. Maybe that's why you're not a real detractor. Even if Eric July's numbers were fantastic, even if his numbers were growing, I'd still win because I'd still be making fun of him. Literally, there is nothing he can do that I wouldn't make fun of him for. Do you understand that? That's what a true detractor is. Someone that no matter what, even if he's successful, even if he was surrounded by beautiful women that were half naked and, and he, he had all kind of money and jewels and he had like all those rings on and like fucking gold chains and he looked like MC Hammer back in his heyday, right? Even if all of that happened, he lost weight, he was fucking physically fit, I would still make fun of him <laughs> because it would piss him off. And that's why I'm a real detractor. I, I love how he does his videos now, though. He's like, uh, yeah, the earth is flat. Uh, environmental collapse is fake. Uh, the shopping numbers are brought down by the government. And by the way, I have a comic book. Thanks. Go buy it. That's, that's what his videos are now. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> what, what it is, is the world is flat. being a flat earther, honestly. That's, that's funny you say that. <laughs> He's one of those guys that'd be like, well, they do have a point. Oh, do they really? <laughs> We've all been there. Don't act like you ain't watched one video and you're like, wait a minute. Like, because they'll just say like some wild shit. They'll just get some guys like, here's Dr. Ben uh, 
Franklin, he, he's a, the head of research at the University of Michigan, and he'll just start saying things like, you see, you understand, normally the numbers go like this, but if you take the, then you're like, wait a minute, yes, one plus one does equal three. This guy knows what he's talking about. You know what used to get me, Tony, was that fucking show Ancient Aliens. Every fucking time I'd watch that show, they'd be like, how did they move the bricks from this place to this place? It had to be oh, aliens. Oh, and I'm like, man. oh, you know what? They, they might have something. You know, they might be They're right. really on to something here, you know? We can't. Like, look how smooth this rock is. There's no way a human without modern right. tools yeah. could have made they this rock. I'm like... The longest hmm. time I used to buy into that shit. And then finally I was like, this shit is stupid. I'm not, I'm not paying attention anymore. Yeah. I'm like, wait a minute. That, does the sandpaper exist? Sandpaper does exist, but they didn't have any. But they had like rough things, right? Yes. So they could have smoothed out the rock afterward. No, no. See, aliens. Oh, you're right. Aliens. Never mind. Yeah, it reminds me of the South Park episode where he got me into South Park, and I love that Thanksgiving one. It's like, uh, do we have confirmation the aliens were at Thanksgiving? Well, no. But how do we know they weren't at Thanksgiving? <laughs> Uh, Forsaken says, I re was recently thinking the house would be a cool name for a character. Uh, the rings and jewels is dope. Tony knows how to pay a picture. He's pro-capitalism. Uh, I know how to spin a yarn, as it were. That's why when people are like, oh, you don't know how to write. Like, Matt Barr put out a tweet like, Tony, Tony's never been paid to write anything. I'm like, Matt, are you a fucking idiot? I've literally been paid to write tons of shit. I like, I just don't go around bragging about it, like... Oh shit! Jimmy's getting yelled at. Nobody say anything. Oh, Ria, is that a cancel? I'm looking for aliens 4K. <laughs> the silence. No, no, we were listening to your conversation, Jimmy. That's what it was. Oh, the wife was uh, uh, questioning my Amazon purchases. Oh, yeah, we, we heard <clears throat> we we're looking for alien on 4K. What? Yes. It, what? What it is is there's only ancient one aliens, item, and there's Gyra too. Okay. Yeah. No, but eight, so this well, is this is a story. Was... Sorry, here I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna de de detract here for everybody here. No, see if you guys share my pain here. So. Amazon says, and the, the, like this is where Eric July, I think, gets his business practices from. Amazon, the huge company Amazon says, hey, guys, Aliens is coming out on 4K. You can pre-order it right now, $50. And I go, no, nah, I'm going to wait a little bit. Then they go, hey, half off right now. You can get it half off. Or, Hell yeah, half off. I want to save, save money on it. So, I, you know, I order it. And then they go, oh, we don't have enough. We ran out, but you're gonna, we're gonna put you on a waiting list. But they, took, <laughs> but we're gonna take your money. And I'm sitting here waiting for aliens. I'm like <laughs> asking the wife, did they send an email? Oh yeah, and, and Amazon, by the way, is gonna charge you one dollar for any returns on Amazon. Yo, know, speaking of wives, now that, now that I got you here, I'm going to embarrass the shit out of you now, Jimmy. Now that I got you <laughs> yeah, here. Go okay. Oh. So, so, so we, we got a, a DM room for the, the new show, right? And Jimmy invites his wife in there and immediately starts flirting with his wife in the DM room. I'm like, Jimmy, you guys are in the same room. Why are you, why are you, you, you harding? She, Anna goes, hi, everybody. And then I see a little heart pop up. I'm like, why is Jimmy harding everything that Anna's saying in the DM? Come on, Jimmy. No flirting. No flirting <laughs> in the DM rooms. It's like PDA? Digital yeah. PDA? I'm going to start harding uh, uh, Chris's stuff. Whenever Chris put on like, <laughs> Hey, how you like that? That's your boo. <laughs> <laughs> that's your work wife. You know? Speaking of which, we, we do have a new live stream that's going to be coming out. And it's going to be so cool because it's going to be Tony in a different environment where it isn't going to be... There isn't going to be like any... Well, we're going to be picking on bigger fish, I guess. We're going to be, you know, talking about some of these other dumb projects coming out from mainstream stuff, and we're going to be liking some stuff. It's just going to be a fun stream, you know, really with no, no hating, no drama. Well, we're going to be doing some hating. I don't know. How would you describe it, Tony? This new live stream that we we're just going to be discussing, uh, you know, movies, TV shows, comic books, with a, uh, you know, look at some of the modern stuff. Like if something comes out, like oh, the new. Ghostbusters is coming out, and we'll just talk about that and talk about other movies we like and maybe things related to the Ghostbusters and wherever the conversation goes, uh, but without actually 
being mean and angry and just bigger like, oh, pop man. culture issues. Yeah. 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 It's gonna be it's gonna be pretty badass. A lot of fun. Got a lot of people supporting us behind the scene that actually are. Uh, man, we got like some really good resources, man. Some great people behind the scenes that they're to back us up, help us, support us. And it's it's crazy how things are growing. And Tony's getting big, man. Like people are noticing Tony, and this guy's going places, man. So oh, yeah, I'm saying you know you, you guys, guys have know. no idea, no idea. Yeah. Just, wait, just wait till when we start campaigning for this, you guys are gonna be like, oh shit, oh man, Tony knew what he was doing this whole time. He's been stringing us along. You guys have no idea. Cool. Uh, but no, but the show is going to be awesome on Sunday. It was like afternoon, mm-hmm. uh, nerd hangover, myself, um, Jimmy, um, Chris. Uh, should, we, should we tell them the other two? I was going to say, should we tell them the other two? Oh, we... why can't give a surprise? Mm-hmm. Good, I guess. It's, it's funny said. because we, we actually lost someone f- from the original plan. Uh, it turns out he, he was available, then checked the schedule, he wasn't available. and we already were locked in on Sunday, so we had to go ahead and uh, call in the big guns. We, we had like, a we big had hole a, to fill, and we needed a big, <laughs> big, big <head> person <laughs> to, to get in there. Like, whose head is big enough to fill in the space we're looking for? Yeah, he's got a big head. You know? <laughs> All right. Logical mail. Uh, He's for the five. He says, "Hey guys, remember the Marvels trailer is way better than the Yara. It is. True. Uh, I bet you, if we look at the um, amount of views on the Marvels trailer, it blows the fucking Yara trailer out of the water. Well, and think of the like, Yara trailer. Like, think of it like uh, what was that one? The the Last Jedi. You know, the Last Jedi movie sucked, but then the fan edit, it was all right." Man. You know, there was a fan edit to Yara trailer that I was like, oh, oh damn. Yeah, so- that was a, it, we all were, we were like, oh, that's a good edit. Yeah. Uh, suit, suit did a fantastic Oh, yeah, edit. Suit suit did it. Yeah. Wait, did he edit, like, a the live action? Yeah, yeah. he took the live action trailer, oh, edited, shit, edited it down to, like, um, it was like a minute. He added new voiceover, and, it, like, it flows so much better. It's just, it's just a good trailer. It and told like, the a story, gave a little more information, yeah. got you excited, you know, made you want to have more it did it the way that what eric is trying to do where he says you just you give the reader just a little bit you know you're just kind of giving them breadcrumbs and kind of leading them to eventually to where out of the forest or whatever eric thinks he's doing that but he's not and this guy showed him how it's done and suit did an amazing eric job. leads you in circles that's what it is <laughs> yeah. he's like if i lead you in circles you'll eventually find your way out and you're like eric's no like, no just a straight line eric's like no nah, man I like Eric. Are you reading that map correctly? He's like, yeah. The map says take four right turns. I took four right turns. That's a circle, you idiot. You never seen that movie? <laughs> I've seen it. Okay. I've seen it. They did that in the Three Stooges. They do it in a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, the Marvels trailer. I watched the trailer and I was like, oh, this movie's not gonna be that bad. Jokes on me. The movie was that bad, but still, the trailer was decent. And we got one from Lit Devil. I keep wanting to watch his streams. He he streams way early in the morning. And I'm at work. I can't never catch it. I'll catch like a couple minutes. Uh, he says, I loved Ancient Aliens. Stupid, but conspiracy stuff is fertile ground for stories. I took heavy inspiration from MK Naomi uh, for Dr. Alpha, in fact. Awesome. You know who else got ideas from stories like that? Of all people? Is it, is it my name? Jack Kirby. Bob <laughs> and stuff. He got <laughs> IBS? Irritable bowel syndrome? Is that what you said? No, I'm saying like the... How how everything is connected to cosmic shit, you know, like uh, the the gods are actually cosmic. They're almost like aliens. That's all yeah. Jack Kirby. <laughs> uh, taking inspiration from stupid stuff is great, but conspiracy stuff is just fun. As long as you know it's it's fake and you're like you're just going in there to like enjoy the story of it. I just don't believe any of it, right? That's the problem. Oh, I am so hooked on watching Ancient Aliens. I love it. I will watch every show that's out there. 
Yeah. And I love when that when that one scientist guy comes out and his hair just looks like he just just like oh yeah that guy drove in a convertible you know with a top down. And I love Look, it, dude. It's so <laughs> if I want to see ancient aliens, I just visit my grandparents. A logical Mail says, now guys, this is important. If you can find old archives of the goof troop of Friday Night Tights and G&G reacting to the Marvels trailer to reacting to the Yaira. That would be... Uh, I would have to watch their content to find it. So I'm on the fence. Yeah, that is tough. We'll just leave that for Katie. She can clip it and then we'll edit it. Uh, hey, Tony, I'll be right back. I'm going to um, mute myself to watch that uh, Yaira trailer. All right. And let's give you a little economics. High risk, high reward, the economics of comics part owner. Oh lord, it's the ballsy move. Some people, not many, sing the rap, lads, phonemics, what pain it, not any. Are you digging my groove? I gave you 40%. You're a cold bitch. I gave you 40%. You got a chance to get rich. I gave you 40%. Don't do no crop on the bluff. I gave you 40%. So right now you get nothing. Damn, that song is a serious burn. Uh, check your DMs. I see my DMs. You want to? You're trying to get on the stream. I'm, I don't know what you're talking about. Spam. What's the stream link? No, I'm not gonna give you the stream link. No. Uh, for Layton, he said he can't fuck his PC. What's the stream link? Mm, nope. There you go. We, we ain't got. We ain't got time for you right now, suit. Jesus. We're going to watch Eric July. Raleigh says with a two, says I saw him as Avery Silman, full stop, no one else. Yes, put that on record. So if something crazy happens. And uh, it's 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 funny. I, I would never think that I would get to the point to where people tell me that I meant something that I did not, but we're already there. Right? <laughs> So that's all that's Somewhere already happening. Where two you weeks get ago. Folks that are... Yeah, two weeks ago. He talks no, like no. that. Well, it's funny because he's always lying and people are like, Here here's your your lies. He's like, I didn't say that. Yes, you did, Eric. You said the thing. And he'd be like, Well, I, like when Dick was like, You said you were gonna dance all over the graves of, of Marvel. He's like, No, I didn't. I said I was gonna moonwalk on the dead careers and like that's you know, that's pretty much the same thing. Those are called similes, Eric. Uh you know, I didn't say literally word for word what you said, but it is the same sentiment. Sentiment. You know what I fucking mean. Right, he said, absolutely not. rewind that just like a few seconds back. Uh, look at his sentence structure. He said something like, I would never have ever would have thought. Uh, no, I'm, I think I'm correcting it. God, I can't do it. But he says, I would have never thought I'd ever be in a place where people would question that. About the amount of money or something. Listen to his sentence structure. Like it would push play. So that's all. That's already happening. Where you get folks that are mostly non fans, obviously all non fans. That would say, as an example, you you know that Yaira is. Oh, I didn't go further back. It wasn't that far back. It was yeah. Oh. Some crazy happens. And uh, it's 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 funny. I, right I would never think would that never think I would that. get to the point to where people tell me I would have get that I meant that something gotten. that I did not. But we're already there. It's because he thinks in half thoughts. So he's like, in little baby sentences like I would never have thought that I get. And then he loses his train of thought, and then he starts a new thought. He keeps starting new thoughts in the middle of old thoughts, and that's why his sentences are so fucking retarded. This is a writer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the crazy part, yeah. This is like, you know, he's, he, it's just, it's, it goes back to his 3D assets t-shirt. You're like, listen to this guy talk. Oh, my God. You're like, I, and you're like, yeah, but I bought his comic. You bought his comic? <laughs> Thank God he's not writing it. Oh, but he did. You wrote you wrote a comment from the guy this guy right here, he wrote it. 
Yeah. You're not listening to the words he says. It's crazy. Yeah, people still buy his book. Right. So that's all that's already happening where you get folks that are mostly non fans, obviously. All non- and, and the best part about this, Jimmy, is he's not like trying to tell, you know, like uh history or like He's trying to figure out some math problem. These are his own thoughts. Like, this is his, his just, you know, he was asked a question, and now he's trying to answer that question. And he's stumbling and bumbling and mumbling over what the hell it is he's trying to get out. Just, just fucking say it. You know, what's the problem, Eric? Well, here's the problem. Blah, 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 blah. Nah, fans. That would say, as an example, you, you know that Yaira is uh, pretty athletic. Built like essentially a, <laughs> a man, a, <laughs> yeah. um, beautiful track star, if you will. Mm-mm. No, she's Mm-mm. not. She's got Mm-mm. track stars don't have that big upper body. She's oh, built she's bigger about. than a famous tennis player. Literally, the lady who who's playing Yaira in the trailer is a fucking um, fitness trainer and shit. Eric, so this is what we're talking about. Eric, I'd be lying because track runners are skinny, aren't they? Yeah, skinny and thin. And you, we got an actress, for example, in live action that fucking really embodies her as close as anybody's gonna get from height on on up and down. Because not really, uh, Eric July believes there's only one white woman that's tall with muscles. And then also he said, looks like a track star, and that lady doesn't look like a fucking track star. Eric, I don't think you know what the fuck you're talking about. She's a fucking athlete. And you get people that say, well, that, that's not how Yaira... He could literally have gotten a, a fucking runner. Because he went and got a fitness instructor. You could have literally just got someone who's like, hey, I need someone who's a, a runner. Uh, you could have got a local uh, from the college or an ex-runner that, that does that shit still. Looked in- skinny white ladies. That's all you need. It was a skinny fucking white lady that looked good in yoga pants. I'm like, wait a minute. Did you read anything that we put out? Did you? you can see the fucking cuts in her in her shit like on the uh, purposely in her first appearance, the first full visual that you get of Yaira and I saw one. I, I don't remember that. Is he lying? Let me see. I got ISO number one right here. I'm gonna I'm gonna crack this bad boy open. And you, can, you can hear the plastic. Right, let me see. So her first full visual shot, Eric says, you can see all the fucking. No, you can. She has a belly button. She has a, a fucking four pack. She doesn't have a six pack in the shot. She has a fucking four pack. Uh, Eric July doesn't even know what's in his own fucking comic. It, it it looks. You know what it looks like? I wish I had the fucking visual. Uh, it looks like she has a giant fucking belly button. Cause it looks like she has like a crease. Going up and down, and then a crease going fucking vertical, uh, horizontal. It doesn't look like she has the fucking muscles. Yeah. Runners are lanky, not muscular. Wonder Woman isn't even muscular. Uh, that's the wonder part of her. Yeah. That's how she's jacked. That's how she's supposed to look. So, yeah, to your point, Raleigh, don't let anybody tell you different. There's only one ISOM. There's no ISAMA. There's no Puerto Rican ISOM. There's no uh, 20, 2099 ISOM. There's no uh, superior ISOM that's actually uh, Darren Fontano wearing ISOM suit for some reason and, and, and going around being ISOM. And- uh, superior Spider Man was literally Peter Parker, but with Doc Ock's brain inside his head. Uh, his personality. So it still was Peter Parker. It wasn't a different character. You're retarded, Eric. Fucking cornrows. No, it's one I saw. And his name is Avery Seelman. But he looks Puerto Rican in some panels. Does it say, does it yeah, say that's true. C63 on the cards? Uh, yeah. Do I have it here? Uh, there's one I saw, but also his beard grows and changes in each uh, shot. And we have no idea what he looks like. No, I got the, I got the I saw him here. I saw him right here. I got the eyes on. There's only eyes one eye song. That's it. Maybe you should open the second issue to find that uh, page that he can't find anywhere but Instagram. Uh, yeah. But there is. Let me see. I'm trying to find. See what? Here's the problem. What Eric is looking at 
is someone did a time lapse of Yaira, and in that one she has a six pack. But in the actual comic, she does not have a six pack. She has like a little like um, four pack. I'm trying to look for the actual official fucking image. Uh, I don't think I have the digital Isom one. Fuck. Has Mike Partika got a got a video on it? What image are you looking for? It's the first shot of Yaira where she comes in. Because he goes, in the first shot of Yaira, you could see how jacked she is. Is it the one where she's flying? Like she's flying down or whatever? Yeah. I have it. Can you you share it? Yeah. Uh, So what Eric July did is exactly like Marvel, where you have characters drawn a certain way in a comic book. Then when they become live action, then they have the artist change the way that they are drawn to match the character in live action. Kane and White drawing that we saw earlier where she has these big buff arms and saggy boobs that are growing out of her abdomen. Um, it looks more like the uh, live action. Can you zoom in on that a little bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Whoops. It's a low res, but there you go. You can kind of see it. Yeah. Well, it. You can see, like, it's just four lines. It's two vertical lines coming out of her belly button and then two horizontal lines. There's no, like, musculature like there. Crease. It looks like yeah. it would be a little fat there, but she looks like. And a you can see, that's what I'm saying. Like you can see, like the the uh, sides don't look fucking thin. She looks not fat, but not like muscular, not skinny either. Also, her boobs are just like f- fucking floating there. Yeah. <laughs> There's all that shadow underneath. It's like her shirt is being held up. So she's got ice powers, but can fly. Yeah. Yes. So, so uh, does, does it ever? Did they ever mention the story why she's wearing yoga pants? No. I mean, why she was at yoga? Also, what the fuck's up with her knee? I'm just looking now. Like, and and if she does yoga, why would she go and just like start punching people in the face? I mean, don't they teach her to be? You gotta you gotta read Yara number one. Oh, uh, don't they teach them to be more zen? You know, isn't yoga more like you have a guru? And... Man, that left leg is. Yeah, I was gonna say the left leg. The more I look at that, is like, what is going on? I think it's because of the shadow underneath is making the uh, the only part you see is the is the is the brightened part, so that underneath shadow is making it look weird. Well, the, so, the yeah. left arm's too long. The right yeah. foot is too small. There's a lot of wrong in this anatomy. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, I also want to point out, like, she has ice powers, but like she never uses it. Like she never, we've never really seen her use the ice powers. S- scroll down real quick, New yeah. York. Uh, what the hell are they pointing at? Because he's pointing off this way, like, and it's not lined up with where she's at. He should be pointing, like, that on the right should be pointing higher and more to his right. It's illegal for cops to shoot a white girl. Oh, oh, okay. legally yeah. allowed also, she got no her. socks on. Don't do that. Yeah. Put socks on with, with your shoes. Yeah, you're going to get yeast on your feet. Mm-hmm. Your fungus. Also, um, okay, so I have a question. Why does this keep popping up? Turn that off. Um, is how is she? Does she not have a well in that trailer? They introduce her as Sally Rodell, I think is the name they use or whatever. Yeah. You mean to tell me that she, nobody knows that this is the same person? She's like a yep. six foot something blonde woman with blue eyes. They don't know that Yaira and that Sally person is are the same. They have no clue. She has glasses, so like Superman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is bad. Uh, stop sharing that. Well, I mean, that just goes to show that Eric thinks all white people look alike. <laughs> yeah, nobody can tell the difference. All these white girls look the same. All right, so this is the last clip we're going to go over from Katie. Uh, Yaira, trailer regrets and more. Just watch. Bought around $300. Woo! Worth of Yaira books and the cards. Excited to get it. More importantly, who's that beautiful black lady in a live action? Kia. Uh, that is our Altona. She's, so she's <laughs> Isom's sister. Altona Kia Silvan. Kia. Or Daniels. Man, she is. What the fuck now. was that? Pause. Was yeah, was like, that was her. creepy. That was really yeah. creepy. She got in his mind. Like, yeah. I mean, she's an attractive woman. I mean, like, she is. Like, I, I get it. But, like, yeah. 
I, I don't know. I've never had. I, I like women a lot, and I don't think I've ever paused that fucking hard while talking to someone. Just like, and I definitely wouldn't do it on a live stream with you guys. We're like, hey, you remember that? You remember Margot Robbie? Yo, Margot Robbie, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you guys were like, "What the fuck, Tony? Like, what? The fuck? Yeah. Like, put your camera on. What are you doing?" In that, in that yeah. Pods, yeah, yeah. He stopped displaying super chats because of the drama that he gets when people clip his videos. I think that's why he doesn't show them anymore. Yeah. No, part of it is is the drama, and part of it is that way he doesn't have to read the whole super chat, so he can skip parts of the super chat. Like, it'll say your name in the super chat. Who the hell gave suit the the fucking uh... TJ? He gave in. TJ, I made an executive decision. <laughs> hey, suit, what's up, man? You're gonna fucking gay keep me cunt. Yeah, because <laughs> I wanted to get get off the stream in the, in the next couple of minutes, and no fucking clue what's going on. You fucking cunt. How many times can I say cunt to get your stream taken down? None. Also, that's a great AI voice. I think all you got on there is like cunt. AI <laughs> yeah, voice, yeah. Fuck off, cunt. <laughs> it's like cunt, dingo, fuck Mexican off. There's a great Mexican voice there you got too. It, it really is. It really is. <laughs> What's up? What do, you, what do you need, suit? I don't need nothing. I just wanted to have a chat. Say hello before you go. Okay. I wasn't going to have... derail anything. Can you you going to put me in more rooms with naked men, mate? <laughs> Can you talk like Sturgis, please? Uh, no, I can't talk like that. No. Sorry, I'm I'm a man. <laughs> Shots fired all the way from Australia. <laughs> can, um, in your best Australian accent, can you say really clearly? I'm no one Australian. else can. Just say, re say really clearly, Frog Tony, retard hunter, so I can clip that and use that. Frog Tony retard. No, you guys are not. Hey, you darn cunt. Frog Tony cunt. Uh, I'm going to kill you, you motherfucker. What's up, George? Oh. You coming in for, for the. Uh... Jeez, everybody's popping into the last minute now. Yeah, I just want. Yeah. I'm never going to ask Tony to join the panel again. A little, so a little TJ. heads up. Uh, uh, George? You know, you guys are being trolled by Eric July, right? No. He's, he's winning. You know why? Because you're spending yeah. all this time, uh, you know, talking about him, um, uh, what do you call it? misdirecting your resources, your time and energy on, you know, producing work and stuff like that, and talking about him and chatting and chilling. I agree. You, you, you can mute me, Tony, but you can't take the message away. No, no, no. no. Shit, no I know what George, George is like. You guys should be working on your comic instead of doing I got it, George. No, I don't know. George wants to get paid. George's like, if you're not working, then you're not going to be no, paying me. I'm just saying, you know, just saying, you know, you know, you know, you know, all, all of you collectively are, you know. Uh, Boo, George. I agree. Boo, George. Energy. Boo this man. Yeah, yeah. Hey, there's a reason why. I, know, I agree with George. <laughs> Hey, who's who's the fake avatar with a strange voice? That would be Suit. He says, "Suit, your voiceover for Sturge's video had me crying." Yeah, that was actually really good. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't me that made Sturges your voice small. Out. It was God. Suit, do you do any uh, uh, professional editing, or, you, or is that just something that you just decided to take up on the trailer? I've been doing this kind of stuff for a while now. In the writing, I haven't. Uh, the new uh, animation program. I'm still learning the. It's, uh, it's going to get better and better as I learn more and more about that program. What about wait, the, wait, wait. Are you the guy who talked about Sturgis and being short and fat and all that stuff? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. That was epic. That was pretty who good. Wrote, uh, I, I didn't give him blocked? short legs. God did. Yeah, Sturgis has blocked me. The love of my life gone. The only reason for living. Who, uh, Tony who, wouldn't let me on. That was my second he love. He blocked Suit and he didn't block me yet. Crazy. So, Suit, who wrote the, uh, the dialogue in that the re-edit on the Yara trailer. Did you write it? or? It's just what I came up with off the top of my head. It's like, yeah, I wrote it, so... It was pretty good. I thought, yeah, this is uh, basically what Isom should have said. Yeah. Uh, Mike Patika, he doesn't like the uh, edit. He says um, that Isom doesn't know where Yara is from, and I'm thinking, but you don't know how far in the future Yara is and what Isom may know. At that point in history, mm -hmm. and it's a well, fucking it doesn't even matter. Just to build hype. 
So who cares? You don't know when Isom is talking in the trailer. He could be in the future exactly. talking about a past That's event. Correct. Well, Mike, Mike, Mike nitpicks it. He, he's. I try to like Mike. Oh, I nitpick and, and too, watch. but I try no. To but his nitpicks are like completely correctly. wrong. Yeah, he incorrectly. Yeah. Like he was nitpicking uh, Dick's criticism. He's like, I'm going to criticize Dick's criticism of Isom, and I'm like, and Mike's just just bad. It's bad. He's like, I, I don't think that he should be giving criticism on how the story should have went differently. Mm-hmm. He should be criticizing how the story is and how to prove the story as it is. I'm like, Mike, are you are you retarded? Hey Tony, um, the chat wants me to say the N word. Is that all right for you? Uh, no, it's not. No, okay, the, uh... I'm just checking because I am half black, so it should be okay. Oh exactly. yeah, uh, I'm I'm one percent black. I, I say it's okay. He says so, okay. I'm yeah. not trying to be niggardly or anything. Well, there you go. That was close enough. Yeah, uh, and that was suit yourself, everybody. Suit yourself. Uh, mm-hmm. Great having you. Uh, let's get to the rest of this video. I, I look forward to being featured in naked rooms with men now that I've kicked him off the panel. Is I, I feel like with everybody from Jerry to I, I wish we could have wait Jerry really as in German got yes was one thing that I wish we could have got everything else was perfect with uh uh the actor that played Lincoln. But I wish we would have emphasized the, the the mullet a little more. Wait a minute. Lincoln doesn't you... have a mullet in the fucking thing. He has a beard. No, no, hold on a sec. Why is he saying, oh, uh, now I, I want to make some uh, changes? You could have done that in edit. He's just talking about his regret. Video. He's just talking about the regrets. Well, that's the whole point of editing and, shoot, and shooting and all that stuff. Can the man just not make a video where he's so expressing his regrets, George, without you saying that he could have made edits? We understand We understand that. But it is... <clears throat> what it is. What it is is... I just want to see what he says. That's the one, if I am to have a regret... That's the one that I have. I wish That's we could have really. If I am to have a regret, a regret. God, he sounds that like an AI situation of himself. But other than that, as far as the castings, for all of them was spot on, man. From Yaira on down. But I, I, I agree with you as far as Altona. Screaming Lady was probably his favorite casting because that was a. Uh, no, he didn't say casting. He said castings, like you're making, yeah, was... <laughs> like you're casting a mold. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> well, just like I said, his favorite castings was uh, the lady screaming because he's like, "Yeah, that's that's the one I'm fucking." His concern, it's it's not gonna get as as good as what she was. She is fucking good. Like she's one of those that okay. Let's say instead of she's one of those. What does that mean? Well, uh, exactly, she's one of those. You know, okay. the good ones. Well, those, no, no, no. Uh, you're missing it out, guys. You know, what's going on right here is Eric July is in negotiations to hire her again. And he's telling her how awesome she is. So now she can come back and charge more money for her services. Is he talking about um, Kia King? Uh-oh. Is that what he's talking about? Yeah. R- R-D- R2D Tuna says he did change it today. How does nobody know this? Re-edit trailer released today. Good night, everyone. Did he? Oh. Sure. Probably because I, I didn't watch the trailer over and over again, so uh, I'll check well, it out. Well, Kia King is interesting that he's giving her all this praise because she's a massive advocate for diversity and Black Lives Matter, which is something that Eric has made several videos um, denouncing. So, yeah, well, that's where you get the biggest tax credits. Well, yeah, I mean, Vancouver, I'm assuming she works with a lot of uh, people that are part of those uh, organizations and things like that. Uh, because Vancouver has a lot of um, like the CW stuff got benefits from for diverse castings and stuff like that. So yeah. almost everybody that worked on the Yaira trailer, I did the homework. Almost every single person connected to that trailer would be what Eric would consider a woke person. Almost you know every the, you know the theory is why British Columbia uh, has legalized all the hard drugs is because they wanted to bring in more of Hollywood there. And, but the problem was that, you know, the drug laws. So since they made all the hard drugs free uh, and without consequence, now Hollywood is swarming into Canada to make movies and uh, get high. 
I, I believe this is why he was defending the Oscars so much is because they were his connection to all of these quote unquote, like woke actors and stuff like that. Cause I, I honestly believe that's, that was his reason for kind of involving them in the beginning or, and, and the stuff that Tony talks about, which is like totally, you know, sexual stuff, I guess. So. <laughs> you don't believe that he's, he's sleeping with her. <laughs> I don't I know. know. I don't language. know what's going on. I don't know. I I do know that I believe that he his whole thing with the Sasuke sisters from the get go was to start doing like Hollywood type stuff. I think that's the whole that was the whole point of having them. And what's one of the things that Hollywood types do? They meet on a film set, fall in love, and fuck. Yeah. Ask yeah, uh, what's his name? Ended up divorcing his wife because of that. Wait, wait. Didn't Eric make a post about like like almost being in a threesome or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> like wasn't that what his uh well, he did his Twitter yeah or but that was a long time ago oh maybe maybe this is just him revisiting that whole thing again I don't know hmm. all right on a trailer for a comic book we wanted to really do something that was longer form that we took seriously and we were gonna like charge for I Keo I'd be like look man whatever we gotta whatever we gotta move around whatever we have to move around we we got to get her we met because she she really fit that spot um she, she she really fit it oh my god this is so awkward like For what sure. the fuck but yeah they definitely fitted i know what that means like puzzle pieces it sounds like he loved his trip to canada for sure mm-hmm. uh, aside from that i mean everybody did good i mean everybody especially i mean look Six what the hell is athletic blonde women don't just he was out there fucking all these women wasn't he we're gonna hear some stories in a couple of days and they, they me too the shit out of them just fucking fall from the sky so yeah it's called casting you know, as soon as i saw her i was like yeah that that's our yaira that's yeah. our yaira oh my and god there's some people the that like were like hey this could we have bizarre. Mm. gotten some things first of all the, the scenes that you obviously saw in the trailer a lot of that like all of it is directly from the comics um but as far as like her actual like outfit um is concerned with her her legitimate costume that you've seen we we, we got like that ending scene we have some other stuff that we'll show you guys as well but we that was like something that happened on a dime that was after the 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 um like that was after we had really got the like everything lined up like as far as what we were going to go with script all that before we committed to why don't we just why don't we get a costume made wait did he just say before the script was even done no it sounded like he was saying that he decided afterward to just go ahead and go through with it, which makes no sense. I, I would think that you would be like, hey, we're probably going to put her in the costume. I think that would be the first thing you're throwing around. Hey, we're going to do this trailer for Yara. Should she be in the costume? Yeah. Okay, let's make sure we get a costume made as soon as we cast the lady. Uh, it feels like they shot the trailer, then ended up saying, fuck, we didn't put her in the costume. Go get a costume, put it in there. That's why she's just standing in a blank room. We could just film her anywhere. It's dark, right? So much dead you fucking hair. And now we have it, so we can just, you know, if we do something else <laughs> with her, we can just, uh, we can just fucking put her in it. But I thought that he, didn't he do a video the other day where he was like, we're not trying to do like that kind of stuff. And now he's like saying that maybe they will do it. Like I, it's so much double talk with him about everything. Yeah. No, because he feels embarrassed. He's embarrassed. He he thought he was doing something. He made a ten minute fucking behind the scenes thing. Turns out it was dog shit. Now he's like, oh well, actually, yeah, actually, I wasn't really trying. Lost the tractors. It ended up being yeah. the goofiest shit ever. Well, I'm gonna head off to bed, guys. I want to say thanks for letting me hang out with you guys for so long. I appreciate it. No problem, Jim. Anytime. Yeah. Yeah. All Look right. forward to the show on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a great show, man. You guys got some good stuff planned. You guys are gonna have a lot of fun. Come hang out and be a lot of laughs. A lot. Yeah. All right, man. I'll, I'll see you guys. All right. Appreciate All right. it. Take it, Jimmy. All right.
Take care, Jim. Yeah, Michael says we need a full-length Sasuke-directed Yaira film uh, with all the pee and vomit you can handle. <laughs> I actually cool. saw somebody mention that they're not technically Hollywood, they're indie, but you got to understand that Eric has no Hollywood connection. So that means indie would be the first step for him to meeting like people who are in that space, which is how so many people in Vancouver, like Joe Gold, who was a producer of the Yaira trailer, um, is also a producer of a queer story in World War II about uh, queer resistance and all this other stuff. He was the producer of the Yaira trailer. I mean, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, that. yeah, yeah. He's Joe Gold, the producer for that and the behind the scenes. He did both of them. He's producing a World War II story called uh, "My Name Was Peter," I believe that's what it is. Uh, that comes out this year. That's about like queer resistance in World War II and a gay love story. And this is what I mean. Like, it's I don't necessarily agree with how Eric, you know, obviously talks about different groups and stuff like that, but. If you're selling to your fans that you're not about that shit, then why are you involving that in your content? I, I don't. They left it at the door. They didn't talk about it on I the guess. set. Look, when a white lady starts sucking your dick, and you'll you'll do whatever she says. You'll hire whatever producer she tell you. Whatever you want, baby, just don't stop. Yeah. A lot of filmmakers start out doing indies. Yeah. All right, let's finish this up. We got like six seconds be some some more stuff with the way you can see her like in action uh with it on hell so yeah that's, porn that's another thing. he, what he paid, means he paid for that costume to stand at the end of the trailer for five seconds it, it doesn't something's not making sense i don't know like what's happening but only fans yaira only fans <laughs> he convinced her all right we're, we're out of here too it's 12 o'clock i got work tomorrow uh, we ran through everything we had to plus we had some uh uh, a little extra, which is fantastic. Leave our white women alone. Never. I will never leave your white women alone. Love them too much. Love them too much. Uh, but as always, love, peace, booty grease. We out this bitch. <laughs>